Hello friends. This is Fanfic Universe. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto had the legendary power of Frozen Fox? Here is short summary. What if Naruto had gained a bloodline? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. The newly unmasked ninja, her voice full of pain, said, I am useless as Zabaza's tool. Naruto, please, she paused to meet the blonde boy's eyes, kill me. Naruto stared at her for a moment in disbelief. How can she say that so calmly? How can she want to die? He thought as he stumbled back in surprise. Why do you hesitate? Haku demanded, taking a step forward to close the gap again. I thought you wanted to be a great ninja. Naruto shook his head. How can you say that? Do you really believe that's all there is to it? He yelled. Fighting and killing until there's only one person left standing. His voice softened a bit. There's a lot more to being shinobi than that. There are more ways of showing your strength than beating someone in battle. Haku felt her twitch into the start of a sad smile. I've had this feeling ever since we met in the woods, that you and me, are a lot alike. Maybe in another life we could have been friends, maybe even more, she paused with a sad smile. You know what it is I'm talking about. I'm only sorry that it is you that will have to stain your hands with my unworthy blood. Naruto gritted his teeth. This, this is the only way. Yes. Haku insisted. You've lost your dreams, and asked me to kill you. Naruto thought as he bowed his head, the both of us are caught in this, as shinobi, the weird thing is that you're right. If we'd met under different circumstances, we probably would have been friends, the blonde said out loud to receive a small nod of agreement from the girl. Pulling a kanai from the pouch on his leg, Naruto started towards the other, raising his arm as if for a single slash across the throat. Haku watched him, feeling oddly content, he will become strong. Naruto, fulfill your own dreams, protect those that are precious to you. The blonde drew closer, intent on killing her, but his thoughts were different, you think I can kill you Haku, but you don't understand, I won't kill you, not for that man, if I hit you with the flat of the kanai, I can knock you out, that should be enough, he began to swing his arm down. Your future is death. Haku's head snapped up as the words carried to her ears. Zabuza sama. Sorry Naruto, change of plans, Haku yelled, catching the arm and whirling the unsuspecting boy around. I'm not ready to die quite yet. She quickly began forming seals with one hand. How could I have been so foolish? How can I ask for a merciful death, when Zabuza sama still needs me? My last breath belongs to him. There was a swirl of mist as Haku disappeared releasing Naruto from the hold she had had on his arm. Naruto stumbled and stared dumbstruck at the spot where Haku had been seconds before. Where? Suddenly, he felt his body shudder, it felt as if all his energy had suddenly disappeared. What's happening? Naruto wondered. Whatever that was, it's used up almost all my chakra, and I still have to find Haku. To his surprise the fog was lifting. He glanced down the bridge and saw. His breath stuck in his throat. Kakashi and Zabuza were stood staring each other down. Between them stood the blood-drenched body of Haku, Kakashi Sensei's hand punched through her chest. She jumped in to save Zabuza. Naruto realized. I never realized what a useful thing I had picked up that time, Zabuza was saying, while hefting his sword back. He intends to cut through Haku and Kakashi Sensei both. Haku. Naruto screamed, watching as Zabuza's blade swept down. At the last second, Kakashi jumped out the way, taking Haku's body with him. Dropping to his knees he laid the girl out on the floor carefully. Quickly, Naruto ran over to them both and dropped to his knees beside Kakashi. The girl was spitting up blood, and there was a gaping hole right through her lung. Haku, Naruto murmured. He turned to his sensei. Kakashi had a sad look on his face. Is she going to live? Kakashi looked away from the blonde's anxious face. Stay here, Naruto. This fight is between me and Zabuza. He stood up and walked past the blonde, though a hand fell on Naruto's shoulder for a second and squeezed in what was supposed to be a comforting gesture. Naruto turned his gaze on the girl, who looked up at him with happy eyes. Naruto. Naruto. Sakura yelled, running over with Tizuna in tow. You're all right. I'm glad. Is Sasuke with you? Naruto's face dropped and he yanked his gaze away from her eager one. 
Naruto, he heard her whisper, as if in question, or perhaps realization. He heard her run away down the bridge. Haku looked up at the blonde, whose face was fixed on the ground. I'm, sorry. Naruto turned his gaze onto the girl. Hey, you ought to be preserving your strength. Don't talk right now, he grabbed one of Haku's hands. The black-haired girl smiled, even as a sudden wailing cry rose up. It sounded as if Sakura had found Sasuke. Naruto closed his eyes for a second, trying to push back the tears. You'll see, Haku said his voice barely a whisper. Naruto opened his eyes to look at him again. Naruto-kun, know that I died, fulfilling my purpose. It was, a, honor, the girl trailed off. Around Naruto things slowed to a stop. The hand he held was cold. Haku-chan, he murmured as the girl's eyes slid shut and her chest stopped rising. Haku. He yelled. Red fire flew over his hands, bathing Haku's body in its glow. Time for Naruto seemed to stop and go black. Do you want to save her kit? The Kyubi asked. Naruto's vision returned and he found himself before a huge iron gate with a piece of paper holding it shut. The word seal written on it. Looking further into the cage he could see two crimson eyes. You can save her. Naruto yelled back. Heal her now. I can save her, but to do so she will have to become your mate, Kayubi replied. Naruto listened quietly. You will also have to tear part of the seal off. Why would she have to be my mate? Naruto asked. To save her, you need to mix your chakra and blood, along with my chakra, over her wound. By doing so you two will be bonded, making you mates, replied Kayubi in a matter-of-fact tone. So this is the only way to save her, Naruto silently thought. Yes, and remember, I can hear what you are thinking, ha ha. An amused Kiyubi laughed. Fine I'll do it, growled the blonde. Ha ha. Fine, let's start. Cut your hand and place it on the hole in her chest. Naruto cut his hand and held it to the fatal wound. Now channel you chakra and then mine to your hand. He quickly channeled his chakra, but he was having some trouble in channeling Kayubi's, though he was able. As the two chakras and the blood mixed with the wound a blue light surround both the blonde and Haku. Elsewhere on the bridge Gatu appeared on the bridge with a small army of thugs with him. So, the demon of the mist is defeated. You're nothing but a little puppy devil. Luckily, I was never going to pay you. See, missing nin are much easier than shinobi from villages to hire, because after a missing nin is done, you can kill them while they're weak. I'll double the pay to the man that brings me Zabuza's head, ha ha laughed Gatu. With a quick look at each other, Zabuza and Kakashi nodded. Kakashi, I see no reason to fight you now, but I still haven't killed anything yet. Say, first one to kill as many men of Gatu's wins. It's at this point everyone froze. It wasn't because of what Zabuza said, but because they can feel the chakra that was coming off of Naruto. They looked over to see the blue light spinning around Naruto in the downed form of Haku. What is this chakra? It's as powerful as the Kyubis, but it doesn't feel evil, the copy Nin wondered silently. What is this power? Zabuza started but before he could think farther Gatu spoke again. Kill them all now, the tyrant of a businessman yelled. Kakashi and Zabuza quickly began to cut down the thugs like they were dogs. Later, at the end of the bridge, after Gatu was killed, lay Zabuza with various weapons stuck into his back. Looks like I win Kakashi, ha ha. The ex mist Nin laughed. He stopped after a second and said in a sad, low voice, Kakashi, I want to see her. I'll take you to her. Kakashi mumbled as he took out the weapons carefully and then picked up the missing Nin. He carried Zabuza over to where the bright light once was. The copy Nin saw the two laying teens on the ground. Haku completely healed in a now black haired Naruto by her side. He gently placed Zabuza on Haku's other side. What's going on here? Did Naruto heal her, and why is his hair black? More importantly, how could he heal her? He doesn't know any medical jutsu. Guess I'll have to ask him when he wakes up. Zabuza cut through his thoughts as he spoke up. Kakashi, I don't know how, but your brat healed Haku. Will you take her with you? She doesn't like to take a life. Maybe in your village she can live a normal life and be happy. He finished with a small tear running down his face. Yeah, I'll let her come if she wants. Thank you. He never finished his word, the last of his breath leaving him. I'll watch for her for you, Zabuza, but first I need to get everyone back to Tazuna's house, the one eyed Nin thought as he walked over to his other students, only to stop as he saw Sasuke lying dead on the ground. 
Sakura was crying on his chest. No. Not again. No I couldn't have failed again. Kakashi started forward with tears in his eyes when a dry low voice reached his ears. Sakura. Get off. You're heavy. Sasuke rasped. Sasuke. You're alive. You're alive. Screamed Sakura as she hugged him. He yelled for her to stop. Kakashi couldn't help but give his eye smile. All of his students were alive and safe. He turned to see the town's people gathering. A few days later Naruto awoke to see he was in Tizuna's house. As he started to sit up images of the other day flashed in his mind. Flashback starts Naruto watched as the blue light covered him in Haku. A few minutes later his body started to hurt. A second after that his body felt like it was on fire. Kayubi, what's going on? The blonde cried as he heard laughter. Well Kit, since my chakra is running wild in your body right now, I decided to do some remodeling, laughed Kayubi. What? You baka fox. Stop whatever you were doing, Naruto screamed. The laughter stopped and a low growl took its place. Listen here you hairless ape. All I'm doing is giving you a keke jenke. I will not have my container being some weak child who can't even defend himself. Ooh, really? I'm getting something that could show Sasuke up? Asked a very hopeful Naruto. Kayubi ignored him in favor of explaining the changes. Your keke jenke will have three parts, body, chakra, and sight. Now what they do is. Flashback ends Naruto was pulled from his thoughts by a voice at the doorway. So, are you feeling better? Naruto turned to see Kakashi standing there with his eye smile. I'm fine, but what about Haku? Is she alright? Asked the slightly worried teen. Well Haku is, well, Haku is fine, but she is at Zabuza's grave right now said the one-eyed nin with an eye smile. But what I would like to know is how you healed her and why is your hair long and black. Naruto shifted uneasy on what to tell him. I made a bond with her, which made us like clansmen to each other. It happened when I healed her. He decided to leave out most of his new bloodline, he would tell the old man and Haku first. He also thought it would be best to tell Haku about them being mates before he told anyone else. So then my hair turned black. He's hiding something, but he seems like himself. I'll let it side for now, he must be very upset about seeing two of his friends, die, in front of him. Kakashi thought to himself. Then the lone-eyed Jonin spoke, you know death is a part of being a ninja, but you should be happy we all survived. I know and I am. I'm going to find Haku. Naruto replied as he got up and left the room. Kakashi sat down, wondering what he could do for his student, I know how tough it must be for him to think that he lost a teammate and then a friend which being up another question. When did the two of them become friends? Zabuza's grave Naruto walked up to the girl sitting in front of a grave. I'm sorry for Zabuza's death, he said as he sat down beside her. Haku silently nodded and they sat there for a couple minutes. Finally Haku cried out, I should have died, why didn't I die? Then she felt Naruto put her arm around and pulled her to his chest to let her cry out her frustration and pain for a few minutes. Then he whispered out, I'm sorry I didn't want you to die, Haku. I don't want to be alone, not again. You are the only one that I have found that has lived in pain for something that was out of their control. As he finished, the ice user felt a tear fall on the side of her face. As she looked up at his face, he said, I want you to come back with me. I want you to be my friend, I want you to be with me. Haku cupped his face with her smooth hands, we are alike, and we both have lived with the pain of our past. She pulled him into a hug. I would like to be with you and go back to your village with you. The two stood there enjoying the warm embrace of each other. As it started to get dark, they decided to go back to the house to eat and get some sleep. As they walked in, they heard Naruto's annoying teammate, Sakura also known as the Banshee scream at them, Naruto, where have you been? You just wake up and then go missing all day with her, she said, pointing at Haku with a look of disgust. Naruto got pissed at Sakura's words and retorted angrily, Sakura, do me a favor and shut up the hell up. As to where I was and who I was with, that is none of your concern, therefore I have no need to discuss anything with you. He finished and walked past a shocked Sakura. As he sat at the table, he saw Kakashi hadn't looked up from his book and Sasuke was glaring at Haku. Naruto said in an angry tone, you got a problem, Teme? I think that we should kill her, she's the enemy, replied a rather angry Sasuke. Yeah. She tried to kill Sasuke-kun, she shouldn't be here, came in his bubblegum-haired fangirl, trying to gain favor with her crush. 
Naruto said, excuse me. But I remembered that she didn't kill Sasuke, she put him in a false death state just like she did with Zabuza. By this point Kakashi put his book down. She stopped being the enemy when Gato tried to kill them. In the ninja world, any enemy at one moment can become an ally at the next moment. You all should remember that. He started reading his book again giggling now and then, as always. The rest of the night went by quietly with the usual, Sasuke brooding, Sakura fawning over Sasuke, Kakashi reading his book, Naruto and Haku making small talk. After a while they all went to bed as they still had a week till the bridge would be finished. As Naruto fell to sleep, he found himself in front of Kayubi's cage once again. Kayubi said, Well, Kit, I believe that we have something to talk about. First, you need to tell your mate about everything from my to your bloodline to her being your mate. Second, when you get back to your village don't put your mask on, you will also be a weak fool if you do. Also you need someone to teach you taijutsu, preferably something strong that cause you to break bones and I also want you to start to work with a sword. Find a master to teach you kenjutsu, I think that that old man, the Hokage should be able to help you find one. Now leave, I'm still tired from healing your mate and replenishing your blood. You also need your sleep, so your mate can show you how to use your ice abilities. Before Naruto could reply back to the fox, he was thrown from his mindscape into a nice dream about him, Haku and Hanada going for a walk around the park. The next morning, Naruto awoke early, mumbling about Baka foxes telling him what to do in weird dreams. Why would even have a dream about Hanada? I mean sure she's liked me for a long time and I've grown to like her. But what would the village do if she was with me and besides Haku is my mate I can't have them both. I don't think either would be happy about it. As he was running through his thoughts he heard laughter in his mind. You idiot. Why not take them both as your mates? You know demons take more than one mate. As for Haku not being happy about you having another, we both have seen how she looks at Tsunami, which indicates that she plays for both sides. No, I think she'll be fine with you having another mate, as long as you love her. This Hanada girl loves you and you love her. You need to grow strong to be with the ones you love. Kayubi said, voicing his opinion. But there's no way for me to be with them both humans only can have one mate and even with the villagers telling I'm a demon I'm not. Naruto retorted sadly. The fox answered, well you are right and wrong. To my understanding of villages people with new bloodlines can have more than one mate due to this clan restoration act, that idiot Uchiha applies to this to since he is the last loyal Uchiha and as for you not being a demon, well yes and no you aren't a demon. But you are as much a demon as a human can be, while still being human. Of course your new bloodline makes that so. Great that will make the villagers so ing happy. Well, at least I might be able to be with Haku and Hanada as long as they're both okay with it. Hey, wait a freaking minute. How are you talking to me? Naruto said in a sarcastic tone. Well, that piece of the seal you ripped off lets me speak to you telepathically as well as see, hear, and smell what you do, Kayubi explained to his container. Okay, but why haven't you speaking before now and aren't you supposed to be the demon that wants to kill everything in sight? So why are you helping me? Naruto asked curiously. I haven't spoken before now because I was tired, do you know how much energy it take to heal someone near death and make a keke jenke at the same time? And no I'm not evil or want kill everything that opposes me. Kayubi replied. Naruto could feel the sad smile on the fox's face, no, at one point in time. I was the guardian of fire country, but that hubi teme put a very powerful genjutsu on me. It put me into a feral rage and I attacked your village, but thankfully your hokage sealed me away before I can do any more damage. As to why I'm helping you, well, I'm sorry for making your life so bad. So the bloodline and healing your mate was my way of saying I'm sorry. Thank you, but I'll find that hubi teme and make him pay for disturbing our lives, he was cut from his conversation by a soft voice. You know. Breakfast is waiting for you downstairs. Naruto turned to see Haku in the doorway, smiling at him. I will be down in a minute, Naruto said, returning the smile with one of his own. After a few minutes, Naruto walked downstairs and sat down at the table with everyone eating their food. All right, team, we still have a week till the bridge is finished. Sasuke, you'll be coming with me to the bridge. Sakura, you will be watching over the house. Naruto, you are free whatever you want for the day, and Haku, since you aren't part of my team, you can do whatever you want. Kakashi told them. Sasuke answered, HN, Sakura was upset she wasn't going to be with her Sasuke. 
Naruto thought it was a perfect time to talk with Haku and maybe get her help working with his new ice ability. All right, I'm going to go and train. Haku chan, do you want to come? Naruto asked a blushing Haku. Why, yes, Nar Naruto ku kun. Naruto just looked at her, wondering why she was stuttering. Tsunami said in a soft voice, Maybe you should stay here today. Naruto turned his head to see a blushing Tsunami. He also saw a blushing Sakura look at him only to have her look at the ground when he looked at her. He started to hear Kayubi laughing. Kayubi, what did you just do? Ha ha, kit, sorry kit, ha ha. But it looks like, ha ha, it looks like I gave you a more, ha ha. A more primal aura that is making the females woozy and acting fangirlish, ha ha. But don't worry, Haku will not be affected as she is your mate, she was probably thrown off by you calling her Haku chan. The fox said as he was literally rolling around in his cage. Oh, great, just great, this is all I need right now. Naruto thought with a groan. Um, no thanks, I really need to train, so I'll be leaving now. Bye. The Jinchuriki finished quickly as he grabbed Haku's hand and ran out the door before Tsunami could say anything else. In the forest Naruto and Haku had just made it to the forest. Now they were looking for a clearing to train in. Naruto decided to speak up, Haku, I need to talk to you about something. Naruto went on to tell her about everything about the Kayubi, how he saved her, his new bloodline, and finally her being his mate. Haku stood there listening to everything intently and she was a little surprised that by saving her life, she had become his mate, as he called it. But all in all she was happy that he told her all of this. She wasn't too upset about being his mate, she had to admit that he was cute and she did like him, but she would have liked to know him better. She actually found herself hugging him tightly after he finished explaining everything to her. Well that a relief, she doesn't seem mad. Naruto thought in relief. See, I told you, Kit, she's fine with it but you didn't tell her about Hanada. Of course, that was probably wise, too much information could be bad right now. You will need to tell her before you get back to the village. Kayubi said in a told you so voice. Yeah I know, but not now. I think I need to get to training. Naruto replied back to the fox. He turned to his mate and said, Hey, Haku-chan, I think we should get to training, maybe you can show me how to use ice jutsus. Yeah, sure. Haku said with a nod, she started to show him how to perform Hyaten Jutsu, but he was having trouble using the right amount of chakra. So to help him with his chakra control, she taught him the water walking chakra exercise. It took the rest of the day for him to get it down and by the time he fully got it down, it was time to head back to the house. Back at Tazuna's house when they got back everyone was set at the table about to eat. They sat down quietly and most of the dinner went by quietly with Tsunami and Sakura looking at Naruto once in a while and having light blushes on their faces. Haku was glaring at Sakura angrily for looking at her Naruto like that. Naruto decided to break the silence, Anyo. Kakashi sensei, we don't have anything really to do, do we? Well, not really, we know the bridge will be done in five or six days. Why do you ask? The Jonin asked as he let his eye train fully on his student. Well I was planning on training for the rest of the week and maybe stay in the forest till we leave for Konoha, replied Naruto. I have no problem with you training the rest of the time, but I don't think staying in the forest is a good idea, Kakashi said. It will help with survival training, having to find food and shelter, Naruto said, thinking quickly to get the private training trip. Alright, but I want you back the night before we leave, Kakashi said, agreeing with the logic that Naruto shot out. Sasuke was seething in anger at the fact that the Dobi was going to train the whole time while he forced to stay here and watch the bridge. But then he thought with the Dobi not being here, he could get Kakashi to teach him a couple new jutsus. The rest of the dinner went rather quietly, well besides Sakura yelling at Kakashi about Naruto getting to train while Sasuke had to stay, but she was silenced by a glare from Sasuke, him not wanting her to blow his chance to get stronger. When dinner was done, Naruto and Haku packed their supplies, said goodbyes to everyone and headed out into the forest to return in one week. On the newly finished bridge, the rest of Team 7 was waiting on their last teammate. The pink-haired one named Sakura was standing there with her foot tapping against the floor. Sensei, Naruto's late, could something have happened to him while he was training? She asked her sensei. Kakashi said, no, I don't think so, Sakura, isn't that right, Naruto? Sasuke and Sakura turned around to see Naruto. His attire was completely black with a muscle shirt, 
pants and black bandages wrapped around his ankles much like Kakashi's. His hair grew a bit longer and he had it wrapped at his back of his neck in a small ponytail and on his back were two nodashis. One was fitting in a black sheath and the other on was white. Sasuke thought, just how strong has he gotten in a week? This is unreal. Sakura was in shock as she thought, I is that and Naruto? He looks, so. Inner Sakura interrupted, hot, gorgeous, handsome, I can continue if you want to. Sakura said, arguing with her other self, shut up, I love Sasuke-kun, not Naruto. Inner Sakura said, my vessel is so stupid, the boy practically adored back then, instead she goes after the emo bastard that wants to avenge his clan. Sometimes I wish that I can escape from her with a body. A. N. Wink wink. Naruto rubbed the back of his head, sorry that we're late, we were paying our respects to Zabuza one last time and it was a long way from Gado's old hideout. Kakashi said, then you must be the ones who took Zabuza's Kabikari Bocho and it explains the new clothes, where is it? Naruto said, on my back, sensei. You see, the seven shinobi swordsmen of the mist have sentient swords that choose their next successor. Kabikari Bocho is Zabuza's sword and it changes to fit the successor. The white one is Oathkeeper and the black one is called Oblivion. A. N. Shout out to Kingdom Hearts, people. I don't own. Sasuke eyed the sword, do you even know how to use those? Naruto slipped his hand from his head to Oblivion's hilt, care to test me, Uchiha? Kakashi diffused the situation, enough, you two. Let's go. A cry went out, wait. Kakashi groaned inwardly. This was the reason I wanted to leave in the first place. The team along with Haku turned to see the whole population of Wave with Tazuna and his family in the front. You were going to leave before we could say goodbye, weren't you? Tsunami said accusingly. Kakashi said, no. Why would you think? Naruto said, sensei, your face says it all. Kakashi rubbed the back of his head sheepishly as Inari went and hugged Naruto, will you come back soon? Naruto gave him a smile. A real smile, Inari, that is a promise in a lifetime, I will definitely come back soon to wave to visit. Remember to always protect your family no matter what. Inari nodded and stepped back with Tazuna and his mother. Tsunami said, thank you, everyone, Naruto-san, Kakashi-san, Sakura-san, Sasuke-san. She went and gave them all a hug, well, except Kakashi for two reasons, dot one, he was reading his book and two, she knew about Icha Icha Paradise. Tazuna nodded to each of them and the team along with Haku ran off on the bridge, waving to them, not knowing that the bridge was christened as the Great Naruto Bridge and a plaque was dedicated to the members of Team 7. They ran off to Konoha by jumping into the trees and Sasuke asked, So, Dobi, what kind of training did you do? Naruto answered, Why are you so curious, Sasuke? You never bothered with me before or my training before. Sasuke dismissed the question, Just tell me what you did. Naruto said, I went through physical conditioning, dot you know, push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, etc. Then I sparred with Haku-chan, trying to work on my timing with Cage Bunshin, and that is all. Kakashi thought, he is hiding something from Sasuke. It is better if he doesn't tell Sasuke since he still has that superiority complex stuck in his head. I will have to ask him to stay when we report to the Hokage. After a few more hours, they approached the gate and two guards, the Chunin Zazumo and Kotetsu. Kotetsu cried out, state your name and business. Kakashi said lazily, Kakashi Hataki returning with Team 7, consisting with Naruto Uzumaki, Sakura Haruno and Sasuke Uchiha. Azumo said, where is Naruto? Kakashi inclined his head to the black-haired boy to the left of him with Haku close to him. Who is the chick? Kotetsu said with his eyebrow raised. The Jonin replied, she wants to join the ranks and we are escorting her to the Hokage. The two Chunins nodded and signaled the gatekeeper to open the gates. The gates opened slowly and Team 7 along with Haku walked through, straight to the Hokage Tower. Meanwhile as they walked through the courtyard, Naruto was getting looks that he was not used to, mostly for women who blushed and some of them smiled and waved at him. Naruto inwardly smiled that the villagers didn't recognize him at all, but he knew that soon they will discover his identity again. So until that time, he was enjoying the looks to the fullest. Soon they reached the Hokage Tower to find Serutobi at his desk working. When he looked up, he saw Team 7 and his eyes widened at the sight of Naruto. Naruto. Serutobi said. Naruto said with a foxy smile, What's up, Hokage J.I.I.? 
The Hokage said, I see that you all have returned safely and who is this girl? Kakashi said, Hokage-sama, on our mission, it appears that the client lied about it. Apparently the client was targeted by Gado, who hired and sent ninjas to assassinate him. We continued on and met Zabuza Momochi, hired by Gato also. We defeated him for the first time and this girl, Haku, posing as a hunter nin who was once under Zabuza, took him to heal his wounds. After a week, we met and clashed against each other. Sasuke was at first thought dead, but Haku put him in a false death state just like Zabuza. Needless to say, Zabuza and I destroyed Gato's hired thugs and Zabuza was the one who killed Gato at the cost of his life. The old man stroked his beard and said, All right then, Haku, you will be able to join Konoha's ranks and as common procedure, you will be placed on probation for a month since you were Zabuza's apprentice. What profession would you like to pursue? Haku answered, I would like to become a combat medic, Hokage-sama. So you will be receiving training in the hospital and I will be giving you a plaque. Naruto said, interrupting the Hokage, excuse me, Hokage J.I.I., but Haku will be staying with me. Serutobi said, fine, less paperwork for me. Now Sasuke, Sakura, you are dismissed for today and Haku, can you step in the hallway to wait for Naruto? The three bowed and went out the door. Serutobi placed a sound silencing seal on the wall and said, I am guessing that there is something more that concerns your change, Naruto. Explain from the start. Naruto began, well, after I took care of Gato's cronies from taking Tsunami and Inari, I went to the bridge to find Sasuke trapped in Haku's ice dome and Kakashi sensei fighting against Zabuza. I went inside the dome to help Sasuke and tried to get him out by using shadow clones to distract Haku, so I can attack from the outside while he attacks from the inside. Haku was able to destroy them quickly and attack us using her speed. We tried this maneuver twice and Sasuke was able to unlock his Sharingan to see her movements, but I was knocked down. When I opened my eyes, I saw Sasuke standing in front of me with Senban needles stuck all over his body. I thought he had died and I got angry at Haku for taking him away, due to my anger, I was able to unleash the Kyubi chakra and defeated Haku. She wanted me to kill her, so I was going to run and try to knock her out, but then she realized that Zabuza was in trouble, so she grabbed my arm and Shunshin to Zabuza's location, I ran after her. When I reached there, I saw that Kakashi's arm was punched straight through her chest and was on the verge of dying. I wanted to save her, because she was a lot similar to me. So the Kyubi was able to tell me what to do to save her. Serutobi said, What? You talked to the Kyubi? Naruto said, Relax, Oji-san. The fox didn't do anything at all. Well, except gave me a keke jenke. Kakashi and Serutobi both shouted, What? Naruto said, Let me finish please. Dot the Kyubi told me to mix my blood and chakra along with some of his own and pressed into her wound, which is why my hair turned black. The only drawback is that Haku Chan and I are mates, in short, husband and wife in human terms. Kakashi said, Naruto, why would you trust the Kyubi? He tried to destroy the entire village. Naruto said, because it was not the Kyubi's fault, apparently he was under some kind of genjutsu. The last thing he remembers is that the one who did it smelled like snakes and had pale yellow slitted eyes. Both the Hokage and Kakashi immediately knew who was the one who caused all of this pain in Konoha, Orochimaru, the former student of Hiruzen Serutobi, the snake Sanin, former teammate of Jiraiya and Tsunade and AS rank criminal for experimenting on fellow ninjas. Serutobi said, so what is your bloodline, Naruto? Naruto explained, from Kayubi's description, it has three parts, my bloodline affects the body, chakra and eyes. My body is much like a Hanyu, I have enhanced senses, organs, bones, muscles, chakra network, etc. I have more flexibility, a higher healing rate and pain tolerance. Now the Kyubi made a secondary system that can channel his chakra without damaging my body, only reducing to a minimum and it is immune to tampering. My chakra imprinted on Hakus, making me able to use the Hyaten in my last part, my eyes allow me to see through Genjutsu, which has been my weakest point and able to track an opponent's movements. I am able to detect my opponent's next move from the slightest tension from their bodies and can move in the exact spot where they were at. The Hokage and Kakashi were in awe and shock, the Kyubi made his container a practical bloodline gold mine. Now I also have three abilities, the first is that I give off a primal aura that makes the women act fangirlish and attracted to me. 
Kakashi and the Hokage both began to think perverted thoughts and Naruto noticed those looks. You two are so lucky that I had to explain this or I would use Oroke no Jutsu on you too. Anyway the second ability is to talk to foxes and the last ability is to control and suppress other demons, but I can only suppress Biju, the boy said. The Hokage and Kakashi were simply miffed by this, no one has ever shown the ability to suppress and control demons since Madara Uchiha and the Shodime's reign. The old man regained his composure and asked, this is all wonderful, but what did the Kayubi ask in return? Naruto said, nothing, nothing at all. All he wants is that I kick ass because he doesn't want a weak jailer at all. He is still trapped, but he sees, hears and smells everything that I do. The Hokage said, very well, you are dismissed, you better take Haku home before it gets late. Naruto nodded and went out to meet Haku to escort her to his apartment while Kakashi asked, is it like the first's bloodline? Sarutobi replied, probably, due to who his father is, but I didn't think that the Kayubi would be able to replicate it at all since it is dormant for some reason, but it is a wonder that the fox would do all of this to help Naruto. Kakashi said, maybe because of his pride, he is the most powerful of the Biju and if Naruto is his container, it is logical that he should be the most powerful of the Jinchurikis. Naruto and Haku, tomorrow, Haku-chan, I will give you a tour around Konoha. But for now, Naruto said as he made 15 cage bunchons. Okay, you get me some clothes before the villagers realize that it is me, you resupply my weapons and get me two wooden swords, you get us some food other than ramen, you go to the library and look up some wind and water jutsu along with the kenjutsu style, the rest can go to the apartment to accommodate Haku. Naruto said. The clones nodded and sprang into action. Naruto turned to Haku and said, Well, then shall we go, Kori Haim. Haku blushed scarlet red and stuttered, H hi. Naruto smiled and offered the crook of his arm, which she gingerly took it and placed her arm inside of the crook. The two walked toward the apartment while Naruto kept her occupied by telling her stories of his greatest pranks. Haku giggled as she imagined the pranks that he had done over the years of his academy days. When they finally reached his apartment, Naruto noticed that Haku was a little reluctant to let go of his arm and inwardly smiled at the affection that Haku actually liked him a bit. He opened the door and allowed Haku to walk in, the apartment was a bit small, but cozy with a warm feeling to it. Naruto showed Haku to her room and gave her the privacy that she would need. Soon the clones came back with the necessities and the one with the weapons brought the quality grade weapons, but what caught Naruto's eye was the black trench knives that the clone felt compelled to buy, the clone in charge of the food bought vegetables, steak and white sticky rice. Haku and Naruto ate together at the table this time, Haku told Naruto about her travels with Zabuza over their dinner. Soon as they were finished, Naruto inspected the library jutsu and kenjutsu style. The Kenjutsu style was called Tukatsu Ryu, translation. Frozen dragon style, his clothes consisted of an assortment of dark blue, reds and black. Soon Naruto went to bed and fell asleep with Kayubi talking to him. Kayubi said, Tomorrow, you need to work on your speed with your Kenjutsu, though your technique is good with the silent homicide style, you need to get some weights and fix up your Taijutsu. Naruto replied, Got it, Kayubi. I will need to find a taijutsu scroll that fits me the best, I think I will ask Hokage Oji-san tomorrow and I got to work on my new jutsu too. Kayubi said, get to sleep, kid, you have a big day ahead of you. Naruto mentally nodded and went to sleep. The next morning, Naruto woke up and walked into the bathroom, still rubbing his eyes. When he looked up, he saw Haku, who was topless at the moment. The boy blinked once, twice, three times and did the most logical thing that all naive boys do when it comes to the opposite, he fainted. Naruto woke up after a few minutes with Haku peering into his face. The Jinchuriki smiled at her and slowly the memories returned back to his mind. His face paled and he backed away while bowing low, Gomen Nesai, please don't think that I am a pervert, Haku-chan. Haku held her hand to her mouth as she giggled softly, it is okay, Naruto-kun. I know that you didn't mean it at all, you are just not used to live with others still and since we are technically married, it shouldn't be a problem between us. Naruto had a light blush as Kayubi chuckled at Naruto's predicament, ha 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 ha. Kit, you and this girl are going to be some good entertainment for me, by the way, tell her that she got nice s, 32c and she is still growing a bit. 
Naruto said, shut up, Aero Kitsune, I am not a pervert, I don't know about Haku-chan's size, plus we aren't even married. Kayubi retorted, hello, the girl just said that you are technically married since you are mates. Plus you are a ing ninja, which means that you are an adult. In conclusion, it means that you are able to enjoy the finer things in life such as alcohol and since you are able to kill. In terms, you are old enough to kill, you are old enough to drink and like rabbits in heat. Naruto blushed a bit more as Kayubi continued, besides your connection as mates is much deeper than your typical commitment. As mates, you are able to feel everything she feels emotionally, know her location, everything. It also means that if someone wants to date Haku, she wouldn't be attracted to that person and rejects that person, which gives you all the more reason to tell Haku about Hinata. If you imprint on Hinata as a potential mate, then Haku will do the same as well. Naruto replied, I think that it is too soon. I will tell her when the time is right. Naruto cut the mental conversation as he heard Haku calling his name. She had a worried look on her face and Naruto smiled at her to reassure her feelings that he was okay and she didn't offend him in any way. Haku smiled softly in return and got up, while you were knocked out, I took the liberty of making breakfast for the both of us. Naruto said, thanks, after this, we will go and tour Konoha, but I need to make a pit stop at the Hokage Tower to ask him about some taijutsu scrolls that I can learn. Haku nodded, that is fine, Naruto-kun. We can kill two birds with one stone since I need to see the Hokage about the hospital job. The two walked to the table to find hotcakes, eggs and sausage links on their plates. Naruto said, Wow, Haku-chan, this is amazing. Haku blushed at his praise, I it's not much, and Naruto-kun. The Jinchuriki turned to her, Are you crazy, I can never make eggs like this, I usually burn them. Haku's blush deepened as the couple sat at the table and ate their breakfast. After they ate and Naruto got dressed, they strode over to the Hokage Tower. Naruto listened to the gossip of the demon finally died on a mission and shook his head at the villagers' stupidity. He still had his whisker marks and blue eyes, but they couldn't recognize him because he had long black hair, a bit taller and had lost his baby fat only to be replaced with muscle. HMPH and they call me dead last. Naruto thought to himself. They approached the secretary, who ushered them inside to see the Hokage. Naruto, what can I do for you? Asked the Hokage. Naruto said, I would like to know if there are any taijutsu scrolls that I can borrow, so I can learn since mine is a little sloppy. The Hokage stroked his beard and said, I think I might have one. The old man thought, I will give him his mother's taijutsu style, after all, it is rightfully his and I have a feeling that something will happen to it. The Hokage approached his library and pulled out a red scroll, I think that this style will suit you well, Naruto. It is called the Raging Torrent style, made by one of our finest ninja here in Konoha. Naruto thanked him and Haku said, Hokage-sama, I would like to know when does my shift starts at the hospital. The Hokage said, let me check my records, Haku-san, dot HMM, let's see, ah, Yes, you will start tomorrow at 8 in the morning and end at 4 in the afternoon. Haku bowed, thank you, sir. The two walked out, leaving Serutobi to glare at the pile of paperwork. I hate you so much. I will find your weakness, you son of a. The old man thought at his most powerful adversary. Naruto and Haku the couple walked around the courtyard, showing her everything in the village. They first stopped by Ichiraku Ramen where Chuki and Ayame greeted them immensely despite that they didn't recognize Naruto at first with his long, black hair. Next, they went to the various training grounds and stores. After that, the last place that Naruto was taking her to happen to be his favorite spot. Haku-chan, hold tight, okay. Naruto said. Haku nodded and held him closer to her as he heo Shunshin along with her for the ride. Minutes later, she looked to see that they were on top of the Hokage Monument ironically on the fourth Hokage's head. Then she turned around to see the reason why that this spot was Naruto's favorite. You could see that the whole village was silhouetted by the sunset, making it have a soft glow radiate off of it. I it's beautiful, Haku whispered. Naruto replied, yes, it is, dot but I know something that pales in comparison. Haku asked, what? Naruto looked at her and said, you. Haku began to blush a scarlet red as she looked at Naruto's serious expression. They sat on the Yandaimi's head, 
watching as the sun sets downwards until night. Naruto looked down to see Haku sleeping soundly on his chest. He moved a strand of hair from her beautiful face, she looked so peaceful when she is sleeping. I better get her home now, he thought to himself. He shunshined back to his apartment and went to bed in his current state, feeling too tired to get Haku and himself up to move into his pajamas, plus Haku was latched on tight to his persona and he didn't have the heart to wake her up. Naruto laid himself on his back with Haku lying on his chest and went to sleep. Next morning, Naruto woke up early to train himself in his taijutsu with the raging torrent style at 6 in the morning after leaving a note for Haku to know where he was, and then he proceeded to have Cage Bunshin brush up on the silent homicide style while he himself studied the tukutsu ryu style. Then he would do some physical conditioning with some weights strapped to his arms and legs along with some meditation and after that, he would practice his chakra control by walking on water like he saw this one girl with her hair wrapped in buns did. He figured out that it was not easy to do, but more challenging than the tree climbing exercise that he did with Kakashi Sensei. After his early morning training, he would arrive at 11 o'clock for his missions with Sasuke and Sakura, who would usually yell at him for being late, but Naruto didn't care about her opinion. This was his routine for three months and over the time period, Naruto and Haku had gotten closer than ever by talking or going on dates. Naruto's hair grew and his ponytail ended at the middle of his back. A few strands of hair hung over his hit I ate and his face grew sharper, making his life difficult with women blushing and winking at him. Haku grew over the months too, feminine-wise. As Kayubi predicted, she grew to a certain extent along with her medical training. She learned that she could use the chakra scalpel jutsu in her sanban to cut off her opponent's internal systems without having to come up in personal. She changed from her mist attire to wear a navy blue mandarin collar shirt and standard jonin pants with white tape around her ankles. She learned swordsmanship also and used the tukutsu ryu style as well, she named her katana shirosuki. Naruto woke up with Haku lying on his chest. Ever since that day, Haku had gotten pretty comfortable with using his chest as a pillow. He smiled at her and made a cage bunchen and substitutes himself with it. Then he went out to do his morning workout and meditation, and then he met his team. He saw Sakura in front of two Tsuna Genin, one of them was holding his friend and declared rival, Konohamaru Serutobi very tightly. The Jinchuriki moved quickly with Oathkeeper and Oblivion to aim at the boy's neck and arm holding Konohamaru. I suggest that you let my friend go now like a good little kitty or else I take your arm and your life at the same time. The boy didn't believe him at first until Naruto jabbed lightly with oblivion at his neck, causing a bead of blood was releasing from the broken skin and released his killing intent to prove his point. His killing intent, he is really serious about killing me, the boy thought. He gently set Konohamaru down to the ground and the boy ran to his friends, Moegi and Udon while Naruto sheathed oblivion and Oathkeeper while he shunshin beside the kids. The boy growled and took out the bandage bundle on his back and the girl said, Konkuro, don't. The boy known as Konkuro glared at the blonde girl and said, Shut up, Tamari, this kid needs to learn to respect his elders. Naruto raised his eyebrow, this coming from a boy who plays dress up as a cat and wears his sister's makeup. It seems that I am the elder in this one, kid. Plus I really don't think you would do that considering your teammate beside Sasuke is practically glaring at you. Konkuro stiffened and everyone turned slightly to see a red-haired ninja with green eyes and a gourd strapped to his back. Sasuke was surprised at Naruto's perception since he never sensed the redhead at all. The boy soon a shunshin downwards to his teammates, Konkuro, put that thing away, dot you are embarrassing us since we are representing Suna. Konkuro said, but, the redhead glared at him, do it or I will kill you, Konkuro. Konkuro immediately shut up and put the bundle on his back. Come on, we are leaving, you two. Sakura said, wait a minute, you three are from the village hidden in the sand. Why are you here? The blonde girl turned to her, are you serious? We are here for the Chunin exams. Where the hell have you been at? Sasuke said, you, what is your name? The girl pointed at herself, who? Me. Sasuke replied rudely, no, the redhead. The boy replied, my name is Sabaku no Gara. Yours. Sasuke said, Sasuke Uchiha. Gara turned to Naruto and said, and what is your name? Naruto said, Naruto Uzumaki and may I ask for yours, miss. 
The blonde girl said with a blush, My name is Sabaku no Tamari. Naruto said, That is a nice name for a beautiful lady, I look forward to seeing you again, Tamari san. Tamari had a light blush on her face, which enabled Konkuro teasing material for him to use against her. Gara said, Come on, Tamari, Konkuro. Then the boy thought to himself, Interesting, mother wants the Uchiha's blood, but what is it about Uzumaki that intrigued me so much and makes me fear his power at the same time? I guess I will have to wait until the exams. I hate waiting. Naruto turned to Konohamaru, Are you okay, Konohamaru? Konohamaru said, I am okay, Naruto Nisan. That was so cool. Where did you get those swords at? Naruto said with a soft smile, Let's just say a great person entrusted them to me. Now run along and try not to bump into anyone on the way either. Moegi said, Can't you play with us? Naruto thought about it for a minute and said, Why not? I got time to kill. Sakura said, Naruto, we have a team meeting today. The Jinchuriki replied, So. Sensei is usually two hours late anyway. Sakura retorted, but he might show up on time this time. Naruto replied coolly, you said that three months ago, now if he just so happens to show up early, tell him that I thought he was going to be late like always. Naruto ran off with Konohamaru, Moegi and Udon, leaving Sasuke and Sakura to go to the meeting place on the bridge. Two hours later, Naruto showed up on the bridge with Sakura and Sasuke. Sakura growled out, don't, say, a word. Naruto smirked at her while Kakashi showed up, crouching on the railing of the bridge. Yo, the Jonin said, Sakura shrieked, you're late. Kakashi said, sorry, I was helping an old lady across the street like the gentleman I am. Sakura shouted, stop lying. Kakashi said, ignoring Sakura's outburst, now, I have an announcement. I will be entering you three in the Chunin exams, which will be held in two days' time. He looked at Sasuke's look of anticipation, Sakura's look of indecisiveness and Naruto's look of impassiveness. The exams are completely individual choice, so if you don't want to go to the exams, you don't have to do it at all. The exam will be held at room 301 at the Ninja Academy. You are free of all duties until the exams start. Kakashi shunshin away as did Naruto. Sasuke was seething that Naruto knew the Shunshin no Jutsu before he did and Sakura ran after him to ask him for a date, again, only to get rejected, again. Naruto the Kayubi said, the Chunin exams, eh? That means that there will be strong genin there including experienced ones as well. Naruto replied, yeah, I will have to train harder to be ready for the exams. Kayubi said, that Gara kid, I felt something familiar from him, I sensed demonic power from him. I think you should concentrate some of your training in controlling my Yuki Chakra, so you can get used to it and activate instantly. Naruto said, that is a good suggestion, I have a feeling that I am going to need it most likely. Naruto ended the conservation to walk inside his apartment to find Haku inside. Oh, hi, Naruto-kun. Haku said with a smile. Haku-chan, I thought you were at the hospital. Naruto said. The Hyoden user replied. They gave me leave since they have to prepare for something called the Chunin exams, so I am off for two days. Naruto said, So you too, huh? Haku said, Are you in the exams? The Jinchuriki replied, I am thinking of going in the exams. I would like to test my progress to see if I am stronger than I was when I was back in wave. Haku smiled, putting a hand over Naruto, I think you are stronger than before, Naruto-kun. If you need the exams to convince yourself, then I think you should go. Just be careful, some of the genin are taught to kill their enemies without any hesitation. Naruto smiled, thanks, Haku-chan. I will be careful, he gave her on the cheek, making her blush red and hold her cheek in a daze. Kayubi thought as he chuckled, he has a way with words and actions, this kid is going to be a lady killer if he keeps this up. Over the two days, Naruto sparred with Haku and learned to control Kayubi's chakra. He was able to control up to two tails only with his Yuki. After that, he felt that he would lose control if he tried to get the third tail to activate, but he knew that he shouldn't need it at all due to Kayubi's reassurance of Gara's demonic level. He wouldn't need the demon fox's cloak at all, but the Jinchuriki was cautious about it. The number one of all ninja to survive was to never underestimate your opponent, which is why Naruto always lived.
He got up and checked his inventory to seal his wooden swords, his trench knives, some of his kanai and shuriken along with the first aid kit that Haku made for him. He strapped on his two kanai holsters and told Haku goodbye, who gave him on the cheek for good luck. They were both blushing as Naruto walked out the door with Kayubi in his head laughing at the two's reactions. He wore black fingerless gloves brown boots that cover up his ankles, black baggy pants that gave up a slight bulge at the end since they were fitted inside the boots and an indigo collared custom made muscle shirt. A. N. Picture Virgil from Devil May Cry without his coat if I didn't describe it enough. If you had direct chakra to travel into it, it was capable of deflecting throne kanai and etched on the back was the kanji for honor and ice. The Jinchuriki met up with Sasuke and Sakura to his surprise, waiting for him. The three of them went inside the ninja academy to see that they were a lot of people on the second floor. Team 7 rushed over to see that there were two genin that were up in front, blocking the door to room 301. Naruto looked at the two and recognized them as the Chunin guards. They must be the ones who are trying to weed out the weaklings for the competition, thought the Jinchuriki. Before Naruto could tell anybody about the disguise, the ever-arrogant Uchiha said, Yo, release the genjutsu on the sign, I got business on the third floor. The disguised Kotetsu attacked Sasuke and the Uchiha relented by sending a kick of his own, but a bull-haired kid came in the nexus of their kicks and stopped it. Then a bun-haired girl dressed in a pink Chinese-style shirt and green pants came over to the green spandex-wearing kid to knock him upside his head. Lee, I thought we agree on not revealing our skills. Lee said, but Tenten. He looked at Sakura and Tenten followed his gaze to see Sasuke and Naruto. She sighed and then a new voice called, Hey, you with the scowl. Sasuke turned to see a Hyuga with a smug look on his face, What is your name? Sasuke said, Uchiha Sasuke. The Hyuga replied, Neji Hyuga. I look forward to see you in the exams. Lee, Tenten, let's go. The team went upstairs and soon afterwards, Team 7 followed them. As soon as they were proceeding upstairs, Lee called down to Sasuke, Sasuke Uchiha, I challenge you to a duel. Naruto said, Sasuke, we have no time for this. Sasuke said, I have plenty of time to beat this freak. Naruto said, Sasuke, never underestimate your opponent. Sasuke didn't listen and Naruto sighed, fine, but don't say I didn't warn you at all. Naruto left to go upstairs to see Tenten waiting for Lee. Hello, you are Tenten, right? Naruto asked. Tenten said, yes and you are. Naruto held out his hand, Naruto Uzumaki, nice to meet you. Tenten took his hand and gave him a firm handshake, do you mind if I see your swords? Naruto smiled, no, not at all. He unsheathed Oathkeeper and Oblivion with a ring and held out the hilt of Oblivion for her to inspect. I have never seen a sword like this before, what is her name? She asked curiously. The Jinchuriki replied as he took it back and gave Oathkeeper to her, Oblivion and this one is Oathkeeper. Tenten said, both of them compliments each other, Oathkeeper seems like a defensive weapon to protect and Oblivion seem like the offensive. Together, they are unstoppable if they are used correctly. Naruto said, you seem to know your weapons, Tenten. Tenten said, I have too. I plan to become a weapons specialist after all. Naruto said, I hope to see in the exams then, Tenten. Tenten said, as do I, have you seen Lee? Naruto said, preferably, he is probably kicking the Uchiha's ass now due to the speed he did display against those Chunin. Tenten said, Chunin, those were Genin. Naruto replied, no, those were Chunin, preferably the ones that you see guard the gates. Tenten said, how? Naruto said, the henge no jutsu. Tenten slapped her forehead, not realizing that the chunin fooled them with a simple henge. Naruto said, well, we better wait for them by the doorway. Naruto and Tenten walked together to the doors leading to room 301. Kayubi said, she is cute, I bet she will be even cuter with those ridiculous buns on the top of her head. She reminds me of a panda or Mickey Mouse. Naruto said, Kayubi, is that really all you think about? Women. Kayubi said, No, I think about booze and how many ways I will kill, maim and or torture that snake bastard when we find his slippery ass. Naruto sweat dropped as he said, I should have never even asked about it. He was disturbed when Tenten waved her hand in his face, Hey, Naruto, are you okay? 
she asked. Naruto said, I am fine, I am just thinking about the exams. Tenten said, you are nervous, aren't you? The Jinchuriki replied, I am a little, this is my first time taking these exams. Tenten said, don't worry, I am sure that you will be fine, plus if things go wrong, we will bail you out. Naruto chuckled, it is more like the other way around, Tenten. Tenten playfully shoved him, hey, don't get why, I bet I could beat you with one hand behind my back. Naruto said, I guess that we have to wait and see, Tenten. The two went up to find Kakashi waiting by the door and Tenten was allowed inside. Naruto said, this wasn't individual choice, was it? Kakashi said, no, it wasn't. Where are Sasuke and Sakura? Sure enough, Sakura and a beaten Sasuke came up to them. Kakashi said, what the hell happened to you two? Sakura said, green spandex, sunset, rainbow, so, much, hugging. Kakashi's lone eye widened and Naruto became confused, what? Kakashi said, it seems that they met my guy. Naruto said, who is that? Kakashi said, you know Rock Lee. Naruto nodded and Kakashi said, picture an older version of him talking out the flames of youth. Naruto shuddered at the thought of it, but he had no idea what were the flames of youth. But it doesn't add up with Sasuke's bruises. Kakashi continued. Naruto said, I can answer that. Sasuke Tem answered a challenge to Rock Lee and got his ass kicked. Judging by Lee's speed, I think that Sasuke's body couldn't keep up with him. Sasuke sent a glare at Naruto as Kakashi said, that seems understandable, now good luck to you all. Team 7 nodded and went through the door, but Kakashi whispered to Naruto, if you get into trouble, Naruto, don't hesitate to do everything in your power to survive. Naruto said seriously, I got it. Soon Sasuke was glomped by another one of his fangirls, Ino Yamanaka of the Yamanaka clan, who specializes in jutsu that affect the aspects of the mind. Sakura began to yell at her and the two started their feud as usual. Then Team 8 came up with Kiba announcing their presence. Hey, where is Naruto at? The Inazuka asked. Ino noticed that the blonde-haired prankster was not around them and asked, that is right, where is he? Naruto shook his head and said, I am right here, Ino. The rookies turned to see him and their mouths dropped especially Ino's. Hanada blushed at her crush and how handsome he had gotten. Geez, I can't believe you guys didn't recognize me, well, except Shino. I can tell he knew who I was by my chakra, Naruto said as he reached behind his neck and picked out a bug on his finger. The bug flew off his finger and went straight to Shino. Naruto turned to Hanada and said, Oheyo, Hanada-chan. Hanada blushed and almost fainted to the ground, but Naruto grabbed her before she hit the floor and helped her steady herself. Ino, Sakura and Kiba shouted at the same time, since when you call her Hanada-chan? Naruto said, since now, after all, she is a princess, a cute one too. Hanada blushed as she whispered, T thank you. Naruto put a hand on her forehead, are you okay, Hanada-chan? You look a bit red, you don't have a fever, do you? Kayubi warned, Kit, you are going to make her faint with all of this attention on her and I think Mud Boy just might attack you. Naruto replied, he wouldn't dare, if I find one scratch on Hinata-chan because of that, I will rip him apart. Suddenly Kayubi started to growl and Naruto asked hesitantly, Kayubi, what is wrong? The demonic fox answered, that silver-haired kid, he is reeking of the smell of snakes. Naruto said, really? That is not the one who placed the genjutsu on you, but he might be working for him or that lady we saw at the dango shop. Kayubi replied, no, her smell is faint and covered with dango instead. This one is laced with it. The jinchuriki said, calm down for now, if he shows any sign of being a spy, I will take him out in the exam. He focused on the newcomer, who introduced himself as Kabuto Yakushi. Naruto instantly searched his memory for that name and remembered that he is a medic, trained by his adoptive father, who was one of Konoha's finest. If he was a spy, he would be essential to a person who hated Konoha. Sakura asked, is this your first time, Kabuto-san? Kabuto said, nope, this is my seventh, but I have gotten some good information over the years. Want to see my ninja info cards? Sasuke asked, do you have information on individuals? Kabuto said, why yes. The Uchiha said, 
I want information on Rock Lee and Sabaku no Gara. Kiba said, I want information on Naruto Uzumaki. He grinned as he thought, I bet his record is humiliating and then Hinata will go out with me. Kabuto pulled out three cards and said, Rock Lee, he has completed 20D rank and 11C rank missions, his Taijutsu is off the charts, but his Ninjutsu and Genjutsu is non-existent. Sabaku no Gara, he has completed 14C rank and 1B rank, his abilities are unknown, but it is said that he has returned from every mission without a scratch. Lastly, Naruto Uzumaki, he has completed 24D rank and 2A rank missions. Sakura said, wait, that is wrong, we only did one. Kabuto said, oh, you didn't know, he happened to catch a chunin, Mizuki Tuji, from taking the scroll of sealing and killing Uruka Yumino. Anyway, he seems to know the cage bunshin no jutsu and his taijutsu has improved along with his kenjutsu. Naruto said, you seem to know a lot about that mission despite the fact that it was classified to the Hokage's eyes only. On top of that, you are Ishide Yakushi's adopted son, who was a chief medical ninja in the Anbu, who was one of Konoha's finest medics at the time. Since he is your father, he taught you everything you know, which means you are a spy. Kabuto laughed. What makes you think so, Naruto-kun? Naruto replied, the fact that you failed this exam six times despite the fact you were an accomplished medic and the fact that you smelled a lot like snakes, a smell that is known to only one person who could possibly have the motive to destroy Konoha. Orochimaru, the snake Sanin an S-rank criminal. The place was silent until Kabuto laughed again, you are quite the comedian, Naruto-kun. Me affiliated with Orochimaru, that is very humorous of you to think so. Naruto laughed as well, you are right, Kabuto. To think that you caught me that fast. The rookie nine sighed in relief, but Kabuto thought, that boy. I am going to have to take him out when Orochimaru-sama separates them from the Uchiha. Naruto thought, I got you, traitor. A man shouted, okay, Genin, pipe down and shut the hell up now. First rule, there will be no fighting whatsoever or I will have to kill you. That man was Ibiki Morino head of the torture and interrogation division. Ibiki said, good, now everyone will come in a single order fashion to get a paper from one of these chunin and draw a number. The number will indicate where you will be sitting for the remainder of this part. I will explain the rules when everyone is seated. Soon all of the genin were seated down and Ibiki said, okay, now here are the rules. This test had a grade point system, each question is equal to one point. If you get one wrong, you lose a point. Now if you even think of cheating, you lose two points, which means there are chances that you will be disqualified. Now this test also depends on your teammates, your points must meet the requirement of 20 points or more. If you don't, you along with your teammates will be thrown out of the exam. Sasuke and Sakura immediately started to glare at Naruto, but the Jinchuriki smirked as he leaked killing intent and both of his teammates felt a chill running down their spines whenever they looked at Naruto. Ibiki said, now begin. There were a rustling of papers and Naruto looked at his paper to see that the questions were very hard to answer. Naruto thought, Ibiki gave us enough chances to cheat, why would he do that unless, he wants us to cheat. Usually if you are caught cheating in the academy, you would be thrown out immediately. Now who has the answers? Naruto's eyes darted around to see Shikamaru two rows ahead of him, but he was sleeping on top of his test. Sakura was three rows to his left behind him and then he noticed that Hinata was beside him. Hinata used her Byakugan to cheat and then looked over to Shikamaru to see his paper, which was filled with the correct answers. She wrote them down quickly and deactivated it before anyone could see. Looks like I have to use Hinata-chan for my answers. Gomen, Hinata-chan, but I have to pass. Naruto looked down at his test, pretending that he was thinking and concentrated on focusing his chakra. Near the lamp where there were mirrors, Naruto used the moisture in the air to form an ice mirror and directed it to Hinata's paper. Naruto smirked and began to write the answers down quickly before anyone caught on to his scheme. He noticed that Sasuke used his Sharingan to copy the person's pencil movements, Tenten used the mirrors to help her and Lee with the answers and Gari used sand to blind and looked a random genin's paper. Naruto found Hinata was glancing to her left to watch his movements, so he decided to turn his eyes on her and winked at her. Hinata blushed and turned away while doing her occasional habit of pressing her pointer fingers together. Kayubi said, Naruto, 
Stop teasing the poor girl or she will die of blushing. Naruto said, What? I just show her that I am okay. Ibiki said, Okay, now for the tenth question, this depends on your answer with a few more rules. If you answer this question incorrectly, you and your team will automatically fail and never be able to take the exam again. Kiba shouted, That is some bullshit, there are many genin here that were here from last year. Ibiki said, Too bad they were lucky enough that they didn't have me. This is my classroom and my rules are law here. Got it, puppy. The proctor continued, but I will be nice, if you don't want to answer this question, then you can quit and will be able to take the exam again. Now for those of you, who don't want to take the 10th question, raise your hand now. Many hands rose up in the air in silence as various ninja and their teams failed due to their fear. When Naruto noticed that the room was almost empty, he started to laugh, making Ibiki look at him. What is so funny, Uzumaki? Ibiki asked. Naruto replied, the fact that you fooled the idiots who left about being able to ban them from the exams. You used the fear and caused turmoil in their minds to torture themselves. No wonder, you are dubbed as the Mind Reaper, but I don't think it is going to work on us, we are smarter than that. Ibiki thought, this kid, he is very smart to catch on and with his words, he diffused the atmosphere I just created. The proctor said with an evil smirk, just for that, Uzumaki, you have just sealed this room's fate, as a result, you all, pass the first part of the exam. Sakura said, what, what about the questions and what was the point of the tenth question? Ibiki replied with a smirk, you can say that the decision to stay or leave was the last question. The other nine questions were there to test your information gathering skills. You had to cheat in order to pass, so there were three chunin disguised as genin in the room with the correct answers. Those of you who cheated poorly were eliminated and the team suffered. Sometimes, information is more valuable than life itself. People risk their lives on missions and certain information can be the difference between life and death. People will do anything to acquire it. He revealed the scars in his head. You must be vigilant if the enemy happens to capture you and endure any pain. Sasuke thought, the aftereffects of torture. A black form burst through the window, laughing at the examinees. All of the students' eyes went wide as the newly revealed Kunoichi threw two kunai into the ceiling, pinning the black cloth that previously surrounded the Kunoichi to the ceiling of the room. The figure wore a tan trench coat, a fishnet bodysuit and orange skirt. She started to speak in a demanding tone. I am Mitarashi Anko, your second examiner for the Chunin exams. Now everyone get off your asses and follow me to training ground 44. Omake, is this your first time, Kabuto-san? Sakura asked. Kabuto said, no, this is my seventh time, but over the years, I have defeated some people and gained powerful cards. Want to see my Pokemon cards? Naruto took out Oathkeeper and Oblivion to cut off Kabuto's head. Sakura yelled. Naruto, why did you do that, he just wanted to show us his Pokemon cards. Naruto said, you are so stupid, Sakura. Sakura said, what? Ino said, Kabuto was a spy. Sakura said, what, how? The rest of the rookie nine said, because this is Yu-Gi-Oh town, mother. The woman known as Anko Mitarashi looked over the genin and turned to Ibiki, you passed 26 teams, Ibiki. Are you losing your touch? Ibiki replied, you are early, Anko and no, I am not losing my touch. It seems that we have an interesting bunch this time. Anko said, oh, well, it doesn't really matter anyway, my test will cut them in half. Now move, the genin filed out of the room to follow the lady, who seemed to be scarier than the last one. After the genin left to follow Anko to the next location, Ibiki began to pick up the papers on the desks until he came up to one with a note addressed to him. Ibiki, I would like to inform you that Kabuto Yukushi is in league with S-ranked criminal Orochimaru. He seems to know a lot of classified information including the one that was involving with the capture of traitor Mizuki Tuji. I plan on pursuing him in the exams or most likely he will try to find me. I need you to report this to the Hokage and have him send Anbu while I will stall Kabuto. I will use the Kyubi's chakra as a beacon to help them find our location. Naruto Uzumaki Ibiki immediately performed a shunshin to the Hokage's office to report this urgent matter to him. Forest of Death, this ground here, kitties, is training ground 44, also known as the Forest of Death. 
Why is it named that? Well, you all will soon know the meaning of the name. Anko said. Naruto replied, it doesn't look like much to me. Anko looked at him and the Jinchuriki noticed the evil glint in her eye. She threw a kanai at Naruto, who deflected it with Oathkeeper in hand. Then Anko came up behind him and said, young ones like you, have a tendency to die first. She cut his cheek only for Naruto to disappear. Anko felt the cold steel of Oathkeeper against her neck as Naruto said, rule number 13, always be ready for unexpected surprises. Sasuke thought, so fast, he is almost as fast as that Lee kid, he is definitely stronger than before. Hanada thought, S. Sugoi, Naruto-kun. Hiba growled as he thought, so what? He will never be able to beat me, he is still Adobe. Then I will take Hanada away from you and force her to have my pups after I humiliate you, showing her the flaws that you have. Anko said after Naruto stepped back and withdrew his weapon from her jugular, well, here is the test there is a tower in the middle of this forest. Your objective is to reach the tower with these two scrolls. She pulled out a white and black scroll each adorned with the kanji for heaven on the white and earth on the black. The Tokabetsu Janin continued, your team will receive one of these scrolls. Half is earth and the other receives heaven, you will have to battle each other to get the scroll that you need. The rules are that you must come to the tower within the period of five days, you must have your entire team with you to get into the tower. If one of your team members are dead or incapacitated, your team is disqualified. The last rule is that you must never open the scroll at all circumstances, if you do, well, let's just say that bad things will happen. Now everyone that wants to continue must sign these death waiver forms meaning if you just so happen to die. I am not responsible for your death. We will have a 15 minute break for you to discuss with your team. The genin scattered to their teams to sign their forms, Naruto signed his instantly and began to search for Kabuto. He found him over by one of the chunin who was giving them the scrolls. He is not backing out, which means he is going to try and kill me. His teammates might not know about his loyalty or they are in league with him, so I got to be careful. He thought to himself. Kayubi said, just make sure you kill him. With this Kabuto character out of the way, Orochimaru can no longer heal himself since the traitor is probably his personal medic boy toy. Naruto said, Kayubi, I appreciate it if you didn't put that mental image in my mind. That is even worse than the genjutsu that Kakashi described with Guy and Lee. Kayubi said, good point. So the teams all went to get a scroll and Naruto got his scroll and gave Sasuke a duplicate. Something in his gut told him that giving the scroll to Sasuke was a bad idea. After all the teams got their scrolls, they approached their gates and when Anko gave them the signal to start, they rushed through. Naruto immediately made a cage bunshin discreetly and sent it away. Naruto cage bunshin the clone crouched on a branch to find an unsuspected aim team. The clone smirked as he took out two kanai in his hand and jumped down on two of the aim nin, killing them by stabbing the ninja's necks. The last one tried to run but he was put in a false death state with Tusenban before he could get any further. He searched the ninja's inventory to find a earth scroll, kanai, shuriken, blank scrolls and a summoning contract for dragons. Hum, dragons, I think I will hold on to this. Naruto thought, he quickly stuffed it into his pouch and moved toward his original self's position. Naruto the original instantly got the nerves that somebody was coming and opened his mouth to speak until a strong wind pushed him away leaving Sasuke and Sakura alone. He crashed into a tree a few feet away from his team to find a large snake in front of him. Orochimaru has been feeding you well, Naruto commented as he took out Oblivion. The snake hissed as it coiled back and struck at Naruto. The Jinchuriki waited and jumped at the last second onto its head, and then he took Oblivion and stabbed the snake's head. It thrashed and flipped for a few minutes until it went limp and disappeared into smoke. It seems Orochimaru is here, Naruto mused, and then he heard whistling and used his nodashi to block the incoming shuriken. He looked up to see Kabuto and his team. I am assuming Orochimaru sent you three to kill me, huh? The Jinchuriki said. Kabuto said, you know too much, Naruto-kun. I can't have you interfering with Orochimaru-sama's plans. Naruto said, what? Plans for the positions you two are going to try tonight? Enlighten me. Kabuto narrowed his eyes, his grand plan is to raise Konoha into the ground with his new army. Naruto said, you mean Odo, 
That country is new and hardly has any ninja. Which means that you have an ally to help Orochimaru with his plans and it would be someone that we would least expect. Suna, our ally since Cloud is independent, Iwa is cautious about us and AIM doesn't give a shit about us. Am I correct? Kabuto said, you are very smart, Naruto-kun. We could use you in our cause. Naruto said, sorry, I prefer to have free will, which is something that doesn't have to be in auto. Kabuto said, please, you are a jinchuriki. Everyone hates your guts and has beaten you since you were young. You think that there are people here that accept you? Naruto replied, yes, there are a few, if they don't like me at all, so be it. I don't give a damn about what they say because as long as there are people that I know care about me, I will protect this village to my last breath. Kabuto said, then this is the end, Yoroi, go, Yoroi attacked Naruto, who backflipped and dodged his punch. Yoroi suddenly did hand signs and his hands were covered with chakra. Does he know medical jutsu too? Naruto thought to himself. Yoroi ran at him, trying to hit him with his chakra-infused fist, but the jinchuriki dodged him. Finally Naruto grabbed his forearm and broke in with a single swing, and then cut off Yoroi's other arm. Yoroi screamed in pain, but Naruto silenced him by bringing his sword down on Yoroi's head. The Jinchuriki flicked off blood from oblivion and Kayubi shouted, Kit, behind you. Naruto turned to see Masumi behind him and caught his forearm, but the weird thing was that Masumi's arm bended around his own and Masumi caught him in a choke hold. Masumi cracked his neck and Naruto disappeared in a puff of smoke. Masumi said, What? Suddenly a sword burst from his chest and Masumi gasped in pain, How did you? Naruto said, I used Cage Bunshin earlier since I sensed you three watching me in case the snake didn't eat me. Then I could worry me with it when your arm twisted around mine. Goodbye, traitor. Naruto twisted the sword to make the hole bigger and Masumi died before he hit the ground. The Jinchuriki said, pointing his sword at Kabuto, it is your turn, Kabuto. Kabuto said, please, you can't defeat me, I may be a genin, but I am on par with your sensei Kakashi in power. Naruto said, Rule number three, never underestimate your opponent. Kabuto did hand signs and chakra covered his hands, which Naruto took out Oathkeeper and moved into a stance. Kabuto charged at him, striking at Naruto's head, but the Jinchuriki jumped back while swinging Oathkeeper at Kabuto's face. Kabuto moved back to avoid the strike by a slim margin and retaliated with a strike on his own. His hand was able to touch Naruto's bicep and Naruto recoiled back, his arm became limp. Damn it, he cut the muscle. Kayubi. Kayubi said, I am working on it, it will be up and running in seven minutes. In the meantime, try to kill that motherer. Naruto thought, working on it, Kabuto's strong. Naruto used the time to dodge Kabuto's attacks with his chakra scalpels and kunai at him. Just give up, Naruto-kun. You are nothing to Orochimaru or me, Kabuto said. The Jinchuriki said, coming from the submissive one who plays doctor with his master is a lot. Orochimaru must have you on a long leash to speak of him so highly. Kabuto said, do not speak of Orochimaru-sama like that, he is a great leader. Naruto replied, sure, if he was a great leader, then why he isn't Hokage? Oh, I know, because he is a complete sociopath, I mean, sure, he was a great scientist and all, but using people for painful experiments and most of them were comrades. I rather go to Iwa than serve under his gay ass. Kabuto bristled in anger, I am warning you, Uzumaki. Naruto said, Ah, you're mad, what are you going to do to me? You are nothing but a submissive to Orochimaru. You actually think that he cares. Please, you are alive because of your skills and when your time runs out, he will discard you and find a new boy toy to play with. It is just that simple, Kabuto Tem. Kabuto roared. I am definitely going to enjoy carving your heart out piece by piece. Naruto felt the feeling in his arm and sheathed his swords as he called on the Kayubi's chakra, making the demon fox's cloak surround his entire body. Come and try, snake. Kabuto attacked at him while Naruto just stood there and when Kabuto's hand entered the chakra, his hand began to burn. Kabuto tried to move back, but Naruto grabbed his hand. You fool, since you know that I am a Jinchuriki. Dot you should also know that the Kayubi's chakra is fatal to anybody but me. Now you die here, this is for all the people you helped Orochimaru kill.
Dot now let's see how you like your chakra network being tampered with. Naruto sent the Yuki pouring into Kabuto's system, making the medic scream in pain as the network was destroyed. Kabuto struggled, but he was in too much pain and his Aniyu Shamatsu was not working fast enough to repair the damage. Kabuto passed out from the pain and Naruto let him go. Kayubi said, we should kill him. Naruto replied, now if we do that, then we will never know where Orochimaru is at or what he plans to do at all. He is useless now and he will either have to tell us everything or be killed by Orochimaru. He made a cage bunshin to watch the unconscious Kabuto until the Anbu came to pick the Odo spy up. Then he saw the cage bunshin that had cornered the aim ninja and asked, you got the scroll. Naturally, the clone said as he passed the dragon contract and the scroll. What the hell is a summoning contract doing here? Naruto asked himself. The clone said, I don't know, but don't question what life gives you, just go with the flow. The clone dispelled and Naruto instantly got its memories of the bout with the aim nin. Then he strode off to find his teammates. Sasuke and Sakura the Uchiha and his fangirl were currently engaged with a tall woman hailed from Kusa. She first tried to impersonate as Naruto, but Sasuke saw that her henge was off because Oathkeeper and Oblivion were not on her back. Then she used killing intent to freeze them into place, but Sasuke stabbed himself to overcome his frozen state and was currently running away along with Sakura. The Kunoichi summoned a snake to give chase and eat them both alive. Sasuke thought, this girl, dot she is not a genin, she is a monster. We need to get away. The snake came closer and closer as it opened its maw only to eat a barrage of kanai and ice and bon. No eating teammates, it is bad for your health. Naruto said with his arms crossed. Sakura shouted, Naruto, we have to get out of here before we get killed. Naruto ignored her cry and said, Orochimaru, can someday you choose a freaking gender and stick with it please. It is highly troublesome to call you a he, she or he she at different points. Orochimaru said, you are supposed to be dead. Naruto said, and yet I am not, your subordinates were hard to beat, especially Kabuto. He was a tricky one. I had to practically make him a vegetable to defeat him. Orochimaru said, that is impossible. Naruto said, nothing is impossible when it comes to a ninja. The snake Sanin said, I am going to kill you, Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto said, no doubt you can, but you would blow your cover and the Anbu, who happened to be near our location would find you. You have two options, dot one, you can retreat seeing that we can't defeat you by ourselves or two, you can stay here and kill us only to have dozens of Anbu on your ass. Orochimaru growled and said, How about option 3? Before Naruto could react, Orochimaru shouted, Fudin, Daitapa. The blast hit Naruto away and Orochimaru appeared behind Sasuke to bite him on the neck. Soon a symbol of three tones similar to the Sharingans appeared and Sasuke knelt down, screaming in pain. Orochimaru leapt away and Sakura shouted, You freak! What did you do to Sasuke-kun? The Sanin answered with an evil laugh, I gave Sasuke a farewell gift, a gift of power. With it, he will come to me and seek me out for power, power that he so craves to destroy his brother. With that, Orochimaru left by sinking slowly into the ground. Naruto burst back in to see Orochimaru's head disappear. Kayubi said, Kit, we could have killed him when we had the chance. Naruto said, Fighting Kabuto's team was hard enough and I don't have enough strength to defeat Orochimaru in my current state even with your chakra. I am sure he has a way to suppress a Jinchuriki's seal if he ever came across such a person. If that would have happened, I would have been screwed and we both would have died. I am sure that you don't want that as much as I do. Kayubi said, you have a point, fine, Kit, I will tolerate this just this once, once. Naruto thought, thanks, he turned to Sakura who was caring for a passed out Sasuke. Sakura, come on, we can't stay here. Other teams might try to come and take our scrolls. We got to move to the tower now. Sakura nodded and Naruto made a cage bunshin to carry Sasuke as the two moved toward the tower. A few hours later Naruto entered the tower with Sakura trailing behind him and Sasuke over his left shoulder. He walked towards the center of the large room, having noticed the large unwound scroll on the wall. Naruto read the words out loud as Sakura listened. If you do not have heaven, go to gain knowledge and wisdom. If you do not possess earth, 
go to train in the fields and gain strength. If you open both scrolls of heaven and earth, dangerous paths turn into safe ones. This is the secret of, X. It will lead you on your way. Sandame Hokage, Sakura was confused by the riddle, what does it mean? Naruto replied, I think heaven represents your mind and earth represents the body. If you are like Shikamaru, who has heaven, then he has got to train his ass off. If you are like Kiba, then you have to learn to study at the library. When you have both heaven and earth, nothing can stand in your way. We better open the scrolls now. Naruto pulled out both of the scrolls contemplatively and handed one of the scrolls to her. Naruto and Sakura opened the scrolls in unison. Glancing at the contents, Naruto's eyes widened. It was a complicated set of seals. In the center was the kanji for human or person. Sakura came to the same conclusion as Naruto and they both threw the scrolls on the ground forming an X shape. The center of the X shape started to bulge. It burst in a puff of smoke that clouded the genin's vision. The only thing they could see was a dark silhouette in the smoke, and so Naruto and Sakura tensed. Naruto was surprised as the silhouette that appeared inside the smoke was familiar. As the smoke cleared the two relaxed, they were relieved to see that it wasn't an enemy. In fact it was the direct opposite of their enemy. What are you doing here, Aruka sensei Sakura asked as Naruto gave off a wide smile. Uruka was about to answer when he saw the unconscious form of Sasuke. He frowned but spoke anyway, I'm here to congratulate you on completing to second exam. You still have a few days, till the second exam ends, so you can relax in one of the unoccupied rooms until the second exam is over. Uruka disappeared as Naruto headed towards the waiting area, carrying Sasuke on his shoulder. As they got to the designated area Naruto saw that the San team was there along with teammate and set off to a clear side with Sasuke, propping the unconscious Genin against the wall a few feet away. After taking a quick inventory check, Naruto dozed off for a nap. Five days had passed and soon the remaining teams were escorted into an arena. Enko announced, First of all, I would like to congratulate you all for passing the exam. Then she thought, to think that 21 passed out of all 78 participants, well, I did say that it will be cut in half, but I was expecting single digits. The Jonin stared at the Genin and Naruto shifted his eyes around the room. He noticed that a Taki team made it along with the Rookie 9 and the mysterious Suna team. It seems that the strong people have survived this round, Dot and I see that Orochimaru is here as well. I can't do anything here without placing everyone in danger, Naruto thought to himself. Enko said, now, we will let Hokage-sama explain the third test. Hokage-sama, if you please. Sarutobi nodded, thank you, Enko. First, I personally congratulate you on passing the second part of this exam. Before we begin, I would like to inform you about the true reason of this exam. The genin perked up at the Hokage's words. True reason, Sakura thought, why do we have all the allied countries taking the exam together? Sarutobi asked rhetorically, to promote friendship among the countries, to raise the level of shinobi. Please don't be confused with these sugar-coated words, this exam is, Tenten thought, is. Sarutobi continued, is a technical war between the allied countries. All the genin except Gara, Shino, and Kabuto's team were shocked. Wait, just what does that mean? Tenten said. Sarutobi mused, if we were to go back in time, the allied countries were all enemies. To preserve peace, the Chunin exam selection was born to solve the problem. Kiba shouted, Why the hell we have to do that shit? Is this for deciding Chunin? Sarutobi answered, Yes, that is correct, but also this exam has another side. You are risking your own lives to fight for your respected village's prestige. The ones watching the exam will be leaders and influential individuals, also each daimyo will be there to watch you fight. If you are considered weak, the country will lose clients and vice versa. It also sends a political message to other countries to show their strength. Li shouted, but, why do we have to risk our lives in battle? Sarutobi replied, the strength of the country relies on the strength of the village. In turn, the strength of the village lies within the strength of the shinobi and the strength of the shinobi is at its peak when in danger. It is to show off your own strength, which only has meaning when your life is at risk. That's why those who came before you have fought in the Chunin exam for this dream that is meaningful. 
Tenton said, but, why do you say stuff about this exam being for friendship? The Hokage said, like I said, I don't want you to confuse this purpose. By losing life and establishing balance, this is the shape of friendship in the world of the shinobi. Now before we begin the third test, I will tell you one more thing, this is not just a test. This is a battle with your dreams and your country's prestige on the line. Gara said, can you hurry up and tell us what this life risking battle entails? The Hokage said, hi, I'd like to now explain the third test now, but, then a sickly looking Jonan interrupted, actually cough, I would like you to allow me, Gekko Hayate, as a referee. Serutobi said, by all means, Hayate-san. Hayate gets up from his kneeling position and turned to the genin, hi everyone, I am Hayate, and there is, um, something that I would like you to do something before the third test. Naruto looked at him with a raised eyebrow, what the hell? This dude looks so sick, but I am guessing that he is using that look for people to underestimate him. Hayate said, um, it's a preliminary for the third test to decide who gets to participate in the main event. Sakura said softly, preliminaries. Shikamaru shouted, preliminaries, the hell does that mean? Hayate coughed, simple, there is too many of you since the first and second test has been way too easy for you guys. According to the rules, we must have a preliminary and reduce the number of the participants. As Hokage-sama said, there are many guests here, so the fights will take too long. If those of you feel like quitting may do so now. One of the tacky nin raised his hand, I need to quit, my leg is broken and I just came here to help my team past. Hayate said, your name. The boy answered, Genji Kishimo. Hayate checked off his name and nodded to Genji. Genji nodded to his teammates, Natsumi, Akito, be careful. Natsumi nodded and Akito scoffed as he whispered, I don't need luck, Genji hobbled away from the arena as Hayate scratched off his name. Sasuke watched as he passed the other students and thought, he looks like a weakling anyway. Hayate said, so, no more retiring. Nobody moved from their positions and then the Jonin said, okay, then let's, um, continue the preliminaries. This preliminary will consist of one-on-one -on -one fighting, you will basically fight as if you were in a real-life confrontation. Since we now have an even number, we will conduct 10 matches and obviously the winners will proceed to the third test. Rules, there are no rules, the fight continues until one of you is dead, unconscious or I declare the winner of the match and the object that controls your destiny is. Anko muttered in her mic, open it. A wooden panel opened up to reveal an electric scoreboard. Now let's announce the first match, Hayate said with a cough. The scoreboard began to flash through names as the genin looked on in anticipation. Suddenly the scoreboard stopped on two names, Uchiha Sasuke versus Akito. Sasuke said, HMPH, already the best is always first anyway. Naruto replied, don't get why, Sasuke. Sasuke retorted, whatever, Dobi. Just be sure to give me those swords of yours when you lose against me. Naruto replied, over my dead body. Hayate said, now will the two entrants step forward as the rest go upstairs to the balcony. Naruto went to stand beside Hinata and she blushed as he smiled at her, making the Inazuka growl lowly. Sasuke and Akito faced each other as Hayate said, the two participants in the first match are Sasuke Uchiha and Akito of Taki, are you ready? Sasuke said, yeah. Akito said, let's go so I can kick this guy's ass. Natsumi thought, Akito, don't underestimate him, even though you are the son of a noble in Taki, it doesn't mean that you are invincible. Hayate said, fight, a, n. Since no one cares about the damn Uchiha or his skills, let's just say that he won and move on. Next match is Shino Abarame versus Zaku Abumi, Hayate said. The screen flashed to have Shino Abarame versus Zaku Abumi. Who the hell is this loser? The idiot said. Shino looked at Zaku and said nothing as he walked downstairs. Hanada asked, Do you think that he will be okay? Naruto said, Don't worry, Shino may be quiet, but he is strong. I doubt that sound guy could beat him. Hayate said, Begin. Zaku attacked first by running close range, hoping to end it quickly. Shino brought up his arm to block his attack and Zaku said, idiot. Zankuaha. Zaku opened his hand to reveal air holes implanted in his arms and shot a sound wave, blasting Shino off his feet into the ground. 
Hey, he is done. Shino got up. Are you sure about that? Zaku said, TCH, this time I will get you for sure. Zank. Shino interrupted, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Zaku said, what the hell are you talking about? Then he heard a soft clicking sound and looked behind him to see a horde of bugs converging on his position. Shino said, the way I see I, you have three choices. The first one is that if you attack me, my kikaichu bugs will attack you and devour your chakra. The second is if you attack my bugs, then I will have the opportunity to attack you. The third, which should be the smart choice for you, is to give up and you will be able to walk away from this without going to the hospital. Zaku said, it would be wise not to underestimate me, you forget. Zaku turned to his side and aimed his arms at Shino and the bugs, you forget that I have two arms. I will blast you and your stupid bugs away. Zankuaha, ah. Zaku's arms suddenly imploded from the inside and the Oto ninja screamed in pain, but how, dot how my arms. Then he saw bugs crawling from his air holes. Shino said, you think I would just let you hit me like that? I sent some bugs silently onto your body when you hit me and the rest was able to get to your arms when I stalled for time. Zaku said, you bastard. Shino ran at him and sent his opponent a devastating punch to the face. Zaku spun briefly before falling on his face. Hayate said, Okay, now the third match, will Sabaku no Konkuro versus Natsumi? Konkuro said, HMPH, this should be fun. Natsumi's face grew serious as she tightened her hand in a pair of black gloves. There was a strange marking on the palm etched into it. Naruto thought, Hum, what is the marking? That looks dangerous. Hayate said, the third match between Natsumi of Taki and Sabaku no Konkuro will commence, ready. Fight. Konkuro came at Natsumi and threw a punch at Natsumi's head. She caught it and whispered, burning touch. Immediately fire erupted from her hand and spread it along Konkuro's body. The bundle fell down and Natsumi moved forward to hover her hand over it. I know that you are in there, give up or I will have to burn you. She said in monotone. Suddenly a muffled voice said, I give up. Hayate confirmed it as Konkuro unraveled the white tape around his body and said, Winner, Natsumi of Taki. Naruto thought, Interesting, there were no hand signs that she use against Konkuro. Is it a bloodline or the gloves act like a limiter? Natsumi thought, Man, I can't believe that I have to do this as a side mission too. She thought back to the day that she was given the mission. Natsumi, since your team is the only one able to go to the exams. I need you to do an undercover mission with the utmost discretion. I want you to get the seed of the Uchiha clan in your body, that way, we, Takigakur will be able to emerge as a great country. Natsumi shook her head at the thought, why me? The boy is an arrogant prick just like Akito, Dot and I don't even like him at all either. Hayate said, the fourth match will be, Sabaku no Tamari vs. Tenten Higarashi. Naruto looked at Tenten, who smirked at him. The Jinchuriki mouthed, don't lose. Tenten smiled and mouthed back, I won't. She walked down the stairs to face Tamari, who was wearing a confident smirk on her face. Are the contestants ready? Both of the real Kunoichis nodded in confirmation and Hayate chopped down his hand, begin. Tenten and Tamari both jumped back to get some distance between each other, the weapons mistress threw Kanai at the wind mistress, but Tamari gathered wind natured chakra to block the Kanai away from her. Tenten said, what, but that attack was right on. Naruto thought, Tamari is a wind mistress, this is bad for you, Tenten, if you don't find some way to get around that, you will lose this match. Tamari unclasped her fan and opened it up to reveal a purple moon on the fan. This is the first moon, girl. When you see all three, the match will be over. Tenten gritted her teeth as she racked her brain, how is she doing that? She is not using any hand signs or nothing but yet my attacks can get through. Tenten ran at Tamari and threw Kanai at all directions as she thought, this should work. But again the attack failed and Tamari swung her fan to blow back Tenten and her weapons. You are on the second moon, sister. This is your last chance. Tamari said with a smirk. Tenten unclasped the two scrolls on her hips and Lee said quietly, Tenten, dot you are not thinking of using that technique, aren't you? Tenten thought, I have no choice, this move should be able to pierce that wind defense of hers. I can't lose here, there is someone that I want to fight here. 
Chenton placed the two scrolls apart from each other and bit her thumb, drawing blood. So sure you, she shouted. The two scrolls burst and twirled around Tenton, she flew up and levitated in the middle. She grabbed one of the scrolls in air and began to flip in around her until the scroll unfurled around her. Then she swiped her blood on the markings, making various weapons popped out in existence. Then Tenton threw the weapons one by one at Tamari, who swung her fan to make the weapons blow off course and stab or fall on the ground around her. Tenton smirked and brought her hands back to her body and to everyone's surprise, the weapons came back to her. Kakashi said, very clever, she used wires to attack to the weapons, clever girl that guy got. Tamari said, it's over, the third moon has revealed itself, dot you lose, Tenton Higarashi. Tamari swung her fan while shouting, Ninpu, Kamedachi no Jutsu. The weapons were blown back once again and Tenton was trapped in a wind cyclone where she was slashed up by invisible blades of wind. Tenton fell to the ground, but Tamari caught her in her arms before she fell to the ground. Lee jumped down to get her and Tamari gave her to him. Lee gave Tamari a soft smile as if he was saying thank you. Winner. Sabaku no Tamari. Next match is, Haruno Sakura and Yamanaka Ino. Naruto frowned as the match started because it was a shouting match first then a little brawling and finally a pitiful double knockout strike to the head. Naruto shook his head in disappointment as Kakashi and Ino's sensei Asuma Serutobi took both of them to the balcony. Hayate said, we will take a break now. Boys bathroom Naruto did his business and began to wash his hands under the sink. Then he turned off the water faucet and as he moved toward the door, he saw Kiba looking at him. What? Naruto said. Stay away from Hanada-chan, dead last. She is mine, Kiba said. Naruto said, Excuse me. You talking to me? I am the only one here, so you must be talking to me. Kiba glared at him. Hanada is my girl and I will not tolerate you coming on to her, so you better leave her alone. Naruto said, First off, Kiba, Hanada Haim is not property that you can come and say that you claim. She is not one of your pets, she is a human being, one with choice and free will. If she wants to choose you, then that is it, but I don't see you going on with her either. Therefore I can hang out with Hanada Haim if I want to, so don't try to piss me off now. The Jinchuriki strode past Kiba, who grabbed his shoulder and growled, if you get me as your opponent, I will run you through the ground until there is nothing left. Naruto grabbed his hand and twisted it to the side, making Kiba lean with it in pain, don't threaten me, Inazuka. I don't want to cause trouble here but you are making it very hard or not to, so back off. Naruto stalked off with Kiba nursing his wrist while he glared at Naruto. As Naruto came out, Sasuke came over and said, you might as well as give me your swords now and save face. The Jinchuriki said, Sasuke, I have no time to deal with you now, now let me pass because there will be a cold day in hell before I give you these swords. Naruto walked past him and Sasuke made a grab from Oblivion's hilt. Suddenly dark lightning struck at the Uchiha's hand, making Sasuke grimace in pain as he cradled his smoking hand. I told you, dot the swords will not choose any person filled with greed or your hand will burn off. Naruto said coldly as he walked back to the arena. Kakashi looked at Naruto, who had an agitated look on his face and Sasuke, who was glaring at Naruto and nursing his burned hand. Sakura asked, Sasuke-kun, what happened to you? She noticed her crush glaring at Naruto and started to yell, Naruto Baka, what did you do to Sasuke-kun? Apologize right. Naruto's head turned slowly to meet Sakura's jade eyes and her eyes became fearful as his blue slitted eyes looked at her. Sakura, shut up and leave me alone. I am not in the damn mood for your shrieking or your goddamn concern about Uchiha Teme. Instead of you worrying about yourself and how pathetic your match was, you were concerned about Uchiha. You were weak and we all know it, hell. Even Hinata can kick your damn fangirl ass. So when you grow some balls and become a real kunoichi, then you worry about others and talk to me. Otherwise, take your make me apologize to Sasuke Teme, rant and shove up your ass. Sakura was speechless and fearful of the coldness in Naruto's eyes. Everyone except Team 9, Natsumi and Team Suna especially Hinata was surprised at Naruto's harsh reprimand. The rookies knew that Naruto liked Sakura and was always pestering her for a date. Hanada's heart leapt in bounds seeing that Naruto's heart was free and now she had a greater chance of winning his heart. 
Hayate strode in and said, Now the sixth match. The scoreboard flashed through the remaining names and landed on two names Naruto Uzumaki versus Kiba Inazuka. Kiba smirked at it and said, Akamaru, we got this one in the bag. Akamaru gave him a bark to reassure Kiba. But Akamaru inwardly knew that Kiba was going to get his ass kicked badly. Naruto said nothing as he jumped down to the arena while Kiba ran toward the stairs. The Inazuka in his excitement tripped and fell down the rest of the stairs with a resounding thump. Naruto closed one eye as if he felt the last hit. Shino whispered, not a nice entrance there, Kiba. Kuranai sighed, this match is over. Naruto can't win against Kiba's speed. Hanada was torn on who to cheer for, dot her teammate or her crush. Naruto Uzumaki and Kiba Inazuka, dot are the contestants ready? The swordsman Jonin asked. Both of the boys and dog nodded in agreement and then Hayate shouted, begin. The two stood there for a moment and Kiba said, you are not getting Hanada. Naruto said, Kiba, I told you before, it is Hanada's choice to decide. I am not going to fight you over this because you are jealous. Kiba said, I don't care, Hanada is my woman. The Jinchuriki replied, last time I checked, there is not an engagement ring on her finger and there is no brand on her that says, property of Kiba Inazuka, when that happens, then come and talk to me. Kiba said, it doesn't matter. Once I beat you, Hanada chan will see what a loser you are and then she will go out with me. Yep, definitely Naruto was Hanada's thought. Naruto said, if you are going to fight me over this, then fighting you is pointless, Kiba. Kiba said, taunting him, bullshit, you are just scared that I will beat you, but fine, be a coward, it will be fun making her my. Kuranai thought, okay, that is it, Kiba. Forget what I thought earlier. Naruto, you better kick his ass now. I don't care if he is my student. Once that happens, I think I will be having a long talk with Sume Sama and Hana san. Naruto stiffened and said, I know you didn't just say what the hell I think you said. You want to run that by me again? Kiba grinned stupidly and repeated, I said I will enjoy making Hanada mine. Naruto said, That is what I thought you said. He made a sealless cage bunshin and gave him Oathkeeper and Oblivion. Give those to Kuranai sensei, please. The clone nodded and jumped up giving them to the kunoichi. To Sasuke's anger and surprise, the swords didn't react to her at all. Naruto moved into the raging torrent stance with his left and right fist in a boxing style and his legs spread it out. You just made a big mistake, Kiba, a very big mistake. Naruto stared at Akamaru and pointed, go. Akamaru was scared out of his wits and looked at Kiba as if he said, the hell I am staying with you, you idiot. I am not getting killed for your stupidity. Kiba said, Akamaru, what did you do to him? Naruto said, I had to put killing intent on him, so he would get out of the way. I am not going to hurt an innocent dog because his owner is stupid. Kiba growled, it doesn't matter, I don't need him to beat your ass. The Inazuka crouched as he flipped through hand signs, Ninpo, Shikyaku no Jutsu. Chakra covered Kiba's body and made him more feral than normal, then the Inazuka charged at him and tried to elbow him but Naruto caught the blow in his hand and backhanded Kiba in the face. Next, Naruto gave him a palm heel strike to the chin, then kick him in the stomach, making Kiba stumble backwards. The Jinchuriki gave him a right cross, then a left hook, a roundhouse kick and grabbed his hood. Kiba was wildly thrashing, trying to get out of Naruto's hold as the ice user used his elbows to hit him in the head hard. Naruto then took his arms of the Inazuka and pulled them upwards, making Kiba cry out in pain and the Jinchuriki kicked him squarely in the chest, ripping the jacket by its sleeves. Naruto grabbed him again to try and throw him, but Kiba pushed him off and Naruto got back into his stance. Kiba wiped blood that was running from his mouth and Naruto taunted, Come on, Kiba, I thought you were going to kick my ass and show Hanadaheim who was the loser. Kiba growled as he took a soldier pill that hyped his senses up to a degree. Kiba sped toward Naruto and Naruto had to try to dodge Kiba's strikes. Naruto thought, I better release my weights now. Kiba grabbed Naruto and threw him towards the hand statue. Naruto righted himself and planted chakra to his feet to stick to the statue, and then he knelt down to take off his weights and threw them down. Kakashi thought, he was wearing weights. The weights crashed down, making craters in the floor and Naruto bounced on his toes before he stood to look at Kiba. The Inazuka ran up to Naruto and threw a punch at Naruto, but the Jinchuriki ducked and dealt him an uppercut. The Inazuka lifted off, but Naruto grabbed his leg and smashed him against the wall, then he threw up in the air. 
Naruto jumped up and shouted. Time for your ass to be smashed thoroughly, Stardust Blaze. Suddenly Naruto's hands were covered with a mixture of fire and ice and he began to punch the hell out of Kiba. As Kiba's body was riddled with Naruto's punches, small shining sparks began to fly off of the Inazuka. Finally Naruto flipped into the air and gave Kiba's head a heel strike. They both flew downwards and Kiba's face was crushed into the pavement. Facebreaker, Naruto said. Winner, Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto did a hand sign and shunshin up to Kurenai. The woman smiled at him and gave him back Oathkeeper and Oblivion. He turned to Hanada, sorry about that, Hanada Haim. Hanada smiled, I it's okay, and Naruto kun. H here why you go. She handed him an ointment from cuts and bruises. Naruto knew that he healed fast, but he took it to make her happy. Thank you, Hanada Haim, that was very thoughtful of you due to that. Shino said, that was an excellent battle, Naruto. Maybe now Kiba will think with his head and not with his hormones. Team 10 was shocked at Naruto's newfound strength. That, dot was Naruto. No way, he won against Kiba and did it with hardly a scratch on him, Ino thought. Shikamaru thought, wow, I thought he was troublesome before. Choji thought, note to self, never ever piss off Naruto or you will end up like Kiba. Naruto said, say, Hanadaheim, when we have some time, we should hang out some time, as friends. Kayubi said, you realize that if you were going to do that, you got to tell Haku about it too. Naruto said, yeah, after this fight, I think I better tell her now. Hayate said, now the seventh match, Neji Hayuga and Hanada Hayuga, will the two contestants please come forward? Naruto glanced at Neji, who was glaring at Hanada, I know that glare, that is a glare of loathing, of hate. Kuranai thought, Hanada, Sarutobi thought, what an interesting matchup. Hanada walked downstairs and faced Neji. Neji spoke, I never thought I would be facing you, Hanada-sama. Hanada said, Neji ni san, Naruto thought, so they are siblings, possibly cousins maybe. Lee said, this is going to be a bloody match. Naruto asked, why is that, Lee? Lee said, since Hanada is from the main house and Neji is from the branch house, there is most likely someone is going to get hurt. The main and branch have been in conflict for years and they still don't get all. Naruto thought with worry, Hanada, be careful. Hayate said, now begin the match, cough. Neji said, before we begin, I would like to say something, Hanada-sama. You don't make a good shinobi, forfeit now. Hanada's eyes widened in shock as Neji continued, you are too kind, you wish for harmony and avoid conflict, you tend to agree with others, never resisting. Hanada's head shifted down to the side and Neji said, You have no confidence in yourself, I always felt your sense of inferiority, that is why I thought it would be best that you stay as a genin, but the chunin exam can only be taken as a team of three. You couldn't turn down your teammate's request and unwillingly entered, this is reality, am I wrong? Hanada stuttered, N, no, I come I I just wanted, I wanted to change myself, do it myself. Kuranai thought angrily and cursed Hanada's idiot of a father. Hiyashi Hayuga. When she first met the man to notify him about her being on her team, Hiyashi was quick to tell her that she was a loser comparing to her younger sister Hanabi. Instead of encouraging her, he decides to ridicule her, in a result, Hanada became shy and soft-spoken. Neji said, as I thought, Hanada, you are a spoiled child of the main house. People cannot change themselves. Losers are losers, their personality and strength will never be able to change. Because people can't change, differences are born. Dot the terms elites and losers are created. Looks, brains, ability, size, personality, all people judge and are judged by these values. Based on these unchangeable factors, people discriminate and are discriminated against and they suffer within their own means. Just like the fact that you are from the main house and I from the branch. Naruto gripped the railing and a soft, creaking sound was heard by Kakashi, Lee and Guy. Neji continued his fate rant, I have seen through many things with this by Akugan, so I know, that you are merely acting strong and deep inside you want to run from here. Hanada protested, that is not true, are really I, Sakura said, by Akugan? Naruto voiced the explanation, it is one of the most powerful dujutsu in Konoha besides the Sharingan, it is rumored that the Sharingan descended from the Byakugan, but in the ability of sight, the Sharingan is no match for the Byakugan in that department. Neji activated his Byakugan to intimidate his cousin. Hanada flinched and her eyes flickered to the upper left, then lower right and she touched her finger to her. 
Neji said, you can't fool me, just with me pressuring you. Your eyes floated to the upper left, signaling that you were remembering a painful event from your past and then it traveled to the upper right, a sign that signaled mental or physical pain meaning that you were imagining things that will happen during this match. Naruto's eyes flickered between blue and red, the railing was getting squeezed hard, notifying Naruto's anger to Kuranai and Shino, also to Team Guy and Kakashi. Neji said, the actions of raising your arms to shield yourself as if you were trying to prevent from telling me what you were feeling, because everything I just predicted was right. Also touching your lip is your defense mechanism to alleviate nervousness and worrying. So basically, in reality, you have realized that you cannot change your destiny. Naruto couldn't take it anymore and raised his killing intent as he shouted, will you just shut the up already? Everyone turned to Naruto as he declared, who the hell you think you are? Kami? Nobody on this god-forsaken earth has the power to decide who is elite and who is the loser. People can change their destiny, including Hanada. To my opinion, all of that fate bullshit that you are spewing out is a ing lie. Hanada, kick this son of a s ass. I can't stand to see you get hurt just by believing in his words, at least talk back to him. Hanada thought, Naruto-kun, thank you. Her eyes showed determination and Neji turned to see it, he gave her confidence, no matter it will soon be crushed. Neji said, you won't forfeit. Then I won't be responsible for what happens here. Hanada activated her Byakugan and said, Neji ni san, let's go. Lee said, so she uses the same taijutsu style. Hanada and Neji charged at each other and the spectators watched as the Hyugas battled it out, each strike was being countered until Hanada saw a opening and attacked Neji's torso. Neji staggered back, ah. Uh. Naruto smiled, she got him. Sasuke said, what are you talking about? Dobi. It was a scratch. Naruto said, you never bother to learn anything about others. But for your information, the Hyuga Taijutsu style, the Juken is stronger than Lee's own Taijutsu. Lee's Taijutsu is associated with physical damage, but the Juken is associated with internal damage. Everyone has a chakra network system, which is coiled around the organs closely, attack the system and you end up with internal damage as well, making the Hyuga very dangerous. It is hard to know where each point is at unless you are a medic or studied the anatomy of the human body like Haku Chan. With that knowledge, you can halt or speed up the flow of chakra in one's body. Meeting a Hyuga is very dangerous in combat. Kakashi said, How do you know this, Naruto? Naruto said, A certain old fox told me about the history of the clans. Kakashi thought, Kayubi, Lee said, Naruto san is correct, it may not look like much, but you will begin to feel the effects over time. Prolonged combat is not an option with Hyugas. Sasuke thought, so Neji is stronger than Lee, he will make a good opponent to test my strength against. From the looks of the battle, Hanada was pushing Neji to his limits and Shino thought, Hanada's in control. Kuranai thought, Hanada. Naruto smiled as he whispered, show them what you can do, Hanada-chan. Sakura said, but how can they see the system? Lee said, Naruto explained it earlier. Dot the Byakugan surpasses the Sharingan in terms of sight. They are able to pierce through the body and see the coils to attack them. Suddenly Hanada rushed forward to attack Neji and a hit landed. Then was silence for the moment and then Hanada coughed up blood. Neji said, so this is the extent of the main house? Naruto frowned, her hits were landed perfectly, but why isn't he attacking the organs? If I was him, I would do that, unless, oh no, the Jinchuriki muttered, son of a. Sakura said, what? Naruto said, if you were mad at Ino, Sakura and you were a Hyuga, what area would you attack? Sakura said, the main organs? Naruto said, correct and so far Neji Teme from his fate rant has not attacked the main organs at all. Hinata knocked away his hand from her chest and struck at Neji's head, only to for Neji to counter and press a point of her arm. Naruto voiced, Neji has been attacking her arms, if he closes them. Hanada can't send the chakra to disrupt his coils. Sasuke said, meaning that she is dead. Naruto said, I never said that, just because of a minor mishap, she shouldn't give up. Hanada will find a way to kick his ass. Neji knocked Hanada back and said, Hanada sama, this is the difference in talent that can never change, the difference between an elite and a loser. This is the reality that cannot be changed. Earlier, you said that you didn't want to run away, but you must be overcome with desperation forfeit. Hanada said, I, don't, go back, my word, because that is my nindo, my ninja way. 
Naruto chuckled a bit and Kurenai said. Why are you laughing about, Naruto? Hinata is getting hurt and all you do is laugh. Naruto said, Sorry, Kurenai sensei, but did you listen to the words that she just said earlier? Kurenai said, Yes, but what does that have to do with anything? Lee said, Because Hinata's words were exactly the same as Naruto's when we were faced with the tenth question in the first part of the exam. In essence, Hinata is a lot like Naruto. Naruto said, Which is why I was laughing. Hinata is an incredible person, always watching me from a distance. Suddenly Hinata coughed up blood and Kurenai thought, she is at her limit, any more damage, and she'll. Kakashi voiced, this match is over. Naruto glared at Kakashi briefly and shouted, you can do it, Hinata. Hinata charged and fought Neji as she thought, Naruto-kun, I have always watching you for years, why is that? I don't know why but every time I see you, I feel courage, that if I try my best, even I can do it, that I am worth something. That is how I feel. Neji blocked a strike using his wrist and thrusted his palm into Hanada's chin, making her skid back. Kurenai thought, Hanada, dot you used to be a quitter, but now you began to change yourself, dot you did it, I can see it in your eyes and I have never seen those eyes in you before. Hanada charged again, Naruto-kun, in the past, I was always the one looking at you, but now, dot you are the one looking at me. Neji aimed his strike at Hanada's heart and Hanada slipped forward to the ground. Neji said, You don't understand anything, from the beginning, your attacks have been nothing. HMPH, listening to an idiot. Hanada said without stuttering, Do not insult him. Neji said, He is the reason that you are lying on the floor. Hayate said, This match is Ove. Naruto said, Proctor, if you stop this match right now, I swear to every name of Kami known to man you will get friendly with Oblivion and Oathkeeper. Sasuke said, the weakling can't get up. Naruto turned to him and Sasuke was frozen and sweating inwardly at the killing intent of Naruto. He tried to tear his gaze from Naruto's cold ice blue eyes. Then a chilling voice rang from Naruto's mouth, foolish Uchiha, you are weak compared to me, dot you are such a sniveling little, do you want me to kill you? No? Then let's get one thing clear, if you ever insult my friends again, I will kill you in this exam regardless of how everyone feels about you. Hanada stood up much to everyone's surprise and Neji said, Why do you stand? If you keep pushing yourself, you will die. Hanada said, I don't care, you can ridicule me all you want, but insulting Naruto-kun was the last thing you should do. Plus he is finally watching me and I can't let myself look bad. Neji said, It is useless, you can barely stand, I can tell that much. From the time of your birth, the responsibility of the Hyuga main house has been forced on you. You always hated yourself for your own weakness, but people can't change their destiny, there is no need to suffer anymore, let it go. Hanada said, let, me explain something to you, you were right, I have always hated myself for my own weakness. But that is why I have always admired Naruto-kun, he has done things that everyone would think he would crack from. He defeated my teammate, Kiba. Nobody in this room other than me believed that he could beat him. Yet he did. He has been able to do things that nobody has ever dared to do before. Furthermore, if people can't change their destiny, why are you so full of hate? Is it because you, the genius of the Hyuga clan, can never become clan head, that your talent can't be acknowledged because you are in the branch house? I am not the one that is blind, the one that is lost and blind, suffering with the main house's destiny is you, Neji Ni San. Neji's eyes burned with hatred as he charged at Hanada only to stop since the Jonin surrounded him. What is this? Special protection for the main house. Then Naruto's voice reached his ears, No, it is special protection for you from me taking your head, since it seems that you can't take your own medicine of ridiculing, can't you? Neji noticed that Naruto has Oathkeeper and Oblivion aimed at both sides of his necks. Naruto smirked, No matter, it just means that I need more training in my speed, because next time nobody will save you from me taking your head off your shoulders. Kakashi said, Naruto, the genin silenced Kakashi with a glare and turned back to Neji, you are such a little just like the Uchiha. Oh, let's leave everything to fate and destiny and all of that good shit. HMPH. Neji said, what did you say? Naruto said, you were a. Hiding under that fate garbage. Fate doesn't decide anything until one is dead. You say that people can't change themselves, dot let me tell you a story, on our C rank mission. We expected no action, just a simple escort mission. 
Suddenly we find out that there were Nukanen hired to kill our client, guess what I did? Nothing, I froze up. After that I made an oath to never run away and never go back on my word on a blood oath considering I got a scratch from a poisoned weapon. Next, we encountered a more powerful opponent named Zabuza Momochi, the demon of the mist. Cold-blooded killer and responsible of ending the bloody graduation exams in Kiri. Apparently at the end of the year, you were forced to battle and kill your own comrades. Friends that you sat with and ate with. After Sensei got captured, he ordered us to run, we didn't. I couldn't do that because of my oath and I was bound to make sure it was not broken. Together, well, just me and the Uchiha were able to free him, Miss Banshee was just in the back. Next, we met a hunter ninja who supposedly took out Zabuza, only to find out that she was an accomplice. We trained and eventually met up with them again. Neji said, What is the point of this? Naruto said, Shut the up and don't interrupt, or I will shove this sword so far up your ass you will be shitting that ten-pole fate stick you have so far up in your ass in splinters. Now, we met Zabuza and his accomplice, eventually we defeated the hunter ninja and Zabuza was fighting against Kakashi. You know, the hunter ninja changed me, she wanted me to kill her, to tell you the truth, I hated my team except Sakura when I was naive back then, but she told me this, to fulfill your dreams, you must have someone that is precious to you in order to be strong. I found those people and, look at me, I defeated Kiba, Tell me, did fate play a part in my victory, Neji? Hanada started to cough up blood and collapsed to the floor, making Kuranai move to her side. Kuranai thought, she is going into cardiac arrest, he intended to kill her. Kuranai yelled, where are those medics? Hanada whispered, Naruto-kun. Naruto broke away from the Janin and knelt down to her, yes, Hanada-chan? Hanada said, was, I able to change a little, bit? Naruto smiled and grasped her hand, Hanada-chan, dot you change a lot, you are different from the Hanada I used to know. Hanada smiled as the medics came up. Naruto took off his headband and took her from her neck and then tied it around his head while leaving his own on her chest. The blood spattered on the headband dripped down on Naruto's face, but the Jinchuriki made no move to wipe it from his face. He watched as Hanada was taken away from them and Neji said, HMPH, in the end, a loser is still a loser. She has not changed one bit. Suddenly the swords were at his neck again and this time, Naruto was able to nick Neji and blood was pouring from Neji's neck at a slow rate, but not enough to put his life in danger. Naruto looked up at him and Neji was afraid as he saw that Naruto's cold blue eyes were slitted and Kakashi said, Naruto, calm down. This is not the time to settle your vengeance. If you wait to fight him in the exams, then you can do it. We don't want you as a missing nin since the match is over. Naruto said, what do I care? Everyone hates me in this damn village, why should I care? Kakashi said, have you forgotten Haku and Hanada? Naruto flinched and said, fine, you win. Dot but if I get him, nobody and I mean nobody will stop me from killing this ass of a Hyuga. Is that clear, guy, because if it is not, I will kill you too. Guy's face was grim, but inwardly he was amazed at the sheer killing intent that he had. I, understand, Naruto. Naruto looked at Neji as he gave him a wicked smile that made the Kyubi proud in his mind, you best started praying to those fate and destiny s of yours, because they will not save you from me. Oblivion will have your blood. Naruto flicked the blood off of Oblivion and sheathed it along with Oathkeeper. Konkuro thought, his killing intent, it was stronger than Gara's own, that Neji kid is so screwed. But we know that there are three monsters here, but I think that Gara's has a bigger temper, the demon within Gara. It is getting fidgety with Gara looking at blood. Both of them seem to be hiding their skills and we need to deal with them, when the main test comes around. I should gather some intel, I will ask Naruto. Naruto noticed someone behind him and said, What do you want, Catman? Konkuro said, What? I can't come here to say hello. Naruto said, Funny, you weren't very friendly when you were picking on those kids. Dot now I will ask again or do you want me to force to answer it? Konkuro said, it's about that Hyuga kid. Naruto said, I don't know anything about the, except this, you kill him, I kill you, got it? Konkuro thought, this kid, he is just like Gara. Soon the scoreboard revealed the next match, Sabaku no Gara versus Rock Lee. Gara was already down and said, get down here. Lee said, Yosh, it's my turn. Guy said, alright, Lee, go do it. Lee leapt down to the arena and Naruto said, well, come on. Make up boy, 
Let's watch the match, it shall be interesting. Naruto stood close to Shino and Kurenai, who were near the far end, where Team 10 was located at, his so called teammates and Team Guy were at the other end. Lee commented, Facing you this early made me happy today. Gara said, PFT. Konkuro commented, I don't know what Bullhead can do, but he can't touch Gara. Naruto said in monotone, Rule number three never underestimate your opponent. Suddenly something flew toward Lee and he caught it in his hand, no need to get impatient. Hayate smirked as he said, Now the eighth match will commence, begin. Tamari thought, His speed is good, but that is not enough to defeat Gara at all. Lee moved forward as he shouted, Konoha Senpu. Gara's gourd spewed out sand and blocked his kick. Sasuke thought, So the gourd is full of sand that he can control, but it looks like the sand is sentient. The sand captured Lee and flung him backwards. Naruto thought, Strange jutsu. Kayubi said, That is because he is the Jinchuriki of Ichibi no Shukaku. Naruto said, Kayubi? Kayubi said, No, the Easter Bunny. Naruto growled, Kayubi, don't start, I am not in the mood for jokes. Kayubi said, I know, I could feel your anger, your hatred toward that Neji kid. Personally if I didn't have feelings, I wouldn't care. Dot but that was cruel of him to do, ridicule the girl first and then beat her into a bloody pulp on the brink of death. Naruto said, Kayubi, stop it now, we can rant later. In the meantime, tell me about the Ichibi. Kayubi said, Shukaku is a crazy bastard, he may act like an idiot, but he is intelligent. It has that sand defense, which seems to pass on to Gara. also he is the most bloodthirsty out of the biju. Naruto said, judging by that, Gara is mostly likely psychotic and will kill Lee if he is not careful. Kayubi said, you are catching on pretty quick. Naruto said, thanks, now after this crap is over, we are going to have a talk. Kayubi said, about what? Naruto said, the 101 ways to main, torture, kill or humiliate a Hyuga. Kayubi said, it seems that my sadistic nature rubbed up on you. Naruto said, no, really? Kayubi said, and my sarcastic side too. Lee moved around at each angle to punch and kick at Gara, but the damn sand keep getting in the way. Damn, and he is not moving an inch either. Konkuro said, physical attacks won't work on Gara, because of the sand that responds to Gara's will, it acts as a shield and protects him. That is why there has not been a single person that got a scratch on Gara. Naruto replied, And? Am I supposed to care or be scared? There is a first thing for everything. Lee will put a scratch on Gara, I guarantee it. Konkuro said, Wanna bet? Naruto said, 300 Ryu? Konkuro said, Deal. Ino asked, Why is Lee only using Taijutsu? It is obviously not working at all, so should he use Ninjutsu? Naruto said, that is the problem, Ino, he can't use ninjutsu or genjutsu. Ino said, what? Naruto said, lower your voice, I already have one loudmouth on the team, I don't want to hear another. Lee can't use ninjutsu at all, if he did, he would have used them by now, plus he imitates Guy, who has a birth condition, he can't use ninjutsu or genjutsu at all either. Suddenly Lee was forced backwards up on the top of the hand statue. Guy said, Lee take them off. Lee said, but Guy sensei, you said only to take them off when I must protect my friends. Guy said, it is okay, I will allow it this time. Lee grinned back and took off his orange leg warmers to reveal his weights. Now I can move easier. Konkuro said, this is so stupid. Naruto smirked, now the real fun begins. Ino said, what do you mean, taking off weights doesn't mean that Lee has a chance Aga, boom. Lee dropped the weights to make huge craters and plumes of smoke in the air. Naruto looked at Ino, who was speechless at the moment, you were saying, Ino? The Yamanaka chose that time to close her mouth. Guy shouted, go, Lee. Lee smirked and sped off, suddenly Lee appeared behind Gara and his sand reacted to block his punch, which was very close. Then Lee moved again this time his attacks were getting through. Over here, Lee said. Gara looked at Lee who fainted and jumped in the air in a tight roll. Then the taijutsu specialist swung his legs down to hit Gara's head. Gara looked up and a huge scratch appeared on his cheek. Naruto said, Looks like I won the bet, Konkuro. Konkuro sighed and gave him the 300 Ryu, making Naruto a bit happy. Lee declared, Now we are getting started. 
The Taijutsu expert proceeded to beat Gara into submission as Choji said, his moves are so fast, I can barely keep up with him. Konkuro said, this is bad, Naruto thought, he is right, I can sense that the demonic energy within him rising from him. Li looked at the insane look on Gara's face and got scared a bit while Konkuro whispered, Suna no Yoroi. Naruto said, I see, so the stuff that is falling off of his face is sand too. Konkuro said, it is a thin layer that he can use in case someone gets in his defense. Naruto said, but to compress in a thin layer and keep it on requires a lot of chakra to do, in other words, Gara knows that he is in a bad spot against Lee. Lee said, I have no choice, I must use the lotus. He unwrapped his bandages a bit and ran around Gara in circles as he thought, but with that sand, it will be a lot harder to kick him up. Gara said, Hurry up and come. Lee replied, As you wish. Sasuke saw as Lee used the same kick for the beginning of his move. That was the move he was using on me. Lee shouted, It is not over yet. The boy repeatedly kicked Gara up in the air and from the pain his eyes closed briefly. Guy started to pray and then Lee shouted, Take this. Omit Renge. Gara was slammed into the earth while Lee moved away at the last second, but then Lee gasped as he saw that Gara was actually a shell of sand. Gara appeared behind Lee, laughing, he 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 he. Gara ordered the sand to smash at Lee and Lee was flung backwards into the wall. Then another wave came in, making Lee raise his arms in defense. Naruto watched as Lee was getting plummeted by the sand and Konkuro said, That kid is in trouble. Naruto noticed that Lee was smiling and said, no, it seems Lee has another ace in the hole. Gara shouted, die. But Lee dodged the attack and Kakashi said, Guy, you didn't teach him. Guy said, I did. Kakashi said, the Hachiman, no Tonku. Sasuke said, Hachiman no Tonku. Kakashi said, the Ura Renge is not a technique that should be taught, especially to a genin. I have no interest in asking how much Lee means to you, but there are limits, I have lost respect for you, Guy. Guy looked at him, like you are the one to talk, especially since you have been teaching Uchiha here in private while Naruto trains by himself or with the lady he is always with and Sakura here is nowhere to be seen on the training ground. At least I teach all of my kids, Kakashi. Unlike two-thirds of your students, Lee has a precious thing that he would give up his life to prove, I just made him the man to accomplish that dream. Kakashi said, how many? Guy said, five gates. Sasuke said, what the hell is the Hachiman no Tonku? Guy explained, it is a limit removal of some sort, there are eight spots where the flow of chakra goes through. In order, the initial gate, heal gate, life gate, harm, limit gate, view gate, wonder gate, death gate. The gates are working continuously to limit the flow of chakra, when the lotus forcibly opened them and releases a lot of power, but at the same time it destroys the body. If you open all of them, you could attain the strength of a cage, but in the end, dot you will die. Lee thought, Neji, Sasuke, Naruto. I can't be the only one who loses here. Guy Sensei acknowledges me. This is the time to protect and maintain my own ninja way. Lee shouted, Simon. Kai. Lee was surrounded by dark green chakra and his hair stood up while his skin turned red with veins popping out. Shoman. Kai. Lee crouched down and shot forward. He kicked the Jinchuriki up in the air and Gara was flung upwards. Some of the stones were flung at the spectators and Naruto has to move his head an inch to avoid a few. Naruto thought, Lee, dot you are truly amazing. Everyone looked up to see that Lee was hitting Gara like a pinball. His armor was being ripped into pieces as Gara thought, what? The armor, it is crumbling. Lee shouted, this is the end. Tomen. Kai. Gara thought, I can't protect myself, this is human speed. As Lee charged at Gara. He looked briefly at Neji, Neji, this technique was supposed to be used to defeat you, but I will show it now, he slammed into Gara, and the boy fell to the ground only to be suspended in the air because Lee's bandage was around his waist. Lee pulled him back up and sent a leg and fist into Gara as he shouted, and now for the finishing touch, Ura Renge. As Gara fell, his gourd turned into sand, so it could cushion the fall and Lee fell to the ground, rolling away from Gara a few feet. Suddenly Gara stretched out his hand and Naruto thought, the hell you were doing that? Kayubi. Kayubi said, on it. Naruto flipped through hand signs, restoration jutsu, chakra suppression. He slammed his palm into Gara's head and the sand immediately halted. Naruto said, 
The match is over, he is unconscious, you won. Gara said, Why, did you save? Naruto answered, Because, he is my friend. Gara got up and rematerialized his gourd as he took control of himself, that is enough. Hayate said, Winner. Sabaku no Gara. Everyone gasped to see that Lee stood on his feet and Naruto looked at Lee. He smiled, Lee, you are amazing, you don't have to prove anything anymore. From what I see, you are strong in my book, ready to fight even when you are unconscious. Naruto poked Lee and the taijutsu specialist's eyes closed. Hayate said, bring a medical team here, Neji whispered, Lee, you never realized it in the end, fate will not allow a pawn that can only seek victory at the cost of himself. Naruto clenched his fist until it bled. Oh, yeah, after that Neji will be getting humiliated first, and then killed. Gara moved upstairs back to his team while Naruto moved up back to his spot. Baki, the sensei of the Sabaku trio thought, that kid. He was able to suppress Gara's demonic side. This could prove to be a problem if he is moving about. Sasuke said, what did you do to Gara?" Naruto replied back, none of your damn business, Uchiha. Sasuke scowled and grabbed Naruto, who in turn grasped his wrist, you are a nuisance, he broke the Uchiha's wrist and Sasuke screamed in pain as Naruto said, never forget your place, Uchiha. I told you, I am done taking Harunos and your shit, so if you know what is good for you, don't associate with me unless we are on missions. Sakura opened her mouth to speak and Naruto pointed at her quickly, you, not another word from that damn banshee mouth of yours or I will rip out your tonsils, silencing you forever and don't even think about reprimanding me, I warned the Uchiha never to touch me, or else I will retaliate. He stalked off to his original place but then he stopped and said, Oh and Hayuga Teme, I thought I told you already, fate has no pawns, only fools who believe in it. It looks like I am going to have to kick your ass twice as hard for ridiculing Lee as well. Naruto continued and stood by Kurenai and Shino. As the matches goes, Shikamaru went up against Kin and was able to maneuver her to the wall to make her get a concussion while Choji lost to Dosu horribly. Then Serutobi said, Congratulations, finalists, we will now explain the final test, which will be held in one month from now. Sasuke glared at Naruto, who was paying him no mind at all, you will pay for my humiliation, Naruto. Natsumi thought, that blue-eyed kid, he is kinda cute and highly protective of his friends. Serutobi said, the reason why the test will be held one month from now, is that it provided time for you to learn new techniques, since you have shown your trump cards. Now we need you to pull a number out of this box to see who your opponent is. Anko came around with a box and each one of them. Serutobi said, what is your number? Dosu said, it's eight inches Naruto said, I got one. Tamari said, seven. Natsumi said, five, Shikamaru said, nine. Gara said, three. Sasuke smirked, 4. Shino said, 6. Neji said, 2. Everyone looked nervously at Naruto, who currently had an evil smile on his face and was laughing a bit to himself. Anko said, Oh, that Hyuga is so ing screwed. Damn you, Orochimaru, if you had not shown up, I would have got to see more blood, but I guess I can wait for a month. Serutobi said, You were dismissed, make sure you memorized your opponent. Naruto moved up to Asuma and asked, Hey, Asuma sensei, may I ask that if you can train me in futen jutsus and hein? Asuma smirked, Sure, Naruto, we will start tomorrow at 2 pm. Naruto said, Got it. Naruto looked at Neji and Neji met his gaze. Naruto smirked as he used his finger to picture Neji being beheaded. Neji Hayuga, you will pay, with your blood. Naruto thought. Omake Kiba gets screwed. Kiba lied in bed, all bandaged up and then Sume along with Hana came inside the room. Kiba mumbled, Hi, Ka-san, Hana Nisan. Hana locked the door with a click and Sume said, Hey, Kiba-chan, how do you feel? Kiba replied, Like shit, Sume replied, Right, of course you do, Uzumaki kicked your ass pretty good. Kiba said, I could have beaten him, Hana said, No, you couldn't, wanna know why? Kiba said, Why? Sume answered, because you insulted a friend, dot let alone a woman, who you believe are nothing worth only for fathering children. Kiba sweated inwardly, I never, said that, Sume said sweetly, oh, really? So your sensei Kurenai was wrong as well as Kakashi Hataki, Asuma Serutobi and Gai, including Hanada I might add since she was the victim. But, I am not going to beat you to a pulp. 
Kiba inwardly sighed, but Soom's new words scared him, but we are going to neuter you, without anesthetic, using a rusty chainsaw put on a slow speed. Hannah. Hannah was in the corner with a giant chainsaw and got it working. Kiba shouted, help, somebody. Sume said, oh, I forgot we put silencing seals on the door, so you can scream all you want. Good thing you are strapped down, Hannah. Thus Kiba lost the ability to have children and to make matters worse, he found out that someone had to produce an heir for them. Sume and Hannah requested one person to piss Kiba off, Naruto Uzumaki. Now Kiba was forced to call Naruto, dot two san. Five days later, Naruto moved straight to the hospital and asked the receptionist, excuse me, where is Hanada Hayuga's room? The receptionist looked up and glared at him, none of you. Naruto instantly sliced her desk in half to scare her and said, you were saying? The receptionist replied fearfully, room 239, please don't kill me. Naruto said, see, now was that so hard? Anyway, next time I expect you to answer me when I ask a question, dot now go and clean yourself up. Naruto sheathed Oathkeeper and moved to the elevator and pressed the button for the third floor. He walked in the elevator and thankfully there was no one in sight meaning nobody to piss him off. He leaned against the wall and waited, but the elevator stopped on the second floor and he groaned inwardly, but he was in for a surprise. The door opened to reveal Haku in her nurse uniform. Oh, Naruto-kun, what are you doing here? She said in surprise. Naruto said, Oh heyo, Haku-chan, I came here to visit a friend of mine. Kayubi said, Well, I be damned, it is a good thing we saved her, dot she looks hot in that uniform. Naruto thought, for once, I agree with you this time. The demonic fox said in slight shock and amusement, You are agreeing with me. Who are you and what have you done with Naruto? Naruto said, I am Naruto, you baka fox, it is just the badass side of me, trust me, I am done being a doormat. Kayubi said, Welcome to reality, Naruto. Naruto said with a mental smirk, Good to be back. Haku said, Naruto kun, please stop staring at me so much, it is embarrassing. Oh, Gomen, Haku chan, it is just that you look cute in that outfit. A hey, Aragoto, what floor are you going on? The fifth floor. Naruto replied, Ah, same as me. He pressed the button and the elevator door closes as they moved up. Haku asked after several seconds, Who is this friend of yours? Her name is Hanada Hayuga, one of the people that I cared about as a special friend. That is my patient. Naruto looked at her with a smile, Really? That is good. Right now she needs someone that is kind as you, Haku. I want to talk to you about something. What is it? You know how that demons can take more than one mate, right? I see. You like Hanada that way too. Yes, I do. Dot, but I wanted to see how you feel about this decision. Personally, Naruto, if she shows that she cares for you, then that is fine for me. I know that you would treat us equally, especially if you were going to take more wives, but on one condition. Yes. I want to meet her first, to see if her intentions are true. Thanks for understanding, Haku chan. Haku smiled and giggled a bit, we are practically married, Naruto kun, so of course, I would understand. They reached the room and opened the door to reveal Hanada on the bed with an IV stuck in her arm and a healing chakra patch on her forehead. Damn it, Naruto said. Haku said in a reassuring tone, she is okay, but she wouldn't be training for a while, she was in critical condition, but we were able to stabilize her. She has a strong will just like you. Naruto gripped his fist, I am going to kill him, no, I am going to humiliate him first, then I am going to kill him. Haku replied, who? Naruto growled out, the person who did this to her was her cousin, Neji Hayuga, he told her that she was too weak, that she could never change herself, I am going to make him pay for what he has done. The Hyaten user said, you really care about her, don't you? Naruto nodded firmly, I do, dot you know, those goggles in my room, dot she gave them to me for my birthday. She thinks that I don't know about it, but I caught a glimpse of her leaving. Hanada's eyes fluttered open and said, and Naruto-kun. Naruto said with a beaming smile, hey, Hanada-chan, do you sleep well? Hanada nodded while she blushed a bit and Naruto said, good, Haku will be taking care of you while you are here. Oh, that reminds me, Haku, if you find Kiba Inazuka trying to force himself on Hanada, please immobilize him. Haku nodded, I will do my best. Naruto said, thanks, Haku-chan. 
Hinata's heart was close to shattering at the affection displayed between Naruto and Haku, but she vowed that she won't lose to her. Hinata said, A Anyo, Naruto kun, I would, I like you too, please s spare my cousin. Naruto's eyes widened and hardened a bit, why should I show him mercy when he didn't do the same? Hinata said, Be because, I would, lose you both. Dot you would have the whole Hyuga clan calling for your death for compensation and Neji Ni San would be dead. I know that you C can't forgive him, because of W what happened, but C can you D do it just F for me? Naruto looked at Hanada's eyes and said, Damn it, I always hated that jutsu. Haku asked, What jutsu? The Uzumaki replied in a sage tone, The jutsu that is the bane of every man, the puppy pout no jutsu. Haku giggled at Naruto's frown. So I guess this means no killing Neji. Naruto said, Yes, dot, but he will have to suffer, a lot. Then the Jinchuriki thought, I wondered if I should maim him, maybe cut off an arm, no, he is going to need to use those, but I can probably cut some of his toes or something. Hanada's voice woke him from his musing and Naruto said, I am sorry, Hanada chan. What did you say? Hanada said, Promise me, that why you will not K kill Neji. Naruto said, I promise, but if he does it again, I will kill him. Anyway I have to go, I need to train since Neji is my first opponent. Naruto got up and smiled at Hanada while squeezing her hand gently, in the meantime, don't do anything strenuous. We still have that outing that you promised me. Hanada said, I will, Naruto-kun. Naruto left the room and Haku said, you seem to be better now, Hanada-chan. The Hyuga nodded, I feel better. When Naruto kun is around me, I feel like myself. How do you feel about Naruto kun? W what? The Hyaden user firmly repeated, I said, How do you feel about Naruto kun? Do you like him because he is cool or something else? The shy Hyuga replied, I don't like Naruto kun, I l love him, but I am a afraid that he d doesn't return t the same f feelings. I have b been t trying to tell h him about my f feelings, but I t tend to f faint around him. Unlike Sasuke san, and Naruto kun is kind, considerate of o others' feelings, w willing to h help anybody out in n need. He can be s sweet and c compassionate to the p people that he cares about too. When I, I am around him, he m makes me f feel that I can a accomplish anything. Haku thought, this girl does care for him, the Hyden user said, I see, Hanada chan, then I must inform you of this, since it concerns Naruto and your affection. Hanada turned her head slightly at Haku as she said, Naruto has recently obtained a Keke Jenke through unique circumstances. All right, you were that H hunter Nin, he told you. Hanada said, when Neji Nisan was about to hit me A again, Naruto was in F front of me with H his katanas at H his throat, protecting M me from him. He told the story of how why you changed his L life, because I if he H hadn't met you, H he would H have no O one that H he consider his P precious P person. He did, huh? I guess I have to thank him next time, now since Naruto has the Keke Jenke. The Clan Restoration Act applies to him. I am his first wife because he used his Keke Jenke to revive me. So I W will be able to be become N Naruto kun's wife. Haku nodded and said, and you will be mine as well. Hanada blushed heavily and said, I T think I can L live with that. Naruto as the Jinchuriki walked out of the hospital. He noticed that the receptionist was still working at her broken desk and smirked. Then he heard someone calling his name, he turned to Kakashi leaning up against the wall. Yes, sensei, you need something? Kakashi said, I want to know what is the hostility between you and Sasuke. Naruto replied in monotone, you know the answer to that already, sensei. He tried to force me to give up my swords when I told him that they are sentient and chose their next wielder. Second, he insulted one of my friends. Dot you know that I am protective of my friends since they are all I got. Third, he had the audacity to grab me and pretty much I know that he was going to demand me to learn the jutsu even when I told him that it was none of his concern, which is why I broke his wrist. Now that he has activated his Sharingan, Sasuke has gotten more arrogant and that cursed seal on his neck is not helping him out either. Kakashi said, raising his hands in surrender, okay, okay, no need to get upset. Kakashi. I have every right to be upset because a stupid Inazuka dares to claim that women are good for nothing except in cooking. Then her own cousin calls her weak and claims that she can never change herself before beating her mercilessly, putting her in critical condition, 
then Uchiha decides to be bold and try to demand me for my personal techniques and swords that chose me and the Haruno fangirl, instead of training herself, she blindly thinks that Uchiha cares about her and he will be her knight in shining armor. Even having the nerve to demand me to apologize to Uchiha after he got burned by touching one of my swords, so sensei, I have every right to be upset. Now if you will excuse me, I have some training to do, so I can kick certain bastards asses all over the place. Naruto walked off back to his house, leaving Kakashi to think about Naruto's words, Sasuke, Sakura, dot you two are tearing this team apart and I am partly to blame for this too. I should have destroyed his arrogance and her blatant fangirlism. It looks like I am going to have to call in a few favors, but I will deal with Sakura. Naruto is being taken care of since he asked Asuma for training. Training Area 3 Naruto practiced the silent homicide and Tuketsu Ryu style by fighting various clones using the style considering when dispelling, they gave his brain information. He also worked on controlling his demonic chakra through the secondary system. Then Tenten's voice alerted him, Oh, hey, Naruto, she called out. Naruto ended his keita and dispelled the cage bunshins in front of him as he turned to Tenten, I see that you are feeling better, Tenten. Dot how are you feeling? The weapon's mistress replied, Better, my ego is bruised, but I can live with that. I am sorry about Hanada, Neji can be a bit harsh when it comes to his family. Naruto said, raising his eyebrow, HMPH, a little? Okay, he is a complete ass when it comes to that. Can we not talk about the Hyuga? I am trying to keep my promise and it is very hard enough to not think of how many ways to kill him. He is strong, he has not shown all of his skills. Naruto countered, but neither have I, considering I was pissed off and Kiba basically insulted Hanada and showed his outlook on women. Anyway, you are here for something. Yeah, I wanted to train some more, so sometime I can have a rematch with Tamari. You need to learn some defense jutsu at least despite the fact that you want to be a weapon specialist. I know that your taijutsu is good, but seriously that match showed that wind jutsu can pierce your weapon attacks, meaning that if you continue as you are, you will lose against Tamari again. I know this, good, now let's spar. I believe you owe me a fight, considering we never got to fight. Tenten unclasped her scroll holster and unsealed a katana, and then Naruto asked, What is her name? Tenten answered, Shirasaya. Naruto moved into the Tuketsu Ryu stance while Tenten moved into her stance with her left hand on the back of the katana. Her middle finger was balancing on the back edge of the sword. Silence was in the air and then they moved against each other, Tenten made the first attack, but Naruto countered using Oathkeeper and swung Oblivion. Tenten jumped back and tried to stab Naruto, but he twisted to the side and swung downwards, trapping her sword underneath his own. Tenten used her free hand to punch Naruto in the face, making him release the sword and then Tenten attacked once again at Naruto's head, but the Jinchuriki used both of his swords to block the attack and pushed back, making Tenten defenseless for a moment. He quickly swung Oblivion at her torso and made a cut on her pink Chinese shirt. You are getting slow, Tenten, Naruto said with a smirk. Tenten scowled a bit and attacked Naruto again. Naruto moved on the defensive as she used intricate moves to attack him. The Jinchuriki found himself at ease as he fought against Tenten. She was good and he was glad that she was not using that Soshoryu move against him. Naruto ducked a swipe from Shirasaya and noticed that some strands of his black hair were cut from the sword. Naruto thought, oh, boy, that was too close, I better finish this. Naruto moved at the attack as soon as he saw an opening. He used Oblivion as a feint and used the flat edge of Oathkeeper to knock Shirasaya away from her. Then he held the swords to her throat, checkmate. Tenten replied to her opponent, fine, I yield, you are really good. Yeah, but I need to get better, my power has gone down since I have been so focused on my speed. That is true. I did notice that you hardly had any power on your strikes. Which means I got to get my power up, if I want to kick Neji's ass. Tenten bit her lip and said, Naruto, I know that you hate Neji for hurting Hanada, but he is really hurt inside as well. Naruto said bitterly, Oh, really? Because of some seal that can basically take out his mind and make him literally brain dead. No, because his father died, what? His father died because of an incident with Kumo. Kumo wanted the Byakugan and we were going to have a treaty with them, but the ambassador was sent on a secret mission to get it, he decided to take Hanada, who was three years old. Her father, Hiyashi killed him and Kumo demanded that they give him the head of Hiyashi. The Hyuga clan decided to use Hiyashi's twin brother, 
Hazashi Hayuga, also Neji's father as a double to convince them, and with the caged bird seal, his Byakugan was destroyed immediately at death. So, Tenten said angrily, so? He lost his father because of the Hayuga clan, it is that cruel enough for Neji? Naruto said, yes, that is, dot but he blames Hanada, who was three years old at the time with barely any training at all, I might add. The ambassador had training in the ninja arts, what do you expect of a three-year-old to do? But, Naruto interrupted her, furthermore, don't you think that his father chose death to be free? What? Perhaps Hizashi could have killed two birds with one stone, he wanted to be free of the caged bird seal and he also wanted to protect his brother, despite the fact that he is in a different house. But, he hated the main house. Naruto said, yes, he probably did, but he loved his brother more than he hated the main house. If I had the choice to choose for myself for once in my life, even resulting in my own death to save lives rather than to see my brother die, I would do it in a heartbeat. Tenten was speechless at the logic and Naruto said, if you are trying to convince me not to kill Neji, then fine because Hanada already begged me not to do so, but he will be maimed. He will learn never to mess with any of my friends. Please understand this, Tenten because this is what my heart tells me to do. Naruto walked off the training ground, leaving Tenten to think. Is that really possible? Did Neji's father want to die so much just to be free? The girl thought. Naruto said, just so you know, Tenten, when it comes to seals that can harm the person, people will do anything to escape the pain even using death. Naruto's apartment the Jinchuriki went home to rest his nerves and washed up a bit before going to Asuma for his wind manipulation training. Kayubi said, I still think that we should kill him anyway, he had no right do that to that girl. Naruto said, but what would that prove to the village? Haku and I would have to leave the village because of that since the council would and moan about it, then I will have hunter ninja on my ass just like Zabuza. You have a point there, dot and you are not strong enough to do that either. Which means we just have to settle with maiming and torturing him physically and mentally. So let's see, you got that Asuma guy to train you in wind nature manipulation and jutsu, but you have no torturing specialty. Naruto smirked, I don't, but I know three people that are the most sadistic bastards here, dot the two proctors, Ibiki Morino and Anko Mitarashi, and you, the most sadistic chakra being, Kayubi no Kitsune. The fox said, you are going to ask me for some ideas on torturing people, Okay. Did dog breath hit you on the head or something? Kayubi, I am serious about this and you know that dog boy never even got to touch me at all. You know, Kit, I don't think my torture methods would be good for you to use, you should ask Anko or Ibiki about it. I will phone in the verdict, right now, I better go and see Asuma about my training. Training area 14 Asuma laid his back against the tree with his cigarette forever smoking in his mouth as Naruto approached him. Asuma said, ah right on time. Naruto replied, I prefer to be early, well, except when it comes to Kakashi since he is always three hours late. The chain smoker replied with a laugh, I know the feeling, well, we better get started. Now, do you know your affinities? Naruto answered, wind and water, Asuma raised an eyebrow, hum, two affinities, eh? Well, to manipulate the wind, you must shape your chakra to be thin and sharp as a blade, here, take my knuckle blade for example. He tossed one of his blades and instructed him to channel his chakra into it. Naruto took the blade and slowly pushed his chakra into it, imagining a thin blade. It was not perfect when he looked at it, it fluctuates between being thin and sharp to being wavy. Asuma said, your chakra control is good, it is still not perfect yet. Okay, now throw it at that tree over there, on the count of three. Dot one, two, three. Asuma and Naruto threw their blades at the tree and both of their blades pierced the tree and Naruto's embedded deeply into the second tree behind it while Asuma's embedded itself in the rock. Naruto looked at Asuma, you held back. Asuma said after taking a drag from his cigarette, true, I had expected you to pierce the first tree, but if I hadn't held back, mine would have pierced through that rock. Nice, I am beginning to like my chakra nature. Now mainly wind-natured users like that Tamari girl are typically specialized in short to mid-range combat. You must combine force and precision to deal devastating cutting damage, you can also channel wind chakra into your weapons to increase the range and cutting ability. So basically what do I have to do to learn how to make my chakra turn into wind chakra? Asuma said, that is easy, just cut this leaf by converting your chakra to wind-natured chakra. The Jinchuriki smirked and questioned. How long did it take you to master this exercise? 
Asuma said, a week. Why? The boy replied, because, I think I will have a feeling that I will get this exercise done in half the time. Taju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. One thousand clones appeared around the original and Asuma, then Naruto ordered them to grab a leaf and begin their training. Asuma smirked, you are so lucky, Naruto, since the Cage Bunshin can relay the information back to the original once it is dispelled, you gain training basically. One of the perks of being a Jinchuriki, Asuma asked, by the way, how did you know that you have two affinities? Naruto said after looking around, can you keep a secret, Asuma? This is considered S class and I really don't want those bastards on the council to learn yet, that is until the tournament. Asuma nodded and Naruto lifted his hand a bit, Hyaden. Hyo Senbon. An ice Senbon appeared out of the water and the chain smoker said in shock, why you have the Hyaden ability? Naruto said, it is a Keke Jenke actually, basically I can create ice using sheer willpower and combining my wind and water natured chakra, without proper training in nature manipulation. I have been using a lot of chakra to do jutsu. But how did you get it? Naruto said, a friend of mine that I met on a mission was dying. I wanted to save her life and the Kyubi heard me. Dot now before you go and start yelling, listen to me. He told me that to do so, I was to use my chakra along with his and my blood to seal the wound. In result, my hair became black and tamed. The only things that the Kyubi can do is just see and smell the same things that I do. I see, but that was a dangerous thing to do. Naruto smirked, I am sure that you would do the same thing for Kurinai sensei, nay, Asuma sensei. Asuma said in surprise and a blush, H how did why you? Naruto said, I told you before, I am not the same person you all think I am, I tend to pick on things too and I am pretty sure that Shikamaru and Ino know about it too, plus you and Kurinai always arrive at the same exact time. When called upon it, you both deny at the same time. Damn, Naruto said, for both of you being ninja, you are not exactly secretive about your feelings. Just so you know, just remember to treat her right and if you get in an argument, just know that the woman is always right, 90% of the time. How the hell you know so much? Hey, a guy looks at a romance novel once in a while, plus living with a girl, tends to make you try to figure out what you need to do. Asuma smiled at Naruto, well, let's get to work, we will stop at 4. Naruto nodded and took a leaf to start his training while Asuma watched him, smoking on his cigarette. Once in a while, a cage bunshin would dispel and Naruto gained enough information to make a small cut on the leaf at the end of the training. Next, Naruto walked to the dango shop, knowing that Anko had a fetish for dango as much as blood. In truth, she was just like how he used to be, loud, brash and quick to anger as well as hating the fact that the villagers judged her because of the actions of her former sensei, Orochimaru. The Jinchuriki walked inside the dango shop and looked for Anko. There she was, sitting in a corner away from the crowd, munching on dango. He walked up to her table and sat in front of her while notifying the cook to send him some dango as well. Oi! Who are you and what are you doing sitting here? Anko said without looking at him. Naruto said, Long time no see, Anko-san. Anko looked at him, Oh, it's you, the gaki who actually got one up on me. What are you doing here? came to rub it in. Naruto said, no, I actually wanted you to teach me in some of your torture techniques. Anko quirked an eyebrow, why is that? You already know the reason, Anko-san. Oh, yeah, that Hyuga as you call him. Nice touch, I bet you that the Hyuga are going to be pissed about that one. They will most certainly will after I maim Neji up a bit. I thought you swore to kill him. The Jinchuriki sighed, yeah, but there is the catch. Dot his cousin, my friend has a very kind heart. Even though her life was in danger, she still thinks that he can be saved, so I made a promise that I will not kill him. Anko said, damn, I was hoping to see some blood. Naruto grinned, now, now, Anko-san, I didn't say I couldn't maim him, just can't kill him. So what is in it for me if I train you? Dango, dot and blood, I will try to make sure he will spill the same amount twofold. Anko smiled. I think this is going to be a good business deal. Naruto replied, Good, good, now when are you available? Anko said, Around 5.30, tell you what. I am supposed to be at the division now, so why don't you come over? I will demonstrate some of the techniques. Naruto grinned, Excellent. Anko gave him the same grin, Something tells me that you are going to kick some major ass against the Hyuga. The Jinchuriki said, Not just him, dot but the Uchiha and Gara as well. 
Well, Gara not really. Sasuke, hell yes, it will be fun screwing with his mind. Anko said, good, he needs to get knocked down a few pegs. Torture and Interrogation Division Anko and Naruto approached the building and the Anbu guards moved to bar him until Anko said, hold up, the maggot is with me. The guards looked at Naruto and moved back to their posts as the two major pariahs entered the division. Naruto looked around to see that it was a nice building. Once you get past the gruff faces and shady corridors. Anko walked to a wall and tapped it twice and whispered something non-audible, the wall slid to the right to reveal some spiral stairs. Anko entered first with Naruto behind her as the sound of convicts grew louder and louder with each step. Finally they received the basement, which was full of cells and Anko said, Today I am going to let you observe me, when you are going to interrogate or torture someone, you need to come as intimidating. Do you have any ideas on your approach? Naruto smirked, I think I have a few, how would you like it if I came in with a book with a list of different torture techniques? Both physical and mental. As I read them out and the consequences, the victim in question is feeling the pain and agony as he or she is informed about every single symptom in complete detail. Anko said, damn, you thought this out good, I think the person would be slightly intimidated and then spill as the symptoms are coming out of your mouth, but the question is, do you have the stomach for it? Naruto replied, to make sure that your stomach will not retch, you must keep your mind on your worst memory and imagine that person is in front of you. Anko said, good, you will make a fine interrogator if you don't get the spot for Hokage. Yeah, it would be good to have a backup plan, maybe I will. Ah, here we are, cell 17, dot are you ready, Naruto? This is your last chance to back out. Naruto replied, looking at her, and missed the chance on the ideas of torturing Neji to the brink of insanity, hell no, let's go. Anko smirked and opened the door to reveal a rugged-looking civilian. Naruto's eyes narrowed as he remembered this man, he was one of the faces that he would see in the mob, he believed that he would have a field day with this torture example. Well, 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 Izo, Izo Tasaka, dot how have you been? Izo replied with his head down, I will not talk. Anko said, but, Izo-chan, I am your friend, don't you want to talk to me? Izo said, you. Naruto's eyes narrowed at the blatant disrespect, but Anko took it with a smile, a smile he knew too well. She instinctively launched a dango needle into his leg. Izo screamed in pain as Anko explained, that hurt? That was just a little sting. Izo gritted out, what did you do to me? Anko said, oh, nothing really, just slipped a pain amplifying odorless poison in your drink before you were escorted back here, so, Anko licked her kanai as she finished her sentence. I'm going to cut up real nice and slow. Izo shouted in pain, you. Anko said, yeah, I get that a lot and guess what, frankly I don't give a damn, I don't need you to accept me, now answer the question. Why did you try to assault that 17 year old girl? Naruto's eye twitched as he immediately wanted to make this person suffer. The criminal said, I have no idea what you were talking about, I did no such thing. Anko stated, the medical reports trace back to you, Izo chan Dot you are lucky you are not a ninja anymore or else Inoichi-san would have probed your head and immediately got the information, but I am in charge of the retired ninja and civilians as well as Ibiki-san. He has some access to the ninja as well and I heard that he is more of a sadist than I am. Izo said in defiance, I am not saying anything to you, snake. Go Orochimaru. Anko was about to retort until Naruto put a hand on her shoulder. You want in on this? Anko questioned. Naruto whispered, like hell I do, Naruto channeled the Kyubi's chakra for a moment, changing into his initial state, hello, Izo Tasaka. That voice, you, Naruto gave an evil smile, yes, you seem to remember, Izo Tasaka. I am the Kyubi no Kitsune reincarnated as Naruto Uzumaki. I knew it, I knew you were a demon, what are you doing, Anko? Kill him before he destroys us all. Naruto said, oh. I don't think that she will be doing that, because I put her in a coma due to my chakra. Now if I hear correctly, you were about to rape a 17 year old girl, correct? I I did, Naruto roared, don't with me, Izo, or I will make sure your family, starting with your little daughter, Mamoru. Dot how old is she, 6. Izo roared, you leave my daughter out of this, you monster. Naruto chuckled, monster? You have the right to call me that name when you were about to commit the ultimate sin, raping a defenseless girl. What? Is your woman not good enough? It seems that your mind has been destroyed as well, 
you killed my wife 13 years ago. Naruto paused in thought, hum, oh, Akari, I do believe that I heard it somewhere, it must have been the last thing she heard when I crushed between my paws. Ah, it felt so, good. Izo shouted, stop it. Naruto said, that was a night that I enjoyed myself immensely, dot you know I have been waiting for a chance to repay you, for beating me in the alleyway. I could never forget your face. Izo looked up at Naruto and was afraid of his eyes and fangs, why you? Yes, me, 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 I am back, using this boy as my vessel. I knew that you could not be trusted, the Sandame will hear about this. Actually, yes, he will, dot you know it is thanks to you that I have some freedom. W what? The seal, this accursed seal kept me from influencing the boy's feeble mind, I couldn't get free until you villagers started the attack on my human body, every attack slowly brought me closer and closer to my freedom, dot and now here we are, I am free and now I have come back to pay you back in full, by making you suffer, that was my chosen mate that you decided to rape, prepare to face your worst nightmare. Naruto raised his clawed hand and was about to give him a slight scratch until Izo shouted, I am sorry, I am sorry, please don't kill me, I will confess to everything, just don't hurt me or my family, please, I will even confess to hurting you. Why should I trust you? You used to be a ninja, ninja are known for their deception. Izo said with tears in his eyes, it is the truth, I promise on my honor that I will confess to everything. Naruto closed his eyes, hum, fine. I will make a blood oath, demons can't break blood oaths since we have an honor code. If I kill them, I will die. Naruto cut his hand and said, I, Kayubi no Kitsune, solemn swear not to harm the Tasaka clan in exchange that he does confess his crimes against my mate and myself. Izo murmured, thank you, thank you, Naruto smirked as he changed back, you are welcome, Izo. Anko said, wow, Gaki, dot you are a natural, Izo said, a Anko san but you are supposed to be be in a sea coma. Naruto said, I recognized you from hurting me in the alley seven years ago, I knew your fear of the Kyubi no Kitsune. The fox is still trapped in the Yandaimi's seal, completely unable to seduce me of its power. Now that I can control it, I used that fear against you and I knew your family, especially Mamoru. She is actually one of the Sandame's grandson's friends that I met, but now you have confessed, she will be taken care of by your younger sister, Anju. Izo said in debelief, you asshole, dot you tricked me, you ing tricked me. Naruto said, I am a ninja, a ninja is all about hiding in the shadows and deception. Have fun in prison, Izo chan considering that your confession has been notified by Anko san's superiors. Naruto walked out the door as Izo bowed his head in defeat while Anko followed after Naruto and complimented him, Naruto, that was incredible, you basically mind ed the dude. Yeah, but I, really wish that I didn't threaten to kill Mimoru. Anko said, putting a hand on his shoulder, you did what you had to do to make it convincing to Izo, hell, you made me think for a second that you were the fox for a second. Thanks, Anko-san, but next time, use blood, man, I wanted to see that. Naruto said in deadpan, is that all you think about Dango and blood, what other fetishes you have? Oh, there is messing with Kurenai and chasing Aruka. Wait, you have a crush on Aruka. Anko clamped a hand over his mouth and said, you are not supposed to say it out loud. Naruto whispered, are you serious? So why haven't you asked him on a date or anything? Because, I like messing with him. Naruto said, bullshit. Anko looked at Naruto, who continued, you are wearing a mask just like me, aren't you, Anko-san? H how? Hello, we are both the major pariahs in Konoha basically, you think I wouldn't know how to tell between a mask and the real person behind it. That is true, you are unsure that if Iruka will accept you or not because of your status and reputation. Am I correct? Anko's eyes were downcasted for a moment and whispered a quiet hi. Naruto looked around to see that nobody was there in the corridor and said, I will tell you what, this Wednesday, you ask Iruka on a date and be serious with him this time, he is not one to judge, I am sure of that. We will have a double date together. With that Hanada girl, ain't she still in the hospital? No. This is with another girl that I have feelings with, you will meet her eventually, I promise that Aruka sensei will not hurt you in any way, he is too nice to do that. The snake princess said, but, how were you able to survive that torture just by looking at it? If you experienced it, then you can adapt to it, dot one of the retired ninjas used their own creations of torture on me, suddenly Ibiki came from one of the rooms and looked at Naruto and Anko, 
Anko, Uzumaki, what are you two doing here? Naruto said, Oh, Ibiki-san, do you know any Raiden Jutsu? Ibiki said, There is one, but I rarely use it much, why? Anko said, Ibiki, I think we both know why, Ibiki said, So, you are going to do it, huh? Kill him? Naruto said, Kill him, no torture him, yes, humiliate him, yes, maim him, possibly but I am teetering on yes. Ibiki said, I had a feeling you would. I saw the look in your eyes, you were really intent on killing him. Can we please stop talking about it? You two are making it worse, considering Hanada chan made me promise not to kill him. I see, so in compensation, you want to make him feel as much pain as possible, right? Correct. Anko said, Ibiki, you should see this guy, he made Izo crack just by toying with his mind like you. Ibiki said, oh. First you were going for Hokage and now you are coming after my job too? Naruto replied with a smile. Hey, I got to keep my options in case the council tries to screw me over with my status and all. Ibiki said, right, so what did you actually do to Izo to make him talk? Naruto said, easy, I played on his worst fear, the fear that plagued every ninja and civilian alike, I played the part of the Kyubi no Kitsune. Ibiki said, very good, playing on the fear and you made him suffer making him implant his own fears into his brain, exactly what I did to you guys during the Chunin exams almost. Naruto said, I just went with the flow, I knew that he hated me for supposedly killing his wife, so I play on that hatred, and convert into fear, believing that the Yandaimi's seal had cracked because of the villager's constant attacks on me. Ibiki said, oh, but you can't use this on Neji since he doesn't know about it at all. I have thought of that already, I have written a book, it is titled, 101 Ways to Kill a Hyuga, Naruto said. Ibiki smirked, good, simple and direct to the point, but now how are you going to torture him? The Jinchuriki said, leave that to me, Ibiki-san. Anko-san, do as I ask please, I will see you Wednesday. Anko nodded to him and Naruto left. Ibiki asked, what was that all about? Anko said, something that I need to do. Haku the medic ninja had been tending to Hanada over the past week and had learned a lot about Naruto's past from here. Needless to say, she was pissed at the schoolteachers except Aruka. Aruka was one of the few who helped Naruto learn the proper teachings. Also Hanada would always figure out what happened to Naruto when he wouldn't show up for classes on some days through her father and the council. Naruto was usually put in the hospital because of his injuries from the mob filled with drunken villagers and or ninja. Haku wouldn't interact with any of the doctors because of the fact about Naruto. About 80% of the doctors and nurses hated Naruto and Haku would become cold toward them. She walked inside of the room, Hello, Hanada-chan. How are you feeling today? Hanada said, Much better, I feel a bit stronger. Haku said, That is good, here's your medicine. Hanada sat back and allowed Haku to administer the dosage. So, how is Naruto-kun? Hanada asked when she was finished. Haku said, he is working very hard for the final bout, he is working on wind manipulation. He said that he had everything planned out for all possible opponents, but mostly he thinks that Gara will be the one that he must face the most. Suddenly Kiba burst into the room, you will be mine, Hanada. Haku reacted instantly by throwing Senbon into Kiba's neck, placing him in a false death-like state. The ice user pressed a button alerting the nurse to pick up Kiba and place him back into his designated room. Hanada sighed, thank you, Haku-chan. Haku said, you are lucky that Naruto-kun warned me about him. Suddenly a loud voice cried out, you idiot. I thought you had learned your lesson, Kiba, but I guess not. A woman with wild hair and slitted eyes along with red triangle tattoos on her face came in along with another woman with the same triangles, but her face had a gentle tone to it. Haku said, I am assuming that you are Kiba's family. The older woman spoke up, yes. I am sorry for the inconvenience. I am Sume Inazuka, Kiba's mother unfortunately. This is my daughter, Hannah. Haku bowed, it is nice to meet you, I am sorry that I had to put your son in a false death state, it will take him about three weeks for him to be taken care of. Sume said, not at all, Haku-san, my son has always been brash, but I never expected him to try to claim Hanada as his own. Hanada said, I am not Kiba's, Sume said. I thought as much since you have a crush on Naruto Uzumaki, but why Kiba likes you, I have no idea. Haku said, from what I heard from Hanada and Naruto-kun, Kiba doesn't respect women at all, 
he see one that he likes and foolishly believes that she is his and his alone. It has been confirmed that he wanted to take her down and claim her as his mate. Sume said, I knew that I should have never left my grandfather to train him, now he has taken his views on women. Hannah said, duly noted, Ka San. Sume said, Hanadaheim, I apologize on the behalf of the Inazuka clan for the dishonor that Kiba has caused to your clan and on to mine. Hanada said, I forgive the Inazuka clan, Sume Sama, but I don't forgive Kiba at all, it will take a great deal from him to regain my trust back in him, therefore I will have to watch my back and my virginity as well. Sume said, I expected as much, considering his grandfather was the same way before I got fed up and literally ran him out, just make sure you two be careful, now that Kiba knows that you have a friend here, I believe he will be craftier than ever, after all, he used to be one of the ones who helped Naruto in some of his pranks. Haku said, so I have heard, Sume said, rest assured, he will be punished as soon as he gets out of the hospital. Haku said, thank you, Sume Sama. Sume smiled, please call me Sume, I hate the Sama crap, makes me feel old. After the Inazukas left and Kiba was moved on the ninth floor, well, Haku made a note before the boy woke up to paralyze his legs temporarily. Shino came back to see Hanada along with Kuranai, hearing about Kiba's attempt on Hanada. Kuranai promised Kiba a nice genjutsu that she used primarily for perverts and people who can't take no for an answer. You could tell that Shino was pissed due to the silent buzzing coming from his body. So you are the daughter of the deceased Zabuza Momochi, correct? The Abarame asked. Haku said, Hi, I am. I am sorry for not telling you about it. Kuranai said, Think nothing of it, just make sure that you are careful. Kiba is one to hold a grudge against someone. Haku said, Right, Kuranai sensei. Hanada said, So, Kuranai sensei, how has Asuma sensei been lately? Kuranai blushed lightly, What are you talking about? Then Naruto's voice came up, Oh, come on, you and Asuma are so obvious, like I said to him, you two always show up at the exact time when confronted about it, you deny it at the same time. Hanada said, Ah, Naruto-kun, the Kayubi Jinchuriki said, Hey, Hanada-chan, Haku-chan, Kuranai-sensei, Shino-san. Haku said, Hello, Naruto-kun, how was your training? Naruto said, I am close with cutting the leaf, I am halfway with the leaf and then I will be at the next level. Shino said, And what is that? Naruto answered, Cutting a waterfall. Kuranai said, that is, going to be hard for you, Naruto. Are you sure you are up to it? Naruto said, I am always up for anything, I am unpredictable, Kuranai sensei. Plus I do need to be ready, Shino is going to be a tough opponent along with Gara." Shino said, what about Sasuke, Natsumi, Tamari and Shikamaru? Naruto said, Sasuke, I doubt it, I know him better than himself. Natsumi, enigma just like you, so she is a threat, Tamari. Nope, take her fan and she is useless, Shikamaru, good strategist, but in the end, he will just forfeit, it is in his nature. Shino said, that is true with your deductions and you should know that you are an enigma too, Naruto-san. Naruto replied, Shino, there is a lot of things that rarely anybody knows about me, which is a good thing too. I rather not reveal everything about myself to keep people guessing. Shino nodded and Kuranai said, well, we will be leaving, dot get better. Hanada chan and train hard, Naruto. Neji is tough. Naruto said, Oh, I plan to. The rest of Team 8 left the room and Naruto said, Oh, good, we can talk in private now. Um, Hanada chan. I, Hanada interrupted him, You don't have to say anything, Naruto kun. Haku chan explained to me about your bloodline and how you saved her life. Naruto said, That is not everything, do you know about the Kayubi no Kitsune? Hanada said, Yes, the Kayubi died 13 years ago defeated by the Yandaimi Hokage at the cost of his life. Naruto said, that is, partly true, the Yandaimi did defeat the Kayubi, but he could not kill it. The Kayubi is essentially a chakra being and therefore it had to be sealed away. Due to it by the strongest biju, it had to be sealed inside a newborn baby instead of an object, that newborn, dot was me. Hanada's eyes widened as she looked at Naruto's face, it was impassive, but his eyes showed sadness and a hint of fear, partially in agonizing anticipation of her reaction. So, dot you, that is why they stared at you with so much hate. Tell me, when the days you were missing class back at the academy, where were you? She asked hesitantly. Naruto said, 
The hospital, usually drunken villagers, mostly retired ninja would find me, dot and used to take out their anger on me. I would try to move away, but eventually they would catch up to me. The worst of them were on my birthday, considering they celebrated the supposed death of the Kayubi and the noble sacrifice of the Yandaimi. I understand if you think of me differently because of this, Hanada Chan, but I will never think of you any differently at all. He walked out to the door, leaving her to process the new information and Haku followed Naruto after him for a moment. As soon as they walked out the door, Haku said, Are you okay, Naruto-kun? Naruto said, I'm fine, Haku-chan. Oh, that reminds me, are you free Wednesday? Haku replied, as a matter of fact, yes, is there something you need help with? Naruto said, yes, I promised a friend of mine to get her hooked up with a friend of mine and I suggested going on a double date along with her. Haku said, I would love to go out, besides it has been a long time since we went out together. Naruto smiled, indeed, it has. I better get back to training, I am going to see Anko sensei for more tips and then I am going to train a bit more. Haku said, just don't overexert yourself, Naruto-kun. Naruto said, right. He gave Haku A on the cheek, making the ice princess blush a bit, I will see you tonight. As Naruto left the room, Haku walked back inside in a daze, holding her cheek for a moment and saw Hanada, close to tears. Hanada-chan, are you okay? Hanada said, I I'm fine, Haku-chan, it's just. It's a lot to take it. All my life, I have lived in a home where everyone treated me like I was somebody, but Naruto-kun, he was beaten for something he had no control over. Everything bad happened to him and everyone else just shunned him, dot for saving them. Haku said, I know, Hanada-chan, I know. The Hyuga girl said, I don't care about the Kayubi. If he was the fox, he wouldn't care about anyone but his own survival. If he was a demon, Neji would have killed me. His teammates Sasuke and Sakura would be dead including his sensei. Haku let out a breath that she didn't know that she was holding in as Hanada spoke with tears running down her face, and the worst thing is that I am not good enough for him, he has gone through so much and I come I have nothing, slap. Hanada's cheek stung as her head jerked to the side while Haku's hand was outstretched. Haku said, Hanada, you are good enough for Naruto, because you realize what Naruto-kun is to you despite of him holding the Kayubi. You are good enough because you were nice to him despite how he was treated in the academy in this, place. Your reaction shows that you care about him deeply, so don't you dare tell yourself that you are not good enough for him. Hanada sniffed, thanks, Haku-chan, for making me come to my senses. Haku replied, you are welcome, Hanada-chan. I will let Naruto-kun see you, so you can give him your answer about his burden. This is a matter between you and him. Hanada nodded and Haku said, Now get some rest and don't worry about a thing. Kiba will not get to you. An attack by him on you is an attack on me and Naruto-kun. Dot you know firsthand how Naruto gets when he find that his friends or lovers have been hurt. After doing his wind manipulation training with Asuma and perfecting his torture method with Ibiki and Anko, Naruto chose the time to relax in the hot springs. As Naruto settled into the warm water, he sighed in relief. His mind drifted back into his mindscape, he stood before the Kayubi. You finally relax for once, eh? The fox said. Naruto said, Hey, if someone tried to kill your classmate, friend who was a potential lover, you would train non-stop, you know? Kayubi said, Ah, touche. Anyway, good job on finally cut that leaf took you four days to get it done. Naruto said, Yep, this is the only time I will thank Mizuki Teme. Without this jutsu, I would have never been a ninja, met you and Haku, get a bloodline and make my life easier. Kayubi said, That is true, I must say that your control over my yokai is extraordinary. Your chakra control is getting better. Naruto said, Well, Haku practically beat the water walking exercise into my head, so I must thank her for that. Kayubi said, Oh, you were actually going to the little minx? Naruto blushed, no. Geez, Aero Kitsune, no. Maybe a year or two, but not now. Kayubi said, oh, please, you know kindergartners know about already, damn it. Hell, I bet ten-year-old know everything about it. Naruto said, whatever, Kayubi. He cut off the link to hear a perverted giggle and looked around to see no one. He decided to go outside to find the noise and he knew that he would find the sound near the women's side. There was a man that was looking through a hole, writing on a notebook. Naruto rolled his eyes as he thought, great, another pervert. Time to go to work. 
Naruto took Hanada's headband off for a moment as he walked behind the man and kicked him in the ass. The old pervert crashed through the wall, causing the girls to squeal and run out of the onsen. The man jumped up and shouted, Wait, ladies, come back, I was not finished yet. The woman didn't hear him and he had anime tears running down his face while Naruto glared down at him. Hey, Aero Ojasan, it's rude to peek in the women's bath. If you want to get laid, the brothels are just two blocks to the left of my apartment or get yourself a girl. The white-haired man turned to him, You gaki, you ruined my research. Naruto replied, Like I said, the red light district or get a girl. The man replied, Those girls just won't do. I need young and fresh, hourglass figures. Dot not old played out ones. Naruto said, Um, but aren't you old and played out as well? The man said, I am Jiraiya, the Gama Senen. Naruto said, So one of the legendary Sanin is a pervert while Orochimaru is a freaking pedophile. Great. I bet Tsunade is just as disappointing. Meanwhile, Tenten sneezed on her last keita on the Goken style and thought, now that is funny, why'd I want to kill Naruto and what does Lady Tsunade have to do with this? She shrugged and continued to move on. Back to the onsen, Jiraiya's face moved to be serious, you met Orochimaru? Naruto said, now you are serious and I got your attention. He attacked Sasuke Uchiha and placed some kind of seal on his neck. Apparently Sasuke plays a key role in his plans. I am guessing that it is the Sharingan that he wants. Since you can be able to copy any nin, tai, or genjutsu except people with jutsu from their keke jenke or sealless jutsu. Jiraiya said, Nice deductions, Gaki. But if Orochimaru did that, he could have just killed him and took his eyes. Naruto said, That is right, that is what is confusing me. Why mark Sasuke and leave when you could easily destroy him? I thought many reasons like he wants Sasuke to copy jutsu and then kill him or that seal is going to make him do something. But there was an opening. I noticed that Orochimaru has not aged a bit since he left the village 30 years ago. Jiraiya said, impossible, then he would have too. Oh shit, he did it. Naruto said, what? Jiraiya said, it is none of your concern. Naruto said, my ing teammate, despite that he is an arrogant ass, has a gay pedophile after his ass and said pedophile tried to kill me. I think I have a say in this matter. Jiraiya said, you have a point. Fine. Then I will tell you. Before Orochimaru left the village, he was seeking a way to gain immortality. He made a kinjutsu that temporarily transfers your soul into another person's body. The target must be weakened enough to override the soul. The body will last for only three years. Naruto said, So basically the snake pedophile has been taken over people's bodies with a kinjutsu and with the sharingan, he could be a threat to this village. Jiraiya said, Yes and with that curse mark on Sasuke Uchiha he will be tempted to use it. Unlike Anko, Sasuke has a craving for power and Orochimaru played on that factor to make him use it. Naruto replied, but the mark is sealed. Kakashi sensei sealed it, it should be fine. Jiraiya said, Kakashi is not a seal master not like his sensei, the Yandaimi. The strongest seal he has probably can contain it, but it depends on Sasuke's will to not let him consume him. Naruto said, hey, how do you know that the Yandaimi taught sensei? Jiraiya said, easy, I was the Yandaimi's sensei. The Jinchuriki looked him, well, the creed says to never underestimate a ninja. You have to be a Sanin if you are that good. Plus Orochimaru didn't look much, but he was tough like the snake he is. Jiraiya said, you remind me a lot of him, dot the Yandaimi. Naruto said, yeah, when I had blonde hair, I look like a clone of him. Jiraiya said, what is your name, kid? Naruto said, Naruto. Uzumaki Naruto. Jiraiya thought, Minato's kid, eh? Sarutobi sensei was right. The kid has changed in more than one way. Then the Sanin said, How about I train you, kid? Naruto said, What is the catch? Jiraiya said in a serious tone, There is no catch. Just in case the Uchiha does go to Orochimaru for power, I think that you are the best one that can defeat him with my help. You know his weaknesses more than anybody else since you are on his team. Naruto said, fine, I will accept your training. Jiraiya said, good, what are you learning? I know that the Chunin exams have begun already. Naruto said, I am learning wind manipulation, torture techniques, my kenjutsu styles and controlling my demonic chakra. Jiraiya said, you know about the Kyubi? Naruto said, yes, I do. 
He is helping me with controlling it like waking up. I can control the initial state and there is another state where the yokai bleeds out and takes the form of the fox. I call it the demon cloak and I can control the one tail state. I am working on the two tail state and notice that the further I get, the more primal I get. So if I go over that I can handle, I will turn into an animal basically hooking on steroids and sugar. Jiraiya said, you are doing this all by yourself? Naruto said, no, Asuma Serutobi is helping me with my wind manipulation since his lone student, Shikamaru Nara is very lazy and Anko Mitarashi is helping me with the torture. The guy the first am facing pissed me off by trying to kill one of my friends and I made a promise not to kill him. I am going to humiliate him first, then torture his ass. Jiraiya shuddered as he thought, Sensei's son and the former apprentice of Orochimaru is teaching him. I feel sorry for the idiot who chose to piss him off. Man, he is just like his mother when I peeked on her that one time. Jiraiya said, How is your chakra control? Naruto said, It is decent, I have been doing the water walking exercise. Jiraiya said, I will start by teaching you a new jutsu. It is called Ninpo, Hari Jizo. Hospital Kiba's room Kiba Inazuka woke to find that he couldn't move a muscle and his family were surrounded his bed, but what scared the hell out of him was the pissed off look on his mother's face. Do you have any idea how much trouble you caused? Sume shouted. Kiba mumbled, What did I do? Sume said, What did you do? What did you do? I will tell you what did you do, you deliberately told how you were going to make a girl no less your own teammate yours when clearly she didn't want to pursue you for Kami's sake. Kiba winced at the decibels his mother was shouting out. Sume said, So you think women are good for only in cooking, huh? Did it occur in your mind that your mother and sister are women? Your sensei? You know, I should ing neuter you for that comment, but I have a better idea. Since you look down on women so much, how would you like to be one, Kiba? Kiba said, What? Sume called out, Hannah. Hannah moved over to Kiba's IV and whipped out a needle filled with a clear liquid. Sume said, that liquid will turn you into a woman for two months. Which means you experience everything a woman should. Including menstrual styles. Have fun, Kiba-chan. Kiba shouted, you can't do this to me. Sume said, I believe that I just did. Dot you will also have no access to Akamaru unless you are on a mission. I think he needs a break from your brash stupidity. Kiba said, you don't understand. If I would have won against that dead last, I would have gotten her. Sume said, first off. You like her and she didn't return the feelings. Second, you basically ruined your chance when you declared to take her like a in front of everyone especially the Hokage and esteemed Jonin. Third, you threatened Naruto to stay away from Hanada when he was being friendly to the girl. Even if you had won, Hanada would have never returned your feelings. Hannah, do it. Hannah stuck the needle into the IV and the liquid transferred through the line to Kiba's vein. Kiba suddenly began to change and felt a burning downstairs and inside of his chest. Kiba screamed as the changes occurred, turning him into a miniaturized Sume. Welcome to the world of women, Kiba-chan, Hana said cheekily. Last day for training and then it's payback time for Neji Hayuga. Dot but first, Naruto thought. He looked in the mirror at himself, time to go on a date today. Naruto wore an ice blue shirt and navy blue pants along with black dress shoes. Then the Jinchuriki noticed movement in the corner of his eye and saw that Haku was prepped up and ready to go. Her hair was down with her bangs framing the sides of her face. She wore the pink kimono that Naruto first met her in the forest. Well, second if you count the encounter with the first battle with Zabuza. Beautiful as ever. Naruto commented. Haku blushed and averted her gaze from Naruto for a while. M must you say that every time we go out? The boy replied smoothly, yes, because it is true. Haku's blush deepened even further with the statement. Kayubi said, smooth naruto very smooth naruto said yes i do have a way with words don't i the fox replied you certainly do young kit now get going we can't keep anko and aruka waiting can we the jinchuriki mentally nodded and strode out of the house with haku along beside him they walked toward yakuniki q a restaurant that choji highly recommended and found aruka standing there nervously hey there aruka sensei naruto called out Aruka said, Oh, Naruto. How are you and who is your lovely friend? Haku bowed, I am Haku Momochi, you must be Aruka Amino. Naruto-kun has told me so much about you. Aruka blushed a bit, he has. Naruto beamed at him, of course, 
after all you are one of the ones that taught me a lot about life. Aruka nodded, thanks for the compliment despite you never pay attention in class. Naruto countered, not my fault, your lectures are boring as hell, sensei. Aruka Mach glared at him, my lectures are not boring. Naruto smiled, tell that to the rest of the class. Anyway what you were waiting for. Aruka blushed, well, like you guys, I am on a date as well. Naruto said in feigned surprise, oh, pray tell who the lucky girl is. Aruka mumbled, air, Anko Mitarashi. Naruto raised his eyebrow, the proctor for the second exam? Aruka said, yeah, despite the fact that she is a bit eccentric, she is a lot like you, Naruto. How so? She wears a mask just like you did a long time ago, you stopped using it when you found Haku-chan. Haku voiced, well, since we are here, Naruto-kun. We can have a double date with Aruka-san and Anko-san. Just then they heard Anko's voice called out to them, hey, Naruto, Aruka-kun. Aruka turned and to Naruto and Haku's amusement, the Chunin schoolteacher's jaw dropped low. Anko was wearing a honey yellow dress matching her eyes perfectly. The dress was strapless and modest, a deep contrast to Anko's personality. She was wearing black heels as well. Aruka san, you can close your mouth, you are letting flies in. Anko said, Hello, Aruka kun. Dot how do I look? Aruka said, Why you look bb beautiful, Anko san. Naruto smirked, Translation, You look smoking hot, sensei. Anko smirked, I think I could tell from the stuttering in his mouth that is still open. Aruka had the decency to blush and closed his mouth, well, shall we go inside? Naruto and Aruka offered the crook of their arms toward their respected dates and walked inside the restaurant. Naruto? Aruka sensei? A voice said. They turned to see Choji in a waiter's suit and Aruka said, Choji? You work here? Choji said, yeah, I work here occasionally. Naruto said, not surprising considering how much food you consume on a daily basis. Of course, you would work in a restaurant. Choji smirked, you know me too well, Naruto. Now welcome to Yakuniki Q, the best barbecue restaurant. I will be your waiter for this evening. Let's get you seated. Choji led them to a table for four and the men seated their ladies first before seating down. Choji pulled out a notepad, now ladies first, so Haku-san, what will you have for tonight? Haku looked at the menu for a moment and said, I will have katsudan with a side of yakitori and gyokuro to drink please. Anko said, I will have some onigiri and red bean soup with a side of dango and sake to drink. Aruka ordered, I would like to have an order of kamameshi with a side of anpan and green tea to drink. Naruto said politely, I would like some hayashi rice with a side of teriyaki and to drink, some amazake. Choji nodded, okay, your orders will be here shortly, one moment please. Aruka spoke after Choji left to get their orders, so Naruto, tell me about your training. I know that you are getting stronger than ever before. Naruto answered, I am getting stronger. Learning wind manipulation from Asuma sensei and torture techniques from Anko sensei and Ibiki sensei. Also I am doing my own training as well. Anko grinned, don't worry, Aruka, Naruto will be fine under my wing. Aruka chuckled, let's just hope he doesn't have your habits. Anko playfully punched Aruka. Hey, I am a great teacher. At least I am not boring in my lectures as he says. Aruka glared at Naruto, who sheepishly rubbed the back of his head and Haku giggled. Anko said, so who are you, miss? Haku said, I am Haku Momochi, Naruto's girlfriend. I used to be with my father. Zabuza Momochi until I met Naruto on a mission. Anko said, I see. So you work in the hospital, correct? Haku said, yes. I want to be a combat medic. Anko smirked, good, because I think that Naruto will be needing you a lot. Naruto said, hey, I am right here, you know. Anko retorted, it was meant to be heard, Gaki. Aruka said, plus you tend to be a bit accident prone. Naruto pouted and the four of them began to talk about their daily activities. Then Choji came back with their orders and left them to eat their foods. As they laughed over the stories of Aruka's past times as a prankster and comparing them to Naruto's own. Aruka asked, Anko, can I ask you something? Anko looked at Aruka and replied, Sure, what is it, Aruka? The Chunin asked, Why me? I mean, there are other guys in the village that you could have. Dot, but why me? Anko looked down for a moment and looked back at her date. 
Aruka looked deep into her eyes to see her true nature. Dot her eyes that were filled with loneliness and fathomable pain. She replied softly, that is because. I don't believe there are any guys that would even associate with me. Most of them just want a quickie from me, but you. Aruka kun, I think you are a great person to be around with. When I first interacted with you, you didn't flinch because of my mask. Aruka said, to tell you the truth, you did scare me a bit, but I caught a glimpse of your real self when that idiot Jiro chose that time to be an ass. Naruto asked, who is Jiro? Aruka said, he was one of my classmates back in my days at the academy. He is a jonin now, but he is always arrogant and smug. When I, Anko and he were on a mission, we were both chunin at that time. We messed up one of the tags, causing a man to get injured. Immediately Jiro berated Anko for the casualty and insulted her, claiming that she was a spy for Orochimaru and trying to sabotage Konoha's standing with its missions. Haku said, and then what happened? Anko said, easy, I yelled back at him and ran off in the woods for a while to blow off some steam. Then I started crying and Aruka eventually was the one that found me. The Chunin said, I knew that you were crying. Even when you said that you weren't. Anko blushed a bit. Well, all that people have seen was the tough Anko. I couldn't let that little slip up get out to the public, so someone could try to hurt me. Aruka said, Jiro was a bastard to insult you, Anko. I think that you are a great person despite your previous affiliation with Orochimaru. Anko blushed a bit and turned away from Aruka, making Naruto and Haku chuckle a bit. Wow, Anko sensei reminds me of a certain Hayuga. Naruto commented. Aruka said, So you noticed finally, Naruto? The boy replied, No, I knew in my third year at the academy that she had a crush on me, but the Hayuga clan is royalty and I would have been considered as a commoner in their eyes. Well, most of them. So to protect her, I pretended to like Sakura. Aruka said, and just when I thought I figured your mask out. Dot you pull this. You are a true ninja, Naruto. Naruto added with a grin, the best, Aruka sensei. So they finished after two hours of talking in the restaurant. Anko was escorted back to her house after she attacked Aruka's in front of Naruto and Haku, making the younger couple smile at the sight. Pretty much, Aruka was gaping like a fish after that. Haku said, that was an excellent date, Naruto-kun. Naruto said, yeah, it was. Dot but I am afraid that it is missing something. The Hyaten user asked, what? Naruto caressed her cheek and whispered, this. He drew her face toward his and began to her. Instinctively, Haku drew her arms around the brown-haired Jinchuriki's neck while Naruto had his hands resting gently on her waist. When they drew apart, Naruto commented, "M." Vanilla flavored, new lip gloss. Haku giggled, yes. Naruto said, do me a favor and wear it more often. They continued their makeout session inside the Uzumaki residence for a good while. Next morning, Naruto woke up with Haku on top of his chest as usual. Haku, wake up. Time to go. The ice user stirred and opened her brown doe like eyes to meet Naruto's cerulean. Em, Naruto kun. Haku murmured sleepily. Naruto said, it is time for me to become a chunin. Haku said, right, I will be at the hospital taking care of Hanada. The Jinchuriki said, good, but stay there. I believe that Orochimaru might try something at the stadium and I don't want you to get hurt. Haku said, fine, Naruto-kun. Dot but I will be sending a Hyo Bunshin to watch the match, so I can relay the results to Hanada-chan. All right, I will see you later. Haku-chan. The Jinchuriki walked out of the house to go straight to the arena. Everyone was there except two people, Sasuke Uchiha and the Auto Genin, Dosu Kinuda. Shikamaru looked around, where's that Dosu guy and Sasuke? Genma said, stop looking around, face the customers, in this main tournament, you guys are the stars. Serutobi smirked and then he stood up, thank you, everyone for coming to Konoha's Chunin exams. We will now start the main tournament matches between the eight participants who made it through the preliminaries. Please stay and watch until the end. The K's cage commented, if it's eight, then one appear to be missing. Serutobi said nothing and while that happened, Genma pulled out a piece of paper, there's something I would like to tell you before the matches, look at this. Everyone peered at the matches to see that it was even. There are some minor changes to the tournament, so check again who you are fighting. Shikamaru thought. I had an extra match, did that dosu guy forfeit? Gara's hand began to twitch as he waited in anticipation. Genma said, okay, 
This is the finals, the secrecy is different, but the same rules from the prelims still apply, got it. Now will Naruto Uzumaki and Neji Hayuga step forward? Neji stepped forward with a smug look on his face while Naruto stood in front of him, glaring at him. Azumo asked his friend, Kotetsu Hagen, hey, ain't that? Kotetsu said, yeah, he has changed a lot over the past few months. I heard that he kicked the heir of the Inazuka clan's ass without breaking a sweat. Azumo replied, really? Kotetsu whispered to his friend, but for the kid to get this far. Azumo nodded in agreement, yeah, for guys that got far by luck, this is the end of the line. Kotetsu said, Naruto's opponent is just too tough for him. Azumo said with a smirk, he can't beat the Hyuga clan. Kiba gritted his. I mean, her teeth as he. Dot she thought, that should be me down there, but I am stuck in the stands, watching with my mother and sister acting as my probation officers. Damn Uzumaki. It is because of him that I am a ing girl for God's sake. Genma shouted, now for the first match. Begin. HMPH, you look like you want to say something, Neji said. Naruto replied, you know, in a month, I actually published a book, you want to know what it is? It is a bestseller in Kumogakir apparently. Naruto took out a book and threw it at his feet, Neji looked down using his Byakugan and it was titled, How Many Ways to Kill a Hyuga. Neji scowled at this and Naruto said as he read another copy of his book, now the question is which one to use on you, hum. Oh. I had a favor sent to Kumo to ask of their opinion, dot you know what they recommend of me to do. Neji growled and Naruto smirked, since the Hyuga are so prideful of their bloodline, well, almost all of the Hyuga. The man suggested blinding, you can turn to page 1, a bassination. Neji said, are you going to stand there or are you going to fight? Naruto read out loud, ignoring his opponent, a bassination, a method of torture in which the victim of choice is blinded using a hot metal. Neji attacked Naruto, but the boy dodged and admonished him, how rude, I was in the middle of explaining something to you. Now as I was saying, the victim is blinded by a hot metal plate heated at 130 degrees Fahrenheit, then applied slowly to the optical area. This makes the victim scream in agony at the torture as the torturer can take the plate off and reapply it at random times. Neji shouted, shut up and fight me. Neji moved against the boy, who just dodged and blocked the attacks using one hand. Next page, blinding with light, when dealing with bloodlines such as the Byakugan, there is a pressure point that can activate it for a few hours, at that time if you turned on the light at that exact moment, the person is temporarily blinded and the retinas are seared in pain for a few minutes. Neji said, I said fight me, Uzumaki. Naruto ignored him, pissing the man off, rat torture. This is one of my favorite. Did you know that if you put a Hyuga's head in a tight spot along with a rat, then heat the area? the rat will chew its way out. This can effectively have a chance of gouging the Hyuga's eyes out of the socket, rendering it useless. Neji visualized the torture in his head as well as most of the Hyuga clan and people shuddered at the monotone voice of Naruto. The Jinchuriki said, also you can have the rat eat the bowels of the human by pressing a bucket on his or her stomach, then use a small katan jutsu to have the rat react. Want to see a picture? Naruto flashed at a picture in front of Neji's face and Neji's face turned a bit green as the picture showed a rogue ninja in one of Konoha's prison cells subjugated to the torture. Naruto then punched Neji in the face, making the Hyuga keel back, and then Naruto followed up by sweeping him off his feet. Neji fell on his back hard and Naruto said, now this one is my favorite, this is one that I enjoy the most using in my opinion. Electrocution. The Jinchuriki flipped the book in the air for a moment as he flipped through hand signs, this one I had Ibiki sensei teach me, he hardly uses it since he preferred using the mind and words. Raiden. Naruto appeared beside Neji and touched him, Hiraishin. Neji screamed in pain as the lightning course through his body. Naruto stepped back as he kept the current going, arcs of lightning chakra spread over his body. Then Naruto cut the jutsu off as he watched Neji roll around in agony. Naruto simply paid no attention to him and caught the book in the air. Ah, good, my favorite, you know, I'm getting addicted to this. Hell, I should be in the torture and interrogation division as a part-time job. I can understand how Anko and Ibiki get excited by this. Hell, maybe I can be Hokage and commanding officer of the division. What do you think, Neji-kun? Neji groaned in pain and Naruto smiled. I will take that as a yes. Anyway, kneecapping. 
a malicious form of torture where you can shoot a projectile of some kind to injure the kneecap area or stab the area with a senbon with great force. As Naruto said this, he stretched out his hand and made an ice senbon appear in his hand. Neji's eyes widened and Naruto said, Surprised that I have a bloodline? It is called the Hyaden. I have the ability to manipulate ice through my chakra natures, wind and water. The only reason I can perform Raiden. Hiraishin is that I had to train for one week and a half to get it down since I have no affinity to it, but it doesn't mean that I can't learn the jutsu. Naruto threw the senbon expertly, piercing Neji's kneecap. The Hyuga screamed in pain as he clutched his left kneecap. Naruto said, Now, the patella bone is not damaged at all when a victim is subjugated to kneecapping. But however there are damages to the soft tissues, which include nerves and arteries. But don't worry, I made sure not to have you die on me, I hate to say it, but you are an asset to the village. Now if you were useless like my pink haired teammate, I would have cut you down to size, but then again, I could be killed by the Hyuga clan, but then the council would first try to get my sperm and impregnate several women, which will not happen at all. Moving on, hamstringing, I can't use this one, but I will explain it, I basically cut the back of the tendons, effectively crippling the person from being able to walk, stand or even run properly. Neji struggled to get up and stand. What sort of nonsense are you spewing out? You are supposed to be fighting. Naruto said, Ah, but I am. This is not only a battle of strength, but a battle of wits as well. You are trying to win a battle of strength, but I am winning a battle of wits and strength at the same time. Neji moved to attack the boy. But then Naruto grabbed his wrist and pressed on his collarbone. Searing pain went through his body as he knelt down and Naruto smirked, On your knees, I want you to beg for forgiveness. Neji shuddered at the tone he heard in Naruto's voice. Now, this is another method of torture, the most famous and ever useful pressure points. Now there are points that can cause hyperextension, rise or fall of blood pressure, energy, concussions, breaking of bones and most importantly, pain. Such as applying pressure on your collarbone is making you kneel to the ground like so, next. Naruto moved to the area where the ear and neck connected, making Neji move sharply up in the air, while pressure to that area causes you to stand, pressure to the shoulder causes you to move back. Naruto pressed the point to the shoulder, making him move back, he jabbed Neji in the abdomen, that move causes you to twist around and away from the pain. Neji moved backwards, but Naruto came toward him again, now, a blow let's say an elbow or a fist. Then the Jinchuriki planted a fist to the solar plexus, making Neji kneel to the ground, gasping for air. Now if I had hit any harder, I would have knocked you out, but I want you to suffer a little longer. Now if I apply pressure to your temple, nose or your testicles, if you have any that is, it will cause you a lot of discomfort to you. Naruto grabbed Neji's nose and temple and pressed it, making Neji scream in pain. Yes, scream for me. Neji screamed in pain, making the audience wince at the cruelty. Then Naruto kicked him squarely in the chest, making Neji roll on the floor. It is a good thing that Hanada is not watching this, now another method of torture. This one dates to the end of time, but first, Ninpo, Genwahi no Jutsu. Neji was blinded by a flash of chakra and when he opened his eyes, he found himself against the wall and Kanai was stabbed into his wrists and feet. Naruto said, Crucifixion, used by the Romans when they tried to kill Kami's son, Jesus, hurts, doesn't it? You see, because of the kanai in your body, your whole body weight is straining on your wrists, making you use more of your energy to hold yourself up. Now if that doesn't kill you, dot the blood loss from your feet and wrists will make you weaker, plus the infection, then the sepsis, the dehydration, and then you die slowly by the cause of asphyxiation, you know what that means. You die making you feel that you have been smothered or slowly you are being choked to death. I can leave you for hours and then you will die, so we are going to play the waiting game and oh, don't even bother trying to dispel this genjutsu, dot you need a lot of chakra to do so and overwhelm the user with it, needless to say, I have more chakra that you do, Neji Hayuga. Well, this should satisfy me a bit, I get to pretend that you die, Hinata is very grateful that I let you live and you get to experience the pain that Hinata felt. Neji gritted in pain, you, bastard. Naruto said, a bastard is a child that is born to parents that have never been married, my parents were married in secret only in presence of the Hokage and my godfather, whose name I will not reveal at this moment, and I think that another hour should hold your tongue. Hours passed and Neji slowly was in agonizing pain, his mouth was dry and he was sweating hard. 
Naruto below him was drinking some juice. Thirsty. Neji. The loss of blood tends to do that to you. Neji panted out. Dot you. Naruto said. No, I prefer women in that case, Neji-san. Now hurry up and die so we can continue on to the next phase. Sarutobi thought. Amazing. He is just like Ibiki and Enko with a bit of himself in the mix. To think he is able to create a persona so different from himself. All the pent up anger and frustration is mixed into that persona. Dot the librarian. The case cage thought, I like this kid, he is almost as sadistic as me. Azumo said, This kid is interesting. He basically beat the Hayuga using only psychological torture, then used Genjutsu to subdue him along with an Injutsu to cause him pain. If this keeps up, Naruto may have become the winner of this match. Kotetsu agreed with his friend, I agree, we seriously underestimated this kid. To think he would be able to cause a stoic Hyuga to lose reign of his emotions. Naruto said, finally he dies. Kai, Neji knelt to the ground as he panted. Naruto looked up at him over the brim of his book, oh, you are still up, how was dying mental wise, I mean. Neji said, you are going to die slowly and painfully, Uzumaki. Naruto replied, Really? Neji said, You are going to die slowly. Too bad Hinata-sama won't see your demise, she will be very heartbroken and I will have a smirk on my face as she cries out over your grave. Naruto said, Now you see, that is a bit of a problem. Dot for you, I mean. Because 1, I am not going to die since I have hardly broken a sweat and 2, I am seriously going to kick your ass up and down this arena for that comment. Prepare to be ass raped, Hayuga. Neji cried out as he slid into a stance, Hake, Rokuji and Sho. Naruto rose an eyebrow and said, Ah, the famous ultimate technique of the Hayuga, but I thought that was only for the main house to use, unless you were able to recreate the move on your own. Neji attacked him, two palms. The Jinchuriki dodged his attacks and Neji grimaced, four palms. Naruto moved with a smirk on his face as Neji shouted, eight palms. Now Naruto was dodging with his eyes closed, making Neji frustrated, sixteen palms. Thirty-two palms, sixty-four palms. Naruto grabbed his hands and Neji was in shock, w what? The Jinchuriki grinned, my turn. The Hyoden Jinchuriki need Neji in the stomach. Then he gave Neji an uppercut, making the boy flip in the air. Neji grunted in pain but Naruto did give him the chance and punted him away. Neji got up only for Naruto to appear in his face and Naruto had a murderous look in his eye, time to repay for the damage you did to Hinata. The Jinchuriki took his time, beating the shit out of the angst Hyuga. The crowd watched in utter silence and winced as Naruto's blows landed on Neji. Neji was sent face forward on the ground and soon a few minutes later, he was screaming his head off. The reason was that he found that his ass was on fire for some reason. Turns out that he noticed that Naruto had a hot poker in his hand that was still glowing with the label, property of Uzumaki. What the hell, now branding is another unique torture. Dot but it is only used for animals. Now that mark is going to hurt from 3 to 5 weeks. Neji struggled to stand from the searing pain and Naruto said, no, you stand down. Naruto sent an elbow to Neji's jaw then lifted his left leg to kick Neji in the chest. Then Naruto sped to appear behind Neji and smashed his fist into his side. Neji clutched his side as Naruto sent a flying kick to the face. Hey, Neji, what did the five fingers say to the face? Naruto asked. Neji looked up as Naruto answered him with a backhand slap. Slap, shouted the Jinchuriki. Neji twisted into the air and fell to the ground hard and Naruto said, Come on, get up. I dare you to get up. Neji's pride caused him to stand and gave Naruto the opportunity to kick Neji's ass deep into the ground. Neji's head would often jerk in every direction as Naruto sent every punch and kick. Naruto shouted, Guess what, Neji? Neji looked up and received a hit in the face, making the Hyuga fly into the wall. Naruto smirked as he said, You should have had a V8. Neji fell to the ground, his body ached and felt that it was in flames. He knew that some bones were broken, but Naruto knew the severity of Neji's injuries. Every one of Neji's 206 bones were at least fractured or broken, satisfying him enough to stop Neji's torment. Then the Jinchuriki walked towards Neji, Neji Hayuga, 
you were famed as a natural genius. You were marked with the caged bird seal at the age of four when Hanada turned three at the time, also the same time when Cloud sent an ambassador to make a treaty, but that ambassador also had a mission to capture one of the main family members. The most helpless happened to be Hanada, Hiyashi was able to kill him with one hit before he was able to escape. When word reached Kumo, they declared that they had no part in it and had demanded Hiyashi's body as compensation. The Hayuga agreed to this to avoid war but there was a slight change in the plan. Since your father, Hizashi Hayuga looked like your father physically, the Hayuga elders and your father agreed that Hizashi would die in the place of Hiyashi to avoid war and to have the Byakugan safe from Kumo's hands. Because of your belief that the main family forced your father into death, you became bitter and the misconception of it caused you believe that fate bullshit and the grudge against the main branch increased. Eight years later, you graduated as the rookie of the year and at some point, Guy also talked to you about your animosity toward the main branch. What are you getting at? I am getting to that, I happen to find out that the current rakage owes my mother a favor, I call that favor in as her son, I requested your father's body to be escorted back to Konoha in three days time. Hiyashi and Neji were shocked at this revelation. Naruto said, the current Rakage thought that the Sandame Rakage was a fool to try and take the Byakugan. He believed that people don't need bloodlines to prove that they are strong. Only courage and determination can make a ninja strong. He gave me his word that the body is still preserved and unharmed. So why did you do this for me? As much as I want to kill you right now, there is only one person holding me back, that person is your cousin, Hanada Hayuga, the person you tried to kill. That is right, the person that you blame for your father's death is the one who is saving you from meeting the same fate. Hanada, spared me, shocking, isn't it? You have no idea how pissed I was after that. Hell, before that your teammate, Tenten practically was begging in a sense for me to spare you. She was also the one that told me the story about your father. Now I am going to repeat the same statement that I said to her. What would be that statement, Uzumaki? If your father had the caged bird seal on his forehead and he had to make a choice. To allow his son and brother to live by sacrificing his own life or allow his brother to die and the Hyuga clan would cease to exist much like the Uchiha clan. Your father was never able to decide for himself in his entire lifetime. What I think is that your father did hate the Hyuga clan for its rai, but his love for his family was even greater than that hate. He chose to die, not for the Hyuga clan, but for his family. Neji was silent for a moment and thought about Naruto's words while he was lying on the ground. It made sense. Dot the ability to be free from the seal was to die and his father found that freedom. At the same time, he did it for a cause, to save his family. Now I will expect you to apologize to Hinata as soon as you are well, Neji. Oh, and if you want to repay me for your father's body being returned, take Tenten on a date, it is not right to keep a lady waiting. She does care about you if you haven't noticed that I mentioned that she tried her best to make me spare your life. The boy was about to walk back upstairs and turned his head to the side to look at Neji, and Neji, please get that stoic stick out of your ass and lighten up. Matter of fact, all of the Hyuga clan need to lighten up, maybe that is the reason they are so paranoid about the Byakugan. Hiyashi gave a slight chuckle at Naruto's statement while Hanabi was a bit livid at the Jinchuriki. Genma shouted, Winner! Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto called out, Haku, can you take care of Neji? The girl used a shunshun and immediately began to heal Neji. Naruto kun, you need to hold back next time, almost all of his bones are fractured and luckily a few are broken. The only thing that you left intact was his head. He scratched the back of his head, I told you. I was going to make him pay. At least he is not missing a limb, I originally planned to cut off his toes. Neji thought with a sweat drop behind his head, note to self never try to kill any of Naruto-san's friends or he will become very sadistic. Once Neji was cleared, Naruto looked up at Gara, who in turn stared back at him. The Jinchuriki pointed his finger at the red head, you're next, Sabaku no Gara. Tamari and Konkura were shocked at Naruto calling him on and when they looked at Gara, their shock took a turn for the worse. Dot for Gara of the desert, the Jinchuriki of the Aikibi no Shukaku was smiling. Uzumaki, if Uchiha can't acknowledge my own existence, you will be the next one to do so. He whispered. Genma called out, next match will be Uchiha Sasuke versus Sabaku no Gara, 
will the two contestants please come forward? The crowd got restless as the anticipated match was about to start until Ajanan came to Genma to converse with him. Due to Sasuke Uchiha not being present at this time, this match will be postponed until the end of the first round. Now will Aburame Shino and Natsumi please come down? Natsumi used a specialized flame shunshun while Shino did the same with his Aburame style shunshun. Okay, begin, Genma said in a loud voice. Natsumi activated her burning touch jutsu and ran at Shino, but the Aburame prepared himself for her assault. Haijutsu. Mushi came no jutsu. The Kikaichu expelled out of his sleeves rapidly and circulated around his persona to converge into a spinning sphere. Natsumi shouted, Kan Dongan. She aimed a shot at Shino's bug sphere and it crashed against with the sphere with a resounding boom, fire spreading across the land. Natsumi waited until the smoke cleared to show a huge hole in the sphere, but there was no Shino at all. Suddenly Natsumi grew tense and a hand shot out of the ground to grab her ankle. Doden. Shinju Zanshu no Jutsu. Natsumi was dragged down into the earth and Shino popped out behind her. So you did a Mushi Bunshin and substituted with it from the start, then you used Doden. Dochu Aigyo no Jutsu to wait until I fired my technique. Impressive, Aburame san, but don't think that I am down for the count just yet. Shino said in a monotone voice, I wouldn't think so, considering you were an enigma to me. You didn't show much at the preliminaries, so logically it is bad to underestimate you, Natsumi. The girl smirked, yes, it takes much more to bring me down. Then a pillar of fire burst from Natsumi's position, freeing her from her earthly prison and caused Shino to jump back from the searing heat. Feel the heat, Heki Mayaku, Natsumi levitated in the air with the fire surrounding her in a sphere. She curled up into a ball and then with a quick move, she spread her arms and legs out causing the flames to expel into a ring from her body. Naruto thought, her power over Kaden manipulation is unreal. Does she have an unnatural affinity over fire or is it a bloodline limit of hers? As if she read Naruto's mind, Natsumi stated, this is my bloodline, dancing flames. Long ago, my clan was bestowed the power of the phoenix for saving its life, unfortunately I am the last of my clan due to my clan being corrupted with greed and the holy fire consumed them from within. I see, the Aburame said. Now let's continue. Nensho Arashi. She gathered up her flames into a compressed ball and casted her hands in typical Kamehameha fashion towards the Aburame air, but Shino flipped through hand signs quickly. Doden. Doryuheiki. A wall of earth appeared blocking the flames and Shino thought as he put his back to the wall. She is good with her bloodline. I can't get close to her or fight with her at long range with my Kikaichu or my weapons. I must get to her and engage her at close range. Suddenly Natsumi's hand burst through the wall beside Shino's head, startling him for a moment and made Shino do the Tori hand sign, Doden, Doryuso. Natsumi jumped into the air to avoid the earth spikes that threatened to spear her from the ground, seeing Shino looking up at her from his position and then a shadow appeared above her. What? Haijutsu. Kikaichu no Yari. Shino shouted as the Kikaichu that surrounded his hand converged into a spear and the bug weapon impaled Natsumi through the torso. She coughed up blood and the Kikaichu surrounded her body. As she fell to the ground, the Shino that was by the wall dissipated into destruction bugs to converge on her and soften her descent to the ground. Finally I got you in my clutches. Shino said, there is no escape. Then he thought to himself, that was close, considering that I did 2B rank jutsu in succession, thank the Yandaimi for his chakra storage seals. Suddenly the bug coffin began to smoke and exploded into a huge flare, launching the Aburame air into the wall. Impossible, my Kikaichu should have eaten her chakra in seconds. Shino said to himself, sure enough, Natsumi panted as she said, well, that, dot was, lucky of me. I had to, dot use my solar flare technique to get those little critters off of me, or you, would have, won. Shino replied, I would have. Dot but with over half of my colony destroyed, I can't risk my colony being killed, I can't seem to win this battle, Proctor, I forfeit this match. Genma nodded and said, Shosha by forfeit, Natsumi of Takigakur. Natsumi fell to her knees, panting and Shino handed her a solider pill. Natsumi mumbled her thanks and ate it, and then Shino helped her up to the stairs. Now will Shikamaru Nara and Sabaku no Tamari please come down? Genma said with his sanban. 
poking out of the side of his mouth. Tamari looked at Gara for a minute and glanced at the private cage booth. Naruto thought, hmm, Tamari-san seems to be nervous about something and it involves Sasuke and the appearance of Orochimaru. She was so confident when she faced off with Tenten. Tamari let out a sigh and swung her fan open, and then she flew down to the ground. Genma said, well, you're eager. Oi, Shikamaru, get down here. Shikamaru thought, what the hell? My match is now, man, maybe I should forfeit. Suddenly Naruto kicked Shikamaru over the railing, making the shadow user fall unceremoniously on the ground. Shikamaru said, Naruto, when I see you, I am kicking your ass. Tamari said, come on, get up. Are you going to just lie down all day? Shikamaru thought, I got stuck with a girl again. Tamari ran at him, if you won't come, then I will. Genma said, hey, the match hasn't started. Tamari didn't hear him and crashed the iron fan on Shikamaru, but the lazy boy quickly took out two kanai and embedded into the wall behind him. You know, she looked up to see Shikamaru standing on top of the kanai with his hands in his pockets, I hate to fight and I don't care about being chunin, but I can't stand losing to a woman. So I'll guess I will take you on, he said with a grin. Tamari smirked as she opened her fan and blew a wind strike at him. Smoke billowed and Tamari looked in the corner of her eye, well, he's great at running. Naruto shook his head while smirking, no, Shikamaru may be lazy, but he hides his potential. He is able to think ahead at every possible situation and make strategical moves against his opponents, but most likely he is going to win, but quit. Tamari thought, okay, he is a ninja that uses shadows and probably trying to lure me into the trees. Like I will fall for that. Shikamaru lazily thought, oh man, those clouds are lucky, so free. I really don't feel like doing this. I just became a ninja so I wouldn't be bothering, dot but I suppose, that things are not that simple. Tamari thought, what the hell? Is he mocking me with that smile of his? She shouted, swinging her fan, Ninpu, Kamedachi no Jutsu. The wind blew harshly in the arena. Tenten thought, that move was the one that knocked me out cold. Shikamaru has his hands full. Suddenly a shadow line appeared, rushing toward Tamari, who moved quickly backwards until the shadow started to shrink. Hey, there is a limit to how much you can shrink, stretch or change your shadow, isn't there? You can't stretch it any further than your normal shadow's surface area no matter how you change it. Shikamaru chuckled, that's right. Tamari then closed her fan and measured the distance, 15 meters and 32 centimeters. He can use other shadows, but he can't control them, so he is using the shaded area to increase his length. But unfortunately no matter if he goes to the edge, the length will be the same. Konkuro said, Tamari is better at long-range fighting, this match is over. Naruto smiled, nope, not yet. Shikamaru crouched and formed his thinking pose. Naruto said, even though his grades were as bad as mine, he often said that he was too lazy to pick up his pencil to write but he loves to play shogi a lot. Whenever he gets in a tight spot, he assumes that pose, dot his sensei Asuma gave him an IQ test in shogi form and found out that his IQ, is over 200, he is a freaking genius. Konkuro said, so he might win, not quit. Naruto answered, we will see, he is out of his pose now. Tamari commented, so it looks like you are finally getting serious now. Ninpu. Kamedachi. Shikamaru moved to cover in the trees and took off his shirt. It is no use trying to hide. Stop running or give up. Suddenly two kanai were thrown, Tamari dodged only to get in the path of another. She blocked it with her fan and a series of explosions were sounded in front and behind her. He attached explosive tags, she thought, he is trying to distract me. Then Shikamaru's shadow sprang in action. Tamari thought, nice try, but your shadow can't pass this line wait, hold on, ah, shit. The shadow, sure enough, passes over the line, making the wind user sprang backwards yet again. I see, she stated, you used those kanai as distractions to keep me occupied while the sun moves, giving me more leverage. This should be your limit now. Shikamaru said nothing, staring at her and Konkuro shouted, Tamari, above you. She looked up to see a makeshift parachute made out of Shikamaru's shirt and a kanai attached to the bottom of it. Son of A. Tamari cursed as she dodged the growing shadow. 
You will not escape, Shikamaru declared. Tamari moved as she thought, impressive, using the kanai to distract me from his shadow and then using his shadow to distract me from looking up and noticing the parachute, dot but it's clear to me now. The shadow stopped and receded back a bit, so Tamari stopped and flipped open her fan and placed it in front of her. I need to finish this quickly, his shadow will move farther as the sun moves, so I will use Bunshin no Jutsu, which will draw his attention to it. Then I will jump out and use all my chakra into the strongest possible Kamedachi to rip him apart. Now where is his shadow? Good, it's nowhere near me. Tamari thought, initiating attack. Bunshin no. Suddenly she froze and thought, W what? I I'm frozen. Shikamaru sprang his hands apart, finally Kajmane no Jutsu success. Tamari said, B but your shadow was nowhere near me, how did you get me? Shikamaru said, I let you look behind you. He turned his head and Tamari under his jutsu spell did the same. Temari's eyes widened as she saw a hole behind her and sure enough, his shadow connecting to hers. When you used the Kamedachi jutsu, you loosed some of the gravel in where Neji was at, thus I used those kanai wrapped with an explosive tag with a little extra kick, making a hole in front and the back of you. The two made a tunnel and then I lured you over to this spot with all of those distractions and failed successions like my little puppet. Tamari gritted her teeth while Shikamaru said, checkmate. Naruto said, wait for it. Ino shouted, go. Choji munched ferociously as Shikamaru and Tamari walked towards each other, then they both raised their hands as the shadow wielder said, that's it. I quit. Ino said, huh. Shikamaru said, those failed successions used up my chakra. I had thought up over 200 moves and I'm getting tired of this, one match is enough for me. Plus I can only hold you for about 5 more minutes. Genma shouted, winner, Sabaku no Tamari. Naruto looked around and mused to himself, well, that was a long fight and still the Tem ain't here. Oh, well, better congratulate them. The Uzumaki jumped into the arena and walked toward Shikamaru and Tamari, that was a good match, Shikamaru, Tamari-san. Thank you. Naruto-san. Tamari said rather quickly and moved to the stairs. You noticed too, huh? Shikamaru said seriously. Yeah, Tamari is the only one of the group that is fighting except Gara as a nervous wreck. Tamari just confirmed it. Something is going on here. That and look in the middle of the stands in the corner of the third row. Shikamaru peered in the stands and said, What are the Anbu Black Ops doing here? I have no idea. Well, I actually do. Have you ever heard of Orochimaru? Yeah, one of the Sanim, dot but he is an s rank criminal. He's back, we fought him back in the forest of death, he was disguised as Akusa Kunoichi. Apparently, he wants to destroy Konoha and he wants Sasuke for some reason. Troublesome Uchiha, dot and I thought you caused too much trouble. If that is true, then maybe Suna and Odo are connected, they may be planned to invade. It makes sense. Dot our guard is down because of the exam and Suna is one of our allies. Wait, Dot how do you know that Orochimaru is with Odo? The village is new and very small, meaning Orochimaru just now established it. Second, we overheard the sound team trying to find you, they mentioned that Orochimaru wanted them to test Sasuke's strength. Third, nobody thinks that Odo is a threat to them. Alright, Shikamaru, should we tell the genin about it? No. It will only cause panic, dot you are the most level headed out of all of us besides me. Suddenly the leaves started to twist around, making the audience shield their eyes. Naruto smirked, funny, you're late as always. Kakashi sensei, never figured that Sasuke would inherit your tardiness though. The Uzumaki turned around to see that Kakashi and Sasuke were standing back to back. Sadobi, what's with the get up? I should ask you. Never thought that you would wear spandex, are you slowly converting to the power of youth, Sasuke-chan? HMPH, no matter, dot you still haven't changed. Yeah, yeah, just don't get killed. I still gotta kick your ass. Naruto grabbed Shikamaru and disappeared in a swirl of sparkling ice. Sasuke growled at Naruto's departure, but looked over at Gara at the stairs. The next match, Sabaku no Gara versus Sasuke Uchiha. Begin. Sasuke said, fine, you ask for it. He quickly drew two shuriken and threw them at Gara. The Suna Jinchuriki's absolute defense caught the shuriken while making a Suna Bunshin. 
Sasuke took the time to charge at Gara, but the Suna Bunshin's torso suddenly surged forward to meet the Uchiha. Sasuke jumped forward in the air and the Suna Bunshin flicked his own shuriken at him. The Uchiha was forced to return the shuriken and kicked at the Suna Bunshin's crossed arms. The arms blasted off as Sasuke slammed his palms on the ground to right himself on his feet and slammed his wrist into the Suna Bunshin's neck. The clone was in shock, but it started to smirk as the sand seeped over the Uchiha's wrist. The Uchiha quickly dealt a palm strike to blast the Suna Bunshin's head into dust. He rushed through to get to Gara, but another wall erected to block Sasuke's assault, but Sasuke smirked and Lee's eyes widened in surprise. Gara's eyes did the same as Sasuke suddenly appeared behind him, fast, just like him. Sasuke drew his fist back and slugged Gara in the face, cracking his Suna Yoroi and sending the psychotic boy into the ground. Guy was shocked as he thought, he is just as fast as Lee's starting speed and his taijutsu. Lee finished his sensei, unknowingly, is the same as mine. Meanwhile, Naruto and Shikamaru appeared in the stands next to Hana and Soom. Damn, I was a bit off, sorry, Shikamaru. Naruto-kun, nice of you to join us. Hana said with a smile. Hello, Hana-chan, Soom-sama and wait a second, is that Kiba? The identified woman known as Kiba, who now resembled a younger Soom, tried to hide from the gaze of Naruto and Shikamaru. Oh, wow, ain't that a, I knew you two were going to punish him, but this just takes the cake. Naruto continued as he chuckled in full force. Damn, this is disturbing, I am going to find Choji and Ino. Shikamaru said as he left. So how many guys have hit on Kiba-chan? Naruto asked curiously. So far, about 150, most of them were civilians. Soom reported. Mother, Kiba said in a feminine voice. What? You are like the second daughter that I always wanted, plus it is my job to embarrass you. Naruto turned to Kiba with an intense gaze, Kiba, now do you understand? Kiba glared at Naruto, but wilted under his intense glare and inwardly whimpered due to his power. This is what women have to deal with from perverts and or persistent males like you used to be. Also since you will be a woman for one more month. Also I am giving you a warning. Avoid Sasuke at all cost because he likes strong women and you fit his description well. Kiba nodded slowly and Naruto left to go to the stands to watch Sasuke battle Gara. Naruto thought, so Sensei had to use Lee's speed to get past Gara. no doubt he had to use the Sharingan to visualize Lee's speed. Sasuke moved into the Goken stance as he said, so that is your armor, eh? Come on, I will rip it off. He sped through Gara but the sand tried to stop him from the front, but Sasuke veered behind him and twisted through the sand to kick Gara away. Sasuke taunted, what's wrong, is that it? Kakashi thought, don't get why now, Sasuke. Sasuke moved in a circle around Gara and moved inside Gara's guard to send a kick to Gara's chin, and then he grabbed his shirt and brought him toward his persona to give him a knee to the chest. Sasuke, you are a genius beyond imagination, it took me years to reach that speed, but just in only a month, you were able to reach it. Lee thought as he looked at Sasuke, who was panting with exertion. But to keep up at that kind of movement requires a lot of strength. Konkuro thought, what are you going to do, Gara? The Suna no Yoroi uses a lot of chakra, you know you can't use for long. Guy asked, what kind of training did you put him through? Kakashi answered, Sasuke had Lee's taijutsu before, so that is why I had trained him in Lee's taijutsu as well. Since he knew Lee and seen his taijutsu in action, he was able to master the style. It was hard work. Shikamaru thought, yeah, hard work for a mere copycat. Lee thought, but just with my taijutsu, it is not enough. Guy thought, Kakashi, what are you up to? You saw the battle between Lee and Gara, so you should know that taijutsu will not be enough to defeat him, so why did you have Sasuke focus on taijutsu? Gara immediately had his sand encircle him, but the Uchiha ran forward to stop Gara. Sasuke threw a punch at the sand, only for his fist to suffer by bleeding as the sand globe grew spikes to halt Sasuke's assault. The Uchiha had a cut on his cheek and a gash on his right leg. He fell back as he felt warm blood running down his leg, using all of that sand to protect himself, that it gets so hard when it packed like that, so this is an absolute defense. Soon a third eye appeared, 
hovering over the side of the sand globe while Gara sat down and concentrated, chanting a mantra. Tamari thought, Gara plans to use that jutsu, this is bad. Sasuke had a shocked look on his face, but then he smirked as he wiped the blood off of his cheek. The Uchiha moved forward and aimed a kick at the shell, it bounced off. As I thought, it is no good trying to use taijutsu against it, since I can't see what he is up to, since he is hiding in there, it is a perfect opportunity to test out my new jutsu, since it takes a lot of time too. Sasuke unclipped a button on the black spiral thing on his arm, he jumped up on the balcony and used chakra to stick to the wall. He crouched and Guy's eyes widened, so that is why you did that. Sakura said, huh, a familiar voice said, Kakashi sensei had Sasuke focus on taijutsu and speed since the ninjutsu that he is about to use requires a lot of speed. Everyone turned to see Naruto approaching them. Hey, Naruto, congratulations on your match today. Ino said. Thanks, Ino, hello, sensei, I assume you taught him that jutsu. Yes, yes, I did. Guy said, you didn't. Kakashi said, I did. Ino asked, what jutsu is that? Kakashi said, it is my original jutsu that I made when I was 12, dot the lightning blade, the reikiri. Naruto said, yeah, but this reikiri sounds different, this one sounds like chirping birds. Kakashi said, I didn't teach him reikiri, Sasuke doesn't have enough chakra to use it, so I taught him the predecessor of the reikiri. Sasuke flipped through hand signs and white electricity burned on his hand. After all, he is a lot like I used to be. Kakashi said. Naruto thought, I just hope he changes out of that attitude, or I seriously have to kick his ass. Sasuke charged downwards towards Gara's little sand globe. Well, I will be going to visit Haku-chan, Yane. Naruto disappeared in his specialized sparkling ice shunshun. It is incredible, you can see the chakra in his hand. Ino thought. Meanwhile inside the sand globe, Gara was talking to himself once again. Yes, I am going to rip off his head, then crack it open, so the brain can spill out, dot huh, the head, then tons of blood will flow out, dot you can have it all, mother. Kyahahaha, aren't I such a good boy, mother? I am always a good boy. Yeah, let's do it, mother. I will be watching. Guy muttered, a simple stab. Eno said, what? Guy explained, it's a technique created solely for assassination. The speed of the stab and the large amount of chakra concentrated to create the heightened flesh combined makes the sound of chirping birds. Sakura said, so if it is not called the reikiri, then what is it? Guy said, the jutsu is called chidori. At the moment the word escaped guys, Sasuke had burst through Gara's defense. Konkuro said, no way, dot has Gara's defense been breached. Tamari said, that is impossible. Guy said, since the speed of the user and the amount of concentrated chakra focused in one arm, then it becomes like a sword. If any other user were able to use this, they would have experienced tunnel vision, dot but the Sharingan helps this matter which is why only Sasuke is able to use this jutsu to its full potential. Lee thought, I see, I wouldn't be able to run at that speed straight at my opponent, because it is easier to make a counterattack and I don't possess the Sharingan to see the counter. I'm jealous of you, Sasuke. My sense of superiority came when I defeated you since your body couldn't keep up with my speed, but now you have that speed including the Sharingan. Sasuke said, I got you now, Sabaku no Gara. Inside the globe, Gara asked, what, is this warm stuff? Mother, what did, ah, you waaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
Genma's body started to quiver. What's this feeling? Suddenly the sphere started to crack and revealed Gara clutching his right shoulder. I knew it. Dot the cocoon was broken before he could transform fully. Tamari thought. Sasuke thought. No, it wasn't those eyes. What was that thing that was looking at me earlier? Suddenly feathers started to fall down and the audience started to fall asleep. Minutes before the invasion started Naruto appeared in Haku and Hanada's room. Hey, Haku-chan, Hanada-chan. Did you like the fight? Haku giggled. I enjoyed it though I never knew a Hayuga could change into so many shades of red at once. The Jinchuriki smirked. I am sure that Hanada-chan can show you. Hanada blushed. Naruto-kun. He had her forehead making her face turn red. I kept my promise, your cousin has been set straight and I loosen the ice pick up his ass by kicking his ass. Hanada giggled a bit and motioned Naruto to come closer. He obliged and Hanada, in a bold move, launched a full assault on Naruto's. The Uzumaki was surprised and then Ed back with Haku smiling as she looked on. Hum, strawberries with a hint of vanilla. You have been practicing with Haku-chan, huh? Hanada blushed as she meekly nodded. It was taking me a while to build up my courage and get used to ing Haku Chan. I was right to have Haku be near you. You are hardly stuttering, you are a bit more confident and make me want another from you. He ed her again and then broke off, but that will have to wait a while. Haku, what is Hanada's condition? She is in almost pristine condition, but she shouldn't move that much to damage her organs. Dot why? Because Suna and Odo will be invading Konoha today. But Suna is our ally. Why would they do such a thing? Hanada asked in shock. It's the perfect cover, plus most of Suna, missions were sent to us. I need you to go with Haku, dot she will protect you when it happens. Haku asked, what will you do? I will have to fight and defeat Gara. he is a Jinchuriki, a demon container, like me. What? Hanada asked, yeah, Gara holds the Aikibi no Shukaku, but whoever sealed the damn thing did a head up job. Plus I have a strong feeling that he lived the same life as mine, only worse. That is the main reason that he seems insane. So, that means that Sasuke-san will be killed if you don't stop him. Naruto nodded silently and said, that also means that he can release the demon within him if he is pushed to the edge. I have to stop him before that happens. Hanada said, then go, but come back in one piece. I just got you and I will bring you back and kill you myself if you die. The Uzumaki smiled, thanks, Hanada, I will be back, then the explosion was heard and Naruto said, it has begun. Konoha, prepare, dot for glory. The end, now we will see you in the next video. If you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends.